Happy Friday, everyone. You know what that means? Another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you've graced us with your presence, welcome, super happy to have you here. The way this works is really simple. On your screen, you'll see a chat box. In that chat box, you can enter your question, concern, comment of the day, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Sometimes I have the answers, sometimes, believe it or not, I do not. But either way, we have an awesome time talking about Lawn care. Guys, fun, fun show plan tonight. Lots of renovation, lots of updates from various viewers. And uh, yeah, should, should be a, a, a good, good, good time. Let's see what we have in the live stream uh, this evening. Um, we got Adam, we got Phyllis, got a bunch of people here that already already roughing me up with questions. And uh, just as, as far as for your, for your information, as always, we're coming to you on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Twitter is working again this week. So for like the three of you that tune in on Insta on Twitter, you're good to go there. And let's see, and hopefully it holds out. So we get here on Instagram, we got um, Shauna checking in. What's going on, Shauna? Steven, Real Mowing Life, what's going on? Uh, hopefully you're doing well. What's going on? And uh, and yeah, we starting off tonight with our super chats. Let me get the going first. We'll start getting into questions, right? Is Mr. Archie Amos. Thank you so much, Archie. Appreciate it as always. Super chat received. He says, let's go, LG. You've been hiding, scared, calling out LG. Guys, don't, don't tempt, don't, don't get on LG's bad side. Let's not, we don't need to do that. Let's, you know, just leave him alone. He's been, he's been good these days. There's no reason to, there's no reason to, to awaken LG. He's just relaxing, enjoying life. Why y'all messing with him? All right, there you go, Archie. So your name, you're the, you're not the show sponsor, your name in lights, whatever that means to you. Thank you again for the super chat. Really, really do appreciate it. All right, so let's get into it. First question of the evening, Mr. Adam Carter, he says, my lawn is 1,200 square feet. Um, it took up three pieces of Tif Tuff Bermuda sod and put down zoysia in its place. If I spray the Bermuda sod with Fusilade, will it make it where the zoysia will spread? 
So if I understand you correctly, Adam, so you, you removed about three pieces of your Bermuda sod. You put uh, tif, you put uh, tiff. You put uh, let me see. You put uh, yeah. You put Zeon Zoysia in its place. Um, and you're saying if you use Fusilade, which is a selective herbicide that will kill, it's, that's safe for Zoysia as long as you spray it carefully, and will kill Bermuda if the Zoysia will take over. I mean, technically yes, but it's not how I would go about doing it. You know, I mean, if your if your goal is to have a Zoysia lawn. Um, I would I would get rid of the Bermuda, and and then just renovate the lawn with zoysia. Now I realize you know twelve hundred square feet, um, that's not a huge lawn, but still it's, it is more expensive to do it that way versus you know trying to get the zoysia to to spread and fill in. Um, it's just going to take a lot longer than you're you're thinking. I mean zoysia is not like Bermuda grass in that it will it just doesn't grow as quickly, doesn't spread as quickly. Um, what your, your strategy for using fusilade? Here's how I would do that, right? If you go through and you do a full reno, meaning you, you you kill off the tiff tuff and you put down the Xeon. If you had any tiff tuff that still grew through, so after you finished renovating the lawn, you had some uh, some Bermuda that was still trying to to you know give its last its last dying breath to try and come back. That is where Fusilade would come in. I would not use it as a means of um, of trying to kill off the Bermuda in your lawn. Um, with in hopes that the that that three pieces of Xeon zoysia sod will spread and take over. It's just not it's just not the way that I, I would go about it. It's gonna take a lot longer than you think, um, and it's I don't I don't think you're gonna be happy with the results. So if you want zoysia, if you want Xeon zoysia, I would kill the Bermuda. I mean, a great way to do that. You have to be careful because I mean the, the the recipe I'm gonna give you here is um is non-selective. You can take the same fusilade, but also mix it with some glyphosate, so some 41% glyphosate. Uh, we have an option on actually we have a, an option in the golfers lawn store that's even more potent than that. It's um it's a higher concentration of glyphosate. And if you do fusilade and that in one round, you'll be able to knock the Bermuda back. You'll be able to get rid of it. And then you'll be able to, you know, sod the entire lawn with Xeon. And I think you're gonna be a lot happier with that versus trying to selectively uh, remove it and just you know let let three pieces of zoysia sod spread throughout the entire lawn to take it over. So that would be my advice. It's your call. I do realize that what I'm suggesting is more expensive, but ultimately I think you're going to be happier with the result if you take that approach. So hope that helps. Great, great question. So guys, as far as um, things we got to talk about this evening, so first things um, first, um, you know the uh, there were some issues with the store with the with the store over the past week with being able to select various products. So I, I show you guys for example, right? If you were to go, I'll show you what the issue is now that it's fixed. Um, if you were to go to the store and say you picked, um, you went to Lawn Fertilizer and you picked, like say, Release Nine Hundred One C or one of these, um, or, or any for any product that had multiple selections, uh, this toggle was broken. So it is fixed now. I've, I've spent a lot of time. Um, over the past week, testing everything, make sure that everything is good. So if you had issues with selecting anything, any products that had multiple options, that has now been resolved in the store. Again, apologies uh, for that. Took me longer than it should have to catch it, um, but it's been fixed, so you guys should be good to go. It's one of the things I want to talk about because um, I got a couple of emails about it, and it is now good to go. All right. So the, the theme of, of tonight's show, guys, is really the idea around lawn renovations. It's about, it's about enjoying the process and realizing that, that nothing really goes the way you want it to go every single time. You know, if you're doing a lawn renovation, um, it's not necessarily gonna, gonna work out exactly the way you want. Like everything's not gonna grow in as evenly as you might want, as quickly as you might want. Um, if you aren't doing a renovation, but you're just taking care of your lawn, you may have some areas that struggle more than other areas, and it's, that's completely okay. Even in my lawn, there's areas in my lawn that has um, that has some problem areas that that are that are still not 100, percent and that's just part of it. I mean, I'm sure if you if you spoke to I saw Devin here in the live stream. If you spoke to any golf course super, uh, they'll tell you that yeah, there's parts of the course they absolutely love. But there's there's always these few little problem areas that you know either they're recurring or the problem areas move to different spots throughout the year. But it's just all part of it. It's all part of it, and that's that's kind of what makes lawn care fun to some extent, because you, it's the constant chase, right? It's like the lawn is never completely perfect, and even if you do get it to where you're like, you know, yeah, it's perfect now, it doesn't stay that way forever. So tonight, I'm going to show you guys some some lawns that well, we got from viewers, some some pictures that were sent in, uh, and to show you that if you stay the course, right? If you're consistent, if you if you just you know respect the process, you keep grinding, that you are going to get the results. You are going to get the results. Um, so one uh, person that I wanted to um, to start out with here tonight is Alex. So 
Um, if you guys remember Alex Rostano, he was the one that did the Monaco Bermuda uh, seeding project, right? So remember, if you remember his lawn, he first did the seeding work and then he had really heavy rain. It washed it all out and he was like, oh, you know, you know, the sky's falling. It's all over. It's not going to happen. I don't know what's going to, you know, there's no way this is going to recover. And we just told him to stay the course, you know, just put the sand back where it was and, and just continue, you just continue watering it, continue working on it. And if you remember 30 days after he started, this is what his lawn looked like. So this is picture one of what it looked like 30 days after. And this is picture two, right? And I said, Alex, trust me on this. When the temperatures get hotter, that lawn is going to take off. Because for 30 days, if you're asking me, I would take that. That looks really good. Looks really good. Now, here we are a month and a half later. So two weeks from that last, those last images, those, those last pictures. So you see how we are now. And this is what the lawn looks like today. So from that to that in just over two weeks. It's pretty incredible, right? So we got some more pictures here. This is the, the back lawn area. Again, filling in fully, you know, filling in really nicely. It's not 100%, right? But still, I mean, for two months, so less than two months worth of work, that looks, uh, I think most people would take that. It looks really good, right? So even when you have issues, even when you have setbacks in your, your, your lawn journey, right? When you're having problems in your lawn and you, you know, I'm out here and I'm mowing it and I'm fertilizing, and I'm working on it. And there's got some areas that are looking great, some areas that are not looking great. That is just, that is just the way things go sometimes. And if you stick with it, um, it will it will get better. I got some more vi some more videos, some more pictures to show here as we move throughout the show tonight. I'm going to show you some problem areas in my lawn, so stick around for that. But first, the next question. All right. So next up, we got Miss Phyllis Lawrence. She says, uh, "Happy Friday, Ron. Looking forward to another great show. Thumbs up on the like button, my fellow lawn enthusiasts. Thank you so much, Phyllis. Really do appreciate that." And then Alex, uh, he says, you know, I won't be able to join until later, but I sent pictures of an update of the seating project. So this is what I just showed you guys. Alex is the one that, again, you know, two months ago, he, he started this project of, of trying to renovate his lawn with Monaco Bermuda grass seed, and it's doing, it's doing really well. You guys get to see firsthand how the lawn went from that to that. You know, that's that's really good. And this is just this is two weeks between these pictures or 15 days between the time these pictures were taken. This was this was um, 15 days prior to that. So it really shows you that once you start getting enough sunlight on the lawn and the, the days are getting longer, it's getting hotter. Bermuda just really takes off And the color. I got to tell you, the color of that Monaco is uh, is pretty sweet. I do like that. Very, very nice. Very nice, sir. All right, next up, we have Mr. Papa Moslo in the house. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Got the real back from Michael from Atlanta Real Mowing Sharpening, cuts like butter. Yeah, he does a great job. He does a, uh, he does a really, really good job on, um, on, the, on sharpening. I mean, he did the Allet for me, you know, the, uh, the C27. And what's funny, that was the very first time he did it. So, so the way he, he works, the way Michael works is, you know, I didn't, he didn't want to just put any grind on it. He reached out to the manufacturer, he found out, hey, what angles do you guys, um, you know, want for the reel and for the bed knife? And, you know, he, he did all the research. And then he did the, the grinding and the mower came out great. It's awesome. I um, mean, you know, I've, I've backlapped it once since then. It was ground in October of last year. And it's been, uh, it's still, it still cuts like butter. I put a, a backlap on it, five minutes of backlapping and away you go. It's, it's, uh, it's razor sharp all over again. So yeah, he does great work. If you're in the Atlanta area or nearby, neighboring states, Alabama, you know, South Carolina, you feel like making a trip or if you want to send it to him, he does great work. I mean, he's, he's um, you know, he's, he's really busy. So sometimes, you know, there might be a little bit of delay in, in, um, in as far as how quickly he gets stuff, but it's just, he's, he's very, very good at what he does. So want to give Michael at Atlanta Real Motor Sharpening uh, props uh, for that. All right, we got someone, we got a Mark to, uh, tuning in from Hawaii. Aloha, uh, Mark. He says, happy Friday. Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Hope you're, what time is it in Hawaii? It's got to be is it six, seven hours behind us. So it's, it's still, it's early. It's just after, uh, after lunchtime for you, early afternoon. Appreciate you hanging out. And then we got Mr. Jackie Bear up next. He says, have an excellent stream, gentlemen. We holler. Appreciate you, Jackie. Uh, Doug 350Z, Twin Turbo Package is in the house. Chris is in the house uh, as well. What's going on, Chris? Hope you're doing well. And then the T1000 is in the house saying, uh, good evening, all. Hopefully you are doing well. And then Doug is up here with another comment. He says, Ron, two brilliant suggestions last week, mowing diagonal and then holding the backpack spare when it gets near empty. Thumbs up. Yeah, man. I mean, it's all you're learning. All, all I'm telling you is stuff that I've experienced. And that's just from, from doing it time and 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 time again. And, uh, and yeah, when it comes to mowing a slope, mowing diagonally, if what I found produces the most even results, 
I've tested mowing multiple different ways. And even when I mow the front lawn, good example here, even when I mow the front lawn, I, if I'm gonna double cut it, I, I'll mow it lengthwise, but then whenever I finish up, I finish it up with a diagonal and it, it looks really good. As a matter of fact, you know, I can show you guys one of the problem areas. I have to take two videos, one of the front lawn, one of the back lawn. We can show the, the front lawn problem area. So you can take a look at this first and it shows exactly what I'm talking about. So you can see there how, um, if you look really closely, you can see that there are some lines that are running lengthwise on the lawn. And that is like the first cut. And then the, I finish up with the ones that you see here. So, but I'm also gonna show you guys a problem area. If you look really closely here, there's an area, like I had some winter kill, like this this front lawn got blasted really badly from that, um, you know, the the, temp the the winter damage that we had in like December and then also in March again. And this one area, this and one other area just are just lagging behind, taking a little time to recover, you know what I mean? But overall, the lawn looks pretty good. And to your point, Doug, um, I have found that by mowing diagonally on a slope, you get the most even results by doing it that way. So. I mowed the lawn just before the live stream tonight and that video is like an hour and a half old. So you guys are seeing the lawn as it looks like today, the front lawn as it looks today. But yeah, and also it's holding the backpack sprayer, you know, just taking it off your back and holding it level as well level as you can until it goes empty. That's what I found is a good way of getting all of the liquids that you have in there out. You know what I mean? You figure when you're walking around, even if you're trying to walk very evenly, you're just kind of sloshing the material, the, 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 the liquids around, the blend around. So taking it off, holding it in your offhand and spraying is a way to get it down to like the, just to the dregs, down to hardly anything. So glad to hear that the suggestions worked. Keep it up. And if I can help with anything else, definitely let me know. So we got Frenchie, you got Jojo in the house here on Instagram. What's going on, Jojo? Hopefully you guys are doing well. We got Philip O'Donnell. Uh, we got a lot of folks here. Um, we got Shauna with a question here on the gram. She said, um, she says, hey Ron, I do have a question this week. I sprayed a celeprin early May and I'm seeing white moths fly out of the lawn. Should I worry? You shouldn't. I mean, um, that's surprising that you that you're seeing um that you're seeing moths. Uh, you see, you sprayed in May, watered it in. Yeah, you really, you really shouldn't see a lot of um shouldn't be seeing a lot of insect issues. So what what I what I will commonly see. Shauna is, and I haven't seen it this year, but um, in years past, is whenever June rolls around, when I'm out mowing, I might see a dead, um, a dead grub laying on top of the lawn. Like that's what I'll commonly see. This year I haven't seen uh, seen any, but moths aren't something that I have um, I've come across. So I just keep an eye on it. Keep, I mean, if you if you did if you if you apply cell celeprin at the um, at the rates that I recommend, which is 0 0.20 ounces. Uh, mix with a gallon of water and you spray that over a thousand square feet, you should get a good result. Really, I mean, I apply it typically once per season. There are some people that apply it twice, but they'll that but that really is reserved for late summer, early fall. So they'll apply it, you know, around um, March, April, like when I do it earlier in the season, and they'll do another application in August time frame just to have coverage in case there's any issues with army worms or any other any other um, you know lawn damaging insects in in the lawn. But it's too early. You really should have to do another application. One app at the race that that I, that I recommend should cover you for four months or so. So you should should be in, in great shape. So I would say keep an eye on it. Um, I wouldn't worry, and uh, you know, just keep an eye on it. And, and if um, if you have any other questions, let me know. But you sh that should be uh, should be good to go. Shouldn't have a problem. Uh, we have another question here from uh, uh, Gizes11 says, how can I know what kind of Bermuda I have? That's a tough one, man. I, I will say that if you are, if you are, if the Bermuda that's in your lawn is what the, the house came with, so say you have like a, you're in a subdivision and you're certain that the grass you have is Bermuda, more than likely it's going to be Tifway 419. I mean, the most, probably the most commonly installed Bermuda by builders is Tifway 419, like Tiff Tough. Um, any of the other varieties are considered a bit more premium and you get to pay more for that. So unless you paid extra, whenever you had the place um, built, um, then it, you, more than likely you have, you probably have 419. You say, yeah, it's yes, new construction, new sod. More than likely it's gonna be 419 is what you have. In which case, as far as your follow-up question, you said, I would love to apply PGR, but I don't know what kind of Bermuda I have. So, um, so if you're gonna be applying Primo, the, the rate the rate range for Primo for hybrid Bermuda, which is more than likely what you have in your lawn, they're not gonna put common in. It's more than likely gonna be a hybrid. If I were a betting man, I'd say Tifway 419. The rate ranges from 0.25 ounces, so between there and there, between 0.2 and 3, over for per, um, per thousand square feet per month, up to uh, 0.38, so call it 0.4 ounces 
uh, offer hybrids. That's the higher rate. So if you're just starting out, what you can do is um, you can take the, if you have a four gallon backpack spray, I'll just work through the math for you really quick. Let's say that your lawn is 4,000 square feet because every time I do a lawn, it's gonna be 4,000 square feet because it makes the math easy. So say you have a 4,000 uh, 4, square foot lawn and a four gallon backpack sprayer. What you can do is you can uh, take that 0.25 rate and multiply it by four, which gets you one ounce, and you could spray that once per month and you will get good results doing that. It's gonna give you coverage, it's gonna give you control for um, or suppression is, is a better, uh, uh, regulation is a better way of saying it, for three to four weeks, depending on temperatures and, and, and other factors. What I would recommend instead of doing that is to take the monthly application rate and divide it in half. So we'll, again, assuming that you have 2.419, which is more than likely what you have, and knowing the monthly limit for, uh, for hybrid on the low end is um, 0.25 ounces per thousand square, square feet or one ounce per month, is what you can do is you can take that same four gallons of water and put half an ounce. So you go all the way up to like right there. You mix that much, 0.5 ounces, half an ounce with four gallons of water. And you spray your lawn with that on the first of the month and again on the 15th of the month. You're gonna get great regulation using that. You're gonna, it's gonna reduce the chances of you having tip burn and you're not gonna really have to worry about issues of the lawn coming out of regulation, getting like that coil spring effect where the, where the lawn uh, bounces back because it comes out of regulation. So uh, so yeah, so hope that helps. More than likely what you have is uh, is a TIF Wave 419. It's gonna be, if the if the Bermuda grass leaf is fine, if it's a fine leaf, which is again, if, if I, I've not seen any new construction, at least around here anyway, where they've installed a common, common Bermuda, it's pretty much always TIF Wave. Um, and in that case, the range you have is between 0.25 all the way up to 0.4 or 0.38, if I'm being precise, um, and start at the low end. Start at the low end. So take take half an ounce. If you have a four-gallon backpack sprayer, here's what I would want you to do. I would take half an, half an ounce, mix that with four gallons of water, add in your carbon kit, add in your liquid fertilizer of choice, spray the entire 4,000 square feet with that, and then do the same thing uh, two weeks later on the 15th of the month, and you should have a really good result with that. So hope that helps, sir. Primo is awesome stuff. You will not you will not regret it. I mean, there's there's life before growth regulator in your lawn program, and there's life after it. So hope that was useful. If you need anything else? Let me know. All right. Next up, we have Trevor Johnson. Trevor is in the house tonight, and here's the thing. Trevor did a couple of things. He sent me a picture of the before and after of his lawn, or actually he sent like a like a a um a timeline showing that how the lawn looked a year ago and how the lawn looks you know on the same day this year. So he's up, he says, happy Friday, everyone, and happy Father's Day weekend to the dads out there. Thanks so much, Trevor, really do appreciate that. Thanks for uh, for the well wishes. And if you guys wanna see Trevor's lawn, so you know he has been a viewer for a while, and he sent me a really nice email saying, hey man, really thanks for all your help, and I really wanna show you, like, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been following the course, been getting up, get mowing properly, getting my nutrient program in place, and this is how the lawn looked at this time last year, this is how it looks this year. So I'm gonna show you that now. So take a look at that. On the left is Trevor's lawn last year, this time last year, and this lawn this time, that same time this year, and you can see the difference. Huge difference, night and day difference in the way the uh, the lawn looks. You know, you can tell just putting in that consistent hard work, you know, putting that consistent hard work makes a huge difference. I mean, if you look at that lawn before, I mean, you can tell it looks like to me on the left, like he, he's really starting to get his mowing game in order. You know, he's starting to mow more and you know, he, and it looks like he also went down the height of cut, which has caused some of the discoloration. And then this year he really stayed the course. His nutrient program was like it's in much better shape because the color is so much better. And there's a night and day difference between those lawns. So very, very good job, Trevor. Thanks for uh, for sharing your progress with me and everyone else because sometimes people need that, you know? Folks need that motivation to say, yeah, man, I'm, here. I'm just working so hard and, I think I'm doing everything right and it's just not getting better. When is it gonna get better? So you guys can see the difference, you know, over the course of a year. And really, you, don't, you shouldn't have to take a, a year to, for that to um, to see the results. I mean, you can you can completely transform a lawn in 90 days to where, when, and when I say transform, I mean like if you look at, take a picture of a lawn like three months before and then take a look at it in like uh, like, three, like three months later that you won't even recognize it. They're completely different, con completely different um, um, look in the, the appearance of the turf. So. Stay the course. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun, and it's just if you just embrace the embrace the the, the process, embrace the game, and uh, you'll you'll get you'll get the results. I got a fun um, text from a buddy of mine uh, today. Who if you guys remember that video? I that short I, I linked of spraying, uh, like she was showing good spraying technique, and I was filming someone spraying their back lawn. So he texted me today saying, "Hey man, you didn't tell me that I would like this as much." I said, "I didn't want I didn't want to you know I didn't want to you know." 
sell it too much. I told you, once you get into lawn care, man, once you start working on your lawn, you get the weeds under control, you start mowing, and you really start enjoying the results, it gets addicting. I get it. I get it. So he's really enjoying it, man. He actually already got some Primo on order. He's going to be doing that this next weekend. So good stuff. All right, next up, we have Josh Bronco. Josh Bronco. He says, finally picked up a 3100D this week, adding to the 1600, 1000, JD, 2653. I don't even know what the, what the 2653 collection is. I know the, the 3100D, that, I think it's a triplex for, for Toro. Um, here's the thing, Josh. This, I mean, it's, first of all, we'll, we'll just clap it up. Congratulations. But this comment is useless without pictures. Why don't you send pictures, man? Like, I'm looking here at my email. I'm looking here, Josh. Nope, nope, nope. No, uh, no pictures. Hmm. So, I mean, there's great, great comment. Congrats on the new mower. But uh, yet we have no pictures to show everyone. You know what I mean? So we'll have to deduct, you know, two points for that, for the lack of, uh, for the lack of pictures. Got to send, got to, got to, got to send uh, pictures. So, uh, but yeah, congrats on the new equipment, man. It sounds like you have a uh, very nice stables, lawn care stables that you're, that you're building out there. You know, it's funny. Some people collect cars, some people collect motorcycles. Apparently you and are like Dwayne, where you're also collecting mowers. So I get it, you know. No shame in that at all. Uh, we got Ron Henry, Dron Jay in, in the house. What's going on? And we got Chase in the house as well. What's going on, guys? Appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, next up, we got Mr. Jimmy Miller. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Happy Friday, Jimmy. Hopefully you're doing well. And next up, we have uh, Doug 350Z. Again, he says, that diagonal mo was such a better, more even cut. It is. It just makes sense, right? Because you think about it, like the weight of the mower is more evenly distributed. It's It's in my opinion, the most the, the the best way to get an even distribution of the of the weight of the mower on the slope, which produces a great cut. You know, one of these times what I'm going to do is I am going to cut the front lawn, and I will take pictures of it, or I'll take video of it before um, or after. I'm sorry, after doing that, and then I'll take a video afterwards after I do the diagonal finishing cut, and you'll see the difference. So because this video here really doesn't do it justice. Like if, I, if this looks a lot better after the diagonal cleanup cut, but if I just do just the, um, just lengthwise, it has like a little, a bit of a terracing effect. And just that diagonal cleans it up. It looks, looks gorgeous once it's done. All right, next up we got Mr. Devin in the house. Devin, he says, uh, looking forward to another great night of turf talk. Your lawn has been looking mint, Ron. Thank you so much, sir. It's getting there. It's getting there. I'm putting the work in, but you know, every lawn has problem areas. You know, you guys look at my lawn, you say, oh, you know, the front lawn looks great. In that video, I showed like one area that had some damage from like this. That was damage that, that started, I mean, I didn't re start realizing it until the lawn greened up, but the damage was realized like last winter. And then again, this spring, uh, the ups and downs and everything didn't help but now it's starting to fill in. The temperatures are getting hotter. The lawn is starting to fill in. The back lawn is no different. You guys want to see problems here in my back lawn? I'll show you. I will show you. And then we'll, we'll move on to the next um, the next uh, comment from the viewer. So this is the swale area. Looking great. Gets plenty of sunlight. Living its best life. And as we move on here, you'll see, and so apologies for me walking slow. I just walk kind of slow. And if you look right um, there on the lower left-hand corner of your of the frame of the picture, you can see there that area is a little bit thin, mainly because I, I take the mower over that all the time, but also because it gets less sunlight. Like that, that little area you see there is slanting away from the sun. However, we continue. If you look right here, this is always the last pot of my lawn to fill in because it gets very, it gets not very much sunlight. You see this house, the house is right there. It's shaded. Um, this pic, this, this, uh, video was shot at, oh, like five thirty five just maybe just after five. Um, and you can see it's already catching shade. Whereas the rest of the lawn, you know, you can see it's still getting plenty of sunlight and this is how the, the rest of the lawn looks. So every lawn has problem areas. Every lawn has issues this part looks the best, mainly because there's nothing really obstructing it. It gets tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of sunlight. So, uh, so yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is, in your lawn, if you have an area that's got like a bit of a bare spot, it's just it's it could be an issue just like what I have, right? It just gets a little bit less sunlight, a couple less hours of sunlight over the course of you know several months. It adds up. It adds up. You know, it's funny we got we got a picture here from a viewer. I'll see if I can get it. It is from from Mark. So Mark did top, did, uh, top dress his lawn. 
And if you look here, this is a picture, he sent me small images, so I'm sorry for them not being super clear. But this is how his lawn looks after the top dressing. Overall, filled in nicely, nice and green. But then he's got an area right here that he sent that is a bit of a problem area. Now, if you look to the left, right, this is all he sent me. If you look to the left, you can see some pavement there. So what I did is I, when I emailed him back, I said, so, I mean, I, I, the, the area doesn't like the, the area that has problems doesn't look like it went you went too heavy. But the fact that there's sidewalk there, the next question I asked him, I said, is that spot there where that sidewalk is, is it near the house? He's like, he said, oh yeah, that's totally it. That's it. It's near the house. It gets probably, you know, three, four hours less sunlight than the rest of the lawn. I'm like, there's your issue. There's your issue, right? Because I mean, looking at this, that really doesn't look, um, you can see it's filling in, but compared to just, you know, four or five feet further out, the grass is doing a lot better. And you guys, I, I say it, I say it so, so often and it sounds, I sound like a broken record, but Bermuda grass really, really, really does not like shade. Like it's, there are a lot of grasses that will do all right in shade. Bermuda just isn't one of them. Like anyone that tells you that, hey, we have shade tolerant Bermuda, um, it's just, there's no such thing. There really just isn't, such a, there's no such a thing as shade tolerant Bermuda, even if you do everything else right. Cause you take take my lawn, for example, right? That it's, it's babied. I'm sure a lot of you guys do a lot to your lawn. Some of you maybe do more than I do, but with everything I do, I can't beat not no sunlight. You know what I mean? There's nothing I can do that will make the grass grow in that spot faster if there's not enough sunlight. And it's not an issue that's only um, common to me. It's an issue that, you know, Mark, he sent some pictures in. And I said, hey man, I want to show this on the live stream tonight. So people that are having issues in their lawn, that even this time of year, we're in mid, mid June, and you may still have some areas that are a little bit, that are lagging behind other areas, that that's completely normal. It can happen depending on how much sunlight the area is having, how much traffic it gets. You know, there's a lot of things that can cause those types of problems. So all of this to kind of say that if you're working on your lawn, just stay consistent, keep at it, and you know, eventually it's going to, you're going to get the result. If you, if you stick with it, it's impossible for you to not, um, for the lawn to not get better. All right, so next up we have, so let me put Devin back up here. And next up we have Archie Amos. He says, evening young man. I mow three times a week. I use plant growth regulator twice a month and I can't seem to rid myself of seed heads. What can I do if anything? Uh, I mean, so normally again, Archie, three weeks or so is, is when, at least on my lawn, when seed heads really go away. I mean, I still have a few here and there, particularly um, along the areas that are get really hot, like where the like where I edge the like where the grass and the pavement or the like the sidewalk or the driveway driveway meet, like those areas I might see a little bit of seed heads there here and there. But for the most part, of, you can see that the lawn doesn't have um, a lot of it. Like you look at the front lawn, there's not a lot of seed heads that you can really see in that. It's looking that's looking looking pretty solid along the edge though, along the sidewalk. I do have that. So the things I would say at this point are, um, one, is the lawn getting enough water? You're putting enough water on it, not too much, but is it getting adequate amounts of water? Uh, this time of year, really an inch of water per week should still be enough for Bermuda because it hasn't been crazy hot yet. You know, we get days in the 80s, 70s, but it's not been it's not been super consistently just yet. So if you're getting an inch of water on the lawn, that should be enough, um, you know, Archie, over the course of a week. Uh, then the, the next thing I would say is uh, nutrients. Those are the two things I would say is, is um, your, uh, like check your nutrient levels. I'm not sure if you've done a soil test before this, the start of the season, just to make sure there's nothing weird going on. I know that you're regularly feeding the lawn, so I don't think that should be a problem. But that's something that, that I might check because two years ago, yeah, not last season, two years ago, uh, Dalvin, Dalvin, um, who is, he's now a member of the Golf Course Lawn Academy. He had an issue where he had started getting seed heads in late May and it was all the way into like the last week of July and he was still having seed heads. And I said, you should, I said, dude, are you watering enough? He's like, yeah. I said, I said, are you sure the nutrients are where they should be? He's like, yeah, they're fine. I, I fertilize. I'm sure they're great. I'm sure I'm, I'm in good shape. I said, have you done a soil test this year? He's like, no, I'll get, we'll get to it eventually. So finally, when we got to the end of July is when he finally got a soil test result, got his soil test done. And when the results came back, all his macros, all three macros, NPK, so nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, all three were low. So he did a correct, he, he did an amendment. He applied, um, I think he used the, the, the triple 12. Um, at that time on on the lawn. And like three weeks later, it looked a lot better. It looked, looked way, way better. Huge, huge difference in the appearance of the lawn as, as far as the amount of seed heads that he was seeing in the lawn. So Archie, I would say water and nutrients um, are the things that, that I would point to. Mowing really, here's the thing, mowing more frequently 
is not going to make seed heads go away. It's, I mean, you'll see them, um, if you're mowing shorter, they're just gonna grow shorter and they become less of an eyesore versus if you let your lawn get tall. So from an appearance standpoint, I find that if you're mowing shorter, it's not quite as bad than if you let your lawn grow uh, grow tall. But like mowing more frequently isn't gonna get rid of seed heads. It's it's really a time thing, um, adequate amounts of water, and then making sure that the lawn, that the nutrients are where they need to be um, for the for the, the turf and then, you know, the. The, the seed has become less and less of a problem. So um, growth regulator, Primo is definitely going to help with that. It's a, it's a great tool for reducing the amount of seed heads. Um, so that's, if you, you're already doing that. So you tell you what, Arch, if you can, if you don't mind, send me a picture. I know you already have my email address. If you don't mind, send me a picture you know, later on or you know, after the show, whenever you get a chance, to send me a picture of what you're dealing with um, and I'll see what else I can do to help you out. So I'd like to see, you know, given everything that you're doing, what, like how bad it really, uh, really is. So. Sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but between those those things, again, water, nutrients, and then you can use growth regulator to help suppress it. You really shouldn't be dealing with it too. It should be getting better, I guess, now that we're like mid-June. You know what I mean? So keep me posted, send me a picture of it, and um, I will write you back and, and help out in any way that I can. All right, Jimmy Miller's up next. He says, dang, Josh. He says, thanks for making me feel bad. I can't even find a 1600 or 1000. Yeah, you know why, Jimmy? Because Josh has all of them. He buys them all up. He buys them all up, right? He's got all he's got all the mowers. Mm-hmm. But uh, keep looking. You can you can definitely get one. We got Alex up here. He says uh, like button press ever so gently. Thank you guys. So we have 120 people in here so in the live stream so far, and only 67 likes. Surely we can do better than that. Surely we can do better. It costs absolutely nothing to move your mouse over there, move your trackpad over and just tap that like button ever so gently. It's a free way, completely free, free way to support the channel, to, uh, you know, to, to send good vibes to the YouTube algorithm and get more folks to come out, come over and hang out with us, us uh, lawn care crazies and have a good time. So if you guys wouldn't mind doing that, I would really, really appreciate it. All right, we got Offroad NV up next. He says, shooting in from Instagram, he says, hey, sir, Ron Henry. He says, happy Friday. We love Golf Course Lawn Talk. I appreciate that, man. It means a lot. I really enjoy uh, chatting with you guys, you know, chopping it up, talking about lawn care. It's tons and tons and tons of fun. So uh, thank you for giving me uh, the, the most valuable thing you have, which is a bit of your time to be able to do that. So thanks for the kind words, sir. I really do appreciate it. Really do appreciate it. All right, Univ, Univ, uh, Pogue is up next. He says, woo. And then uh, next up, um, our Devin is saying, Archie Amos, let them run their course. Once you notice that the seed head production has subsided, give it a shot of N. Take a lot of, takes a lot of energy to produce seed head shoots. So there you go. So let it, let it run out. He says, again, for me, it's like a three week problem on my lawn. Three weeks and they're, you know, they, they burn off, or they, they burn out, but they go away quite a bit. They, they pretty much subside. Alex's lawn this year, also had some seed head issues. And then, I mean, if I, I don't know how many pictures of it, but his lawn is looking really good now. So both of our lawns are kind of, you know, they're kind of in lockstep. They kind of, you know, they, they, they kind of have melded together. And, uh, you know, like like him um, or like my lawn, he had a point where it ramped up and then it went away. And now it's for the most part, there's, there's hardly anything save along like the sidewalks and driveways and, and that type of thing. So, so yeah. On the topic of giving it a shot at N, you guys know what this is. Today is the 16th, which you know what that means, middle of the month. So this weekend, this weekend, I haven't decided if it's gonna be tomorrow or Sunday. I'm thinking it's probably gonna be Sunday because I mowed the front lawn today, but I need to, I need to mow the back lawn. Um, but this weekend is, you guys know what that means. It's gonna be the 901C carbon kit and your favorite gross regulator, Primo Max. So this is gonna go down middle of the month give the lawn what it needs to look good. You guys saw in the pictures, I was, I was afraid to show you guys that video earlier. It's starting to fall off and look, look a little bit rough. I'm sorry your eyes had to be exposed to that, but I'm gonna correct the situation here this weekend. I'm gonna spray it, give it some more Primo, give it some uh, some biosimilants and fertilizer and just get it ready for the 4th of July. Guys, here's the thing I realized too. We are mid-month, so the 4th of July is just around the corner. Like, you know, lawn care Super Bowl time is, is coming up. You know, so if you got your you got your barbecue, or your that party plan, or you're gonna be do, doing fireworks in your lawn, you still got well, how much? Two weeks, a little over two weeks to get the lawn in order. So you know, get your if you don't have your supplies yet, go to the golf course lawn store, get get all uh, kitted out because you still got time between now and then to get the lawn in great shape. So I am gonna I'm gonna work on the lawn this weekend and then 
Um, and then like, obviously for the 4th of July, I mean, I might do my, my, uh, spray, um, maybe a day or two early just to give it, give it a little extra time to really give it that pop. So for the 4th of July weekend, it's looking, looking awesome, looking, looking awesome. All right. Thanks for the, uh, for the feedback, Devin. I really do appreciate it as always. All right. Next up, we got Colin Potter in the house. He says, Dallas grass, bane of my existence. Yes. It's bane of everybody's existence that has it. Dallas grass is, uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. You know, there's, again, I have a, a couple of friends that work in industry and literally uh, like one of them sprays, a couple of them spray lawns, but the one I'm thinking about, he's, the, all he does is, uh, is spray lawns for a living. He's a spray business. And he won't even take on lawns that have Dallas grass in them. Like if it has a ton of Dallas grass in it, he's like, nope, I'm not, he's, I won't even take on a new customer that has that because they don't realize that it's going to take, one, they're not going to pay me to come and dig it all out. But then second, it's going to take work on their part as far as physically removing it to get rid of it. Because there isn't really... There isn't really a selective herbicide for killing uh, Dallas grass on residential lawns um, anyway. You know what I mean? There's just not really a way to um, to keep to to get it out of your lawn once it's there out of, um, say, digging it out. You know, I, I, have a, I was talking to uh, a Syngenta rep this uh, this week and I was saying, man, you know, so for, I mean, you guys are doing a lot of work and you guys are you know coming up with all kinds of cool stuff. They told me some cool stuff they got working on that's coming down the pipe. Um, I said, well, Dallas grass. I mean, what's, what's up with that? He says, so what's the best way to get rid of that? I mean, certainly there's gotta be something you guys have got to get figured out. He says, yeah, the best way to get rid of Dallas grass, get a shovel. That's, that's the, that's the way to get rid of it in residential lawns. Get a shovel. That's the, that's the way to remove Dallas grass in your lawn. So sorry we're dealing with it, Colin. You know, the thing is, if, it, if your lawn is a relatively reasonable size, so when I say you, need, you don't have acres and acres of property, if you take an hour a couple times a week, you'll be surprised at how quickly you can get ahead of removing Dallas grass or any other weeds really from your lawn. You know what I mean? So I wish I had better use for you. You're not gonna be able to really conduct any kind of meaningful chemical warfare against Dallas grass in a residential lawn anyway. So your best bet is just to dig it out. Dig it out. Get one of these these fancy weeding tools. You can get them for like nine bucks off of Amazon, and that will uh, that's the way to get rid of it. Next up is Mr. Higgy Pop. He's in the house. He says, "Hey Ron, happy Friday. I just sent a picture of my lawn. Do tell, did you know? It says the over application of liquid iron was a week ago, and the lawn looks good. Have a great show. So let's see. So you guys remember Higgy went um, a bit heavy on the application of iron. I forgot how much he said he did, but he said it was uh, was it over over double the rate." It was quite a bit, but I got a picture of him here. Let's see. It looks good. I mean, it looks looks really good. Maybe you didn't apply it as heavily as you thought you did, Hickey, because this is what his lawn looks like right now. That looks good. Color looks great, man. Looks like you got you, you took some uh, some inspiration from Wade where you have like some of that curve stripe action. I see you got like lines because you got a little bit of a curve to them, but the color looks great, man. Yeah, it looks uh, looks really good. I would have I would think that by now. If the if you're going to experience the issues from an over application of iron, like if you went really like really really heavy, uh, that you would be seeing it by now. You know what I mean? I mean, and to me that looks that looks solid. You know that looks that looks good. So you know, dodge a bullet. Sometimes in life it's better to be lucky than good, right? So uh, so yeah, good stuff. Thank you for sending the picture in. And then Mark Romano says, "LOL, uh, Archie." Uh, okay, I guess it's about the seed heads. Oh, it's about it's about calling out LG. That's what it's about. That's that's what you're that's what you're laughing about. I got you. All right, DH Designs and Painting. What's going on, guys? DH Designs. I haven't seen you guys in a while. Hopefully, you are doing well. Thanks for coming in, and stopping by to say hello. You said good evening and happy Friday. Happy Friday to you as well. And uh, hope all is going uh, going well with you. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. And then next up, we have Josh Bronco. Josh has a question or a comment. He says, "Hey, I'm currently cutting at at five eighths point." Uh, 625. What would you scout to before leveling? Tiff tough. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That's a great height. That's a great height. I mean, points, you know, you know, 0.625, great cut, great height to maintain your lawn. It's a, it's, it's, that's, I would leave it exactly there. I wouldn't go any lower than that, especially if you have areas of your lawn that are sloped, have any kind of slope. I mean, having a little bit taller, a little bit longer grass is going to help that the, the grass hold on to the sand. So you're not going to have as much issues with washout. And that's not going to be an issue to work, you know, to, to see the high and low spots in the lawn and to use a leveling rake on, on a uh, 0.625 on a 5 8 lawn. That's not going to be um, a problem at all. I would leave it exactly there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go any lower, uh, Josh. I wouldn't go any lower at all. That's, uh, that's, that's good. That's a good height for me. Would leave it right where you have it. Next up is Jose, uh, let's see here. Jose um, Guadarrama. Guadarrama, he says... 
Hello, happy Friday. Question, how many days preferable of no rain for Advion to be sprinkled? And can it be done throughout the whole lawn or only the edging? Thank you. So I try and find, you know, a four or five day period where there's not going to be any rain in the forecast. So you want to apply Advion to a dry lawn, the fire ant bait, to a dry lawn, and then you don't want to have rain really for a couple of days after that. And to answer your question, can it be done, applied to the entire lawn? Yes. Yes, it can be. I don't have, do I have one here? Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. So if you look, what he's talking about, guys, is this, which is Advion fire ant bait. If you want what I consider like the bees needs for keeping, for getting rid of and keeping fire ants out of your lawn, this stuff is awesome. So on the top, there comes, um, this is a brand new bottle. So it's got two openings. One is like for a spoon to dig in here and, um, and to, to get some out. Or you've got the one that I primarily use, which is like your, your salt, your, your pepper shaker, your salt shaker opening, right? Like that guy right there. So they use guys on the gram. This is this one. And then this is the one for that's like for a spoon for like that right there, right? So I don't ever use this side. I always use the, this side, that one. Um, and yes, Jose, what I, when I, I've already done my lawn this year. Um, and what I do is I walk the entire perimeter and then I walk throughout the entire lawn. Um, you know, just kind of, I hold the bottle and just kind of just, just, it's the bottle is a, how can I say it? It's like a soft, it's a soft plastic, but it's like one where you can kind of, it like will, it will return to its size. So you can kind of, you can hold it like this sideways and just kind of give it a squeeze and it will like blow out the granules. And I just walk around the entire lawn and I, and I do, and I do that. Yeah. So, and one for me, one of these is a two pound jug. One of these lasts about a, a season and a half. So every just under two years, I have to buy another one of these. So, I mean, for whatever they cost now, 40 something dollars, they're not that expensive. Um, for, I'll tell you what they cost now. I've, it's been a while since I, since I looked. So I've got, I got a whole bunch of it um, that I stocked up on. But, um, but let's see, what is, what is Advi on Fire and Bay go for now? It is, yeah, under $50. So um, for under 50 bucks, you can, you know, you can, you get, our fire ants are not going to be a problem in your lawn. So this is awesome stuff. Uh, the only thing is to his to his question, you want to apply it when to dry grass, and you want to apply it when it's not um, there's not going to be rain in the forecast for a couple of days. Uh, that's when you're going to get the best results for it. So if you're looking, if you're interested in that, um, so add Vion. I'll give you a link to that here. And also, if you want to see a video that I shot, I think it was last year on um, on fire ants and how to get rid of them using Advion, you can see that here. It was last year, it was around this time last year. It was around May, imagine that. All right, so there you go. This is the uh, Fire Ant video. And in, in this, I show how, how I like to use that product, um, both for, I guess, like broadcast, like what uh, Jose's talking about, and also if you have a mound, how to use it on a mound. Because a lot of people think you spray the mound directly, and that's not how you're supposed to use the product. You want to spray around it. So. Um, so have a look at that video. It's a relatively short one, and it will give you some good tips for getting the most out of that product if you decide to use it. It's a really, really good product. Again, I, I started using it in 2017, 2018, and I haven't haven't gone back, haven't gone anywhere else. So it's uh, it's that good. All right, next up is Jason Crawl. It says Jason is in the house. What's going on, Jason Crawl? You're in the house. Welcome. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. We appreciate you. Next up, we have T1000. He has a question. He says, hey, Ron, my Bermuda lawn is thriving and green. That's good. Even while being in the hundreds in central Texas this week. However, my most recent soil test speaks otherwise. Can soil tests be wrong or an error? No, not, not necessarily. I mean, if you, I mean, I haven't seen your, I haven't seen your, uh, your soil test results, but I mean, the thing is, the thing I would look at I would say is this of T1000 is if your lawn is looking good, I would say it's looking good it despite uh, the soil not being in, in as great a shape as it could be. So what I would say is if it looks good now, imagine how it will look once you correct the uh, the deficiencies. You know what I mean? So it's not like if you have um, if you have a, a couple of the levels uh, that are, are a bit low that your that your grass is going to look like absolute garbage. That's that's not necessarily the case. I mean, it's it's rare to see a lawn where that is that is NPK that's deficient of the macros like like heavily deficient and still looks good. Like that is is somewhat rare, but it's not uncommon to see you know, one of them being a little bit lower than another, maybe some of your micros also being lower and the lawn still looking reasonably good. That said, if you correct that, it's going to, it's going to look even better. So not necessarily wrong. It just gives you data as far as, you know, how to, how to plan your nutrient program, how to, how to, how to improve the soil, and then by extension, improve your grass even more, even better 
than it looks uh, now. So that's good. That's awesome. Glad to hear that Trulon is doing well in Central Texas. It's, it hasn't been that hot yet this year. I mean, I'm not sure what the temps are like for you guys in Central Texas, but here in Georgia, it's not, it hasn't been like you know, violently hot yet. You know what I mean? So that's good. I mean, I, I'll, uh, I'll take it. The lawn's greening up nicely and it's looking good and it's, it's not terrible to be out there, which is all good things, right? All right, next up is uh, Salomon Hussein. He says, uh, hi, Ron. I had um, Arbonomics for some time, but after listening to your live streams, I decided to take it on myself. Can you give me a recommendation or treatment plan for the rest of the year? I have zoysia. Yeah, so I'm not, I guess that must be like a, a service or something. I'm not, I'm not familiar with what Arbonomics is. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I can give you some, I can give you a treatment plan. Like It's a high level one that, that a lot of people use and have good results with that they like. So um, the best one we have in our, our paid course, which is the Golf Course Lawn Academy, in that you have an, an application calendar that's more detailed. But if you want free, I get it. Everyone likes them free, right? If you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and you go to Guides and click on Lawn Care Schedule, and you click on the monthly application schedule, right? If you uh, hit that, it will take you down to a month-by-month -month breakdown of, at a high level, what is taught in the academy. So what you can do in March, which you should be doing in April, in May, in June, which is this month. So for the month of June, you'd be doing Growth Regulator, if that's something that you, you want to get into. It's pretty awesome. I highly recommend it. Uh, consistent mowing, that's really important. Uh, the fertilizer that we recommend is Humic Max. So given that you have Zoysia, Humic Max would be a great a great fit. Obviously get a soil test result to make sure the uh, soil test is done to make sure there's nothing weird going on in your lawn that we need to correct. All, thing else be, all things being equal, Humic Max is um, it's what I run on my lawn. And um, you know, emphasizing again, consistent mowing, a carbon, the carbon kit application, this can be mixed along with Primo Max. So the, so the growth, growth regulator and the carbon kit, these two can be mixed together. So that's what this is talking about, right? So if you decide you're going to go with a fertilizer variant, you can pick that, mix this along with Humic Max, and you are, are good to go. And then Essential G as your granular biostimulant. So this is a month-by-month -month breakdown of, um, of what you can do. And, it's gonna, if you, and if you do this coupled with consistent mowing, it's really tough to not have a good-looking lawn. Now, when I say consistent mowing, what do I mean by that? I mean that you mow your lawn at least twice per week. Twice per week is the the barrier. That's the the minimum you need to do to get a lawn that looks that looks really good. That really sets itself apart from your neighbors. If you do all this other stuff that's in here, you're gonna have really green grass. It's gonna look it's gonna look decent. But as far as the appearance, as far as getting a lawn that has you know that really manicured that golf course lawn look that look that looks you know like like that to get that. Like this appearance, with everything I do to the lawn, with the fertilizer, the top dressing, the you know the biosimilants, everything else, really it's the mowing that gives it that look. So I, I would encourage you, with you taking it on yourself, yes, there's a treatment plan. I'm gonna send you a link here to it so you can you can go right to that section once you um once you you know you leave the live stream you want something to look at. But I would I can't um, emphasize enough how important it is to also make sure that you also mow the lawn because that's what brings it all together. You know the biggest difference between a residential lawn and a golf course. I mean, there's lots of differences, but the biggest thing that a golf course does more than residential um, lawns is that they just get mowed way more often. You know what I mean? And if you take a residential lawn, if you take a residential lawn and you mow it, you treat it the same way a golf course is treated. From a mowing perspective, you get a lawn that looks like a golf course, right? So that's the thing I would tell you. Check out that um, that schedule. Also. There's also other sections here in our in the guides, lots of free content. So if you go to like, for example, um, our, just the, the blog, there's new articles there every single week on how to deal with weed management, how to create stripes in your lawn, um, best fertilizers to use, uh, you know, what if you're using, what's the different types of soils and how to compare them, the, the pros and cons of each. Um, we've got our, our, uh, our knowledge base, which has a lot, some, a lot of those things, those areas, a lot of the blogs are organized here. So on seasonal lawn care, guides on fungicides and uh, in controlling insects and other damage and other damaging um, um, problems in your lawn, um, how to deal with weeds, uh, our newly launched FAQ section, because what I did with this, this is actually, this is cool. This is something we actually launched uh, that went live today. Um, so a lot of questions that I, I commonly get, um, not that I don't mind answering them, because you know I'm, I'm patient. I'll, I'll answer their questions, but I can now point people here. So the questions I get a lot over and over and over and over and over again, 
they are now in the FAQ section. So an example of that would be um, like, how do I kill weeds without killing my grass, right? There's an entire blog post on that. Can I apply fertilizer and herbicides on the same day? Yes, you can. Here's the idea behind how you can do it and the, or the order I would do them in. What's the difference between pre-emergent and post-emergent herbicides? How often should I fertilize my lawn? How, how often should I, should I use uh, surfactant with fertilizer? Water lawn biosimilants? Um, you know, when should I air, top dress my lawn? How, when should I air it my lawn? How should, should I move my grass? And then of course, when I had to throw in here just to be a bit of a troll because you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a joker at heart. So one of the questions um, that I, I commonly get, and you guys have seen this in the live stream as well, which is, which Bermuda grass is best for shade? And I'd be like, it's a trick question. Bermuda doesn't like shade, so don't try. So yeah, so I, in addition to what I've already sent you, um, uh, Solomon, um, I also send you the link to the FAQ, but check out the FAQ, check out the, the knowledge base. There's tons of content both on YouTube and also on the store, on the blog and the, and the, um, the knowledge base that you'll find useful. The knowledge base is kind of cool because it links to, it the, connects to everything. Whereas the blog is just the blogs. The knowledge base has articles and stuff that are not on the blogs. So take a look at that. Again, that's completely free to consume and pretty much, I'm trying to think what most of your long questions you're going to have are going to be answered there. Worst case, you can always drop me a line and I'll help you out. But, uh, but yeah. And congrats on taking over your lawn, man. Congrats on, uh, on taking over, taking care of your lawn for yourself. I mean, it's going, here's the thing you need to find, you need to realize you are likely initially going to spend more money doing it yourself because you got to buy the equipment that a service has. You're going to likely end up, even if you have the equipment, you're still likely to spend more money because you're going to, you're going to start um, you can start doing biosimilants and start doing more than what a typical lawn care service will do. So you ultimately end up spending more, but the lawn ends up looking better than it would ever look if you were paying someone else to do it. Unless you're, you're spending, you know, thousands of dollars a month to pay someone to do basically what you're going to be doing now. So hope that helps, sir. If I can help with anything else, let me know. I appreciate having you as a viewer. Mike F is up next. He says, hey, Ron, great to be here. Glad to have you here. And next up, we got Granger Hicks. Tuning in for Facebook, he says, Ron Henry, it's been a while. I have a night off. Glad to be joining. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming to hang out, Granger. Thanks so much for uh, for stopping in on the live stream. Now that you have an evening off. Appreciate all the love and support. Next up, we got VMH, Mr. Crabgrass No More for a season and a half growing strong. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Hopefully you're doing well, uh, VMH. And and for all the dads out there, you know, happy, apparently this weekend is happy, is Father's Day's weekend, I believe. So I guess happy Father's Day to all the uh, the dads out there. VMH, hopefully you're doing uh, doing well. You know, on the topic of Father's Day, I got a picture to show you guys. So Lance F, or I think Lance F's better half, sent me a picture of his Father's Day gift, which is pretty cool. I got to admit, she did a good job. Well done. And this is it. He says, at Golf Course Lawn, Lance F has rotary scissors. He's whatever makes you happy. So I guess this is what this man wanted for uh, for Father's Day. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, his sweetheart got him got him some new hardware. So that's pretty awesome, man. Congrats on the new hardware. You know what? And as always, we got to clap it up for that. It's got to happen. Very nice. Very nice. Rotary scissors are, um, it's one of those things that you didn't, it's it's a niche item. It's like, it's not definitely, it's definitely not one of the first lawn care tools that I would buy. But once you have one, you wonder, like you, you, you'll be super happy that you have it, especially if you're real mowing, because it just gives that, it allows you to have that finishing, that, that real mowed look all the way up to all the edges next to mailboxes, along driveways. It gives you that long, that, that, that manicured look. So congrats, great job on um, requesting and getting a nice set of rotary scissors. Keep us uh, posted on how, on how it does, man. All right, uh, next up, um, we have a question here on Instagram. It says, should I use slow and fast release fertilizer? Uh, <laughs> uh, should I use slow and fast? I'm sorry, not, that was not a laugh for you. I just saw LG is here, so here we go. Um, so should I use slow and fast release fertilizer? So yes, yes, the answer to your question is yes. And the thing is you'll find um, B metal is that most fertilizers are a combination. Like most fertilizers are not all fast, strictly fast release and all quickly slow release. Most of them are a combination. So like a quick, an all, give you an example. A slow release fertilizer would be like an organic fertilizer, like um, like the, the new Miramichi premium organic that we carry on the golf course lawn store. That would be an example of a slow release fertilizer. 
very, very unlikely to burn your lawn. You know, even if you if you went heavy on the application, right? Nothing I'm recommending that, but if you went heavy on the application, highly unlikely to cause damage to your lawn. So that's an example of a slow release fertilizer. Example of a fast release fertilizer, quick release fertilizer would be like straight urea. Like that's gonna be, that's gonna release very quickly. Um, you're gonna see a, a flush of growth from, from spraying that. Most fertilizers, most synthetic fertilizers, for example, the, the fertilizers that we carry from Lebanon Turf, um, like Humic Max, the Complete 14714, and the Stress 12024 is a blend. You'll see that there's gonna be a percentage of slow and quick release fertilizer. So Humic Max, that one is 35% slow release, 65% uh, fast release or quick release. And then the others are, um, they, the, the ratios vary. Like they, for example, the 12024 has the most amount of slow release nitrogen in it compare uh, of the three, um, which is good because now if you have like say a cool season lawn this time of year, so you got like a rye, fescue, a KBG lawn, and you still wanna feed it throughout this time of the year when it's starting to see a bit more stress as it gets hotter, a slower release fertilizer is a good way to go. Um, and that fertilizer also happens to have higher potassium. It's 12% nitrogen and 24% and potassium. So it's it's a, it's really a, that's hence the name stress. It's designed for um, either waking up the, the lawn at the beginning of the season, helping the lawn um, when it's going about to go dormant or in the middle of the season, like the, the, the summer months, if you have a cool season lawn. So yes, most most of them are a blend, and uh, so hope that helps as far as um, as far as answering your question. Should you use slow and fast release? You probably already are. The fertilizer you're using is likely a blend of slow and fast release, unless you're using straight urea or you're using an organic. So hope that helps. Great question. If you need anything else, let me know. And uh, Offered Envy says, yes, I did get Lance F those pretty scissors. Good job. Good job. Very, very good job. He's a lucky man. He's a good job. Got him, got the man a nice pair of scissors for Father's Day. Nicely done. All right. So we are back, guys. And uh, I see there's been a super chat and it's hath begun. Mr. LG is showing himself here. Thank you for chiming in, LG. Super chat received. He says, sorry, I've been so quiet. My rehab facility doesn't allow internet access after 6 p.m. Central. Uh, now that I'm out, who'd like a drink? Hi, Archie. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be good tonight. All right, so uh, so thanks so much uh, for the super chat, uh, LG. Uh, given that you are now, um, you're, the, you're the, the top, let me get you here, the top uh, super chat, you are now the show sponsor. So there you go, your name in lights for whatever that means to you. And I gotta find the star, the star, the sunshine emoji because you know you're just getting out of uh, out of rehab. I don't want to do anything that's going to trigger you. I want to make sure that you have you know your your emoji and all. I know how, how particular how particular you are. So there you go, sir. You're now the show sponsor. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate all the love and support. And I'm glad that you now have internet access after 6 p.m. Central. We did miss you. All right, uh, Maestro says, "What's good, Ron? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing all right. Can't complain." It's uh, the lawn's looking good. It's starting to come together finally. This weekend is spray weekend. It's the middle of the month, so you know the primo, the carbon kit goes down. Looking forward to that. Always fun, and uh, overall doing well. Get to hang out with you fine people, and chat about lawn care. Right? There are worse ways to spend a uh, a Friday evening. All right. Next up is Jason Crawl. He says a lot of lawns in my area have fungus. Will nitrogen take care of it? Depends on the lawn disease. So it, you know, I'll say this for for a Bermuda lawn. If you have mild dollar spot, um, I'll put, here's the thing: in most lawn, most Bermuda lawns that are being that are well fed, that are getting enough nitrogen, typically dollar spot doesn't take root. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't become um, a real problem. Um, as far as it correcting um, that that correcting a, a, a disease problem, no. Adding nitrogen and adding nitrogen is not going to fix that. The way to correct a disease problem in your lawn is to use a fungicide, and then yes, feeding the lawn after that is going to help it to help you know simulate new growth and help the lawn to recover from the from the damage from the disease. So if you have a disease problem, uh, Jason, what you're going to do is you can go to go to the golf course lawn store, go to shop and then go to fungicide insecticide section. And you have two options for fungicides. You've got um, well, I've got three, but I'm just going to talk about. You have liquid you have a liquid option, you have a granular option. If you want the granular option, you can go with Headway. This is two fungicides in one. It is isoxystrobin and propiconazole. And uh, this is this is a great broad spectrum fungicide. It will take care of most common lawn diseases. There are, as far as the application rate, if you are dealing with an active problem, you're gonna be closer to four pounds per thousand square feet, but check the, um, 
check the label for the particular disease that you're dealing with. So if you want granular uh, headways, what I would say go with. If you have, if you want liquid, look at something we started carrying this year because I finally found a, a nice combination liquid fungicide. Um, there's Pillar SC. The nice thing about Pillar is that it, this one is this one bottle, this 43 ounce in, um, bottle covers one acre. So one, um, the, the application rate is very easy. It is one ounce per thousand square feet. So this one small little bottle, this 43 ounce, this bottle right here, I got one right here. I'm showing you the, the thing, I can show you the bottle. This bottle right here covers an acre, so 43,000 square feet. It, much like Headway, has two active ingredients. They're both fungicides in the same family. They're both group, uh, group three and group 11 fungicides. And these I have not memorized. So this one has got, as far as the active ingredient, is uh, tritoconazole and then pyroclostrobin. So it's got two, two active ingredients. Um, this, this will, if you spray your lawn with this, right, what this is gonna do, um, what you could expect if you have a disease problem in your lawn is that it, spraying a fungicide is, or using a granular, either one, whichever you wanna go, is going to arrest the problem. It's gonna stop it from getting worse. So if you had like say, large patch or summer patch in your lawn right now, right? and you were to spray pillar, what's gonna happen is over the next, you know, over the first week or week or so, it's going to, the the, the disease, the, this fungus is not gonna spread, it's not gonna get any worse. And over the, the next 21 days, you're gonna start seeing the lawn recover. Even though it's getting better, if you have an active disease problem in your lawn, the, the recommendation is to do a follow-up application 21 days later, 14 to 21 days later. I, I typically lean towards the, the three week um, period. So if I do an application at the beginning of the month, three weeks in, I'll do another fungicide app of the same of the same type, just to ensure that you don't have any regression, any relapse um, in the lawn. So um, it, as far as how to prevent the, the problem from getting worse, use a fungicide, and then you can use your feeding program, nitrogen, um, phosphorus, potassium, whatever your, your particular, um, your, your soil needs, and that, is gonna help the lawn recover from the damage. But it's not like applying a fungicide is going to reverse the damage that's already happened. Using a fungicide is going to, is gonna kill the fungus, gonna kill the disease that's causing the problem, and is going to allow the lawn over time to heal and recover. And yes, that is when ensuring that you have adequate amounts of nitrogen is important because that's gonna help, that's gonna help drive the bus, it's gonna help the lawn um, grow through the damage that it, 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 um, it suffered from the disease. So. Strictly speaking, nitrogen does not fix lawn disease problems. Fungicide does that. Um, but, but, but fertilizing after you've got the, the damage under control is a good thing to do because it's gonna help the lawn recover uh, that much faster. So hope that helps. You got two options. Um, if, you like, if you like liquids, I would wholeheartedly recommend Pillar. That's what I used this year. I didn't use Headway this year, I used Pillar SC. Um, I haven't had any disease problems in my lawn at all. It's looking good. Um, um, was, or this this summer I haven't had these problems in my lawn. And then Headway, I've used in years past, also works great. So either one of these. So if you like granular, Headway, if you like liquid, use Pillar, and you shouldn't have, um, sh that, that's good, that should take care of it. And again, the nice thing with Pillar is that there's only one application rate. You don't have to worry about, do I have, you know, Pythium? Do I have Take All Rot? Do I have, um, you know, Dollar Spot? It doesn't really matter what it is. The rate is one ounce per thousand square feet. So hope that helps, sir. And if you're interested in getting, picking up one of the fungicides, I will send you a link to where you can get them here on the Golf Course Lawn Store at Jason Crawl. There you go. You're all squared away. All right, next up is Mr. Sean Murphy. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Trying to do a better job of speaking. Love these Friday night streams. Yeah, that's one of the things that, that this has helped me with. Believe it or not, when I was, you guys can see it sometimes, sometimes it happens. But when I was younger, I had a, a terrible problem with stuttering. Like I would like speak and I was sitting there, I would like, it couldn't get words out, right? And even now when I get tired, normally towards the end of the show, you guys can probably see it sometimes it happens. I start speaking really fast, I eat my words. So in addition to like getting to learn a bunch about, about the, the problems that you guys have in your lawns and you know, being like your, your lawn care help desk and just being able to help out and having fun just chopping it up about lawn care, it's also helped me get better at public speaking because I have to slow down and enunciate and gather my thoughts. So. It's, uh, you know, the, the way to get better at speaking is to speak more, believe it or not. So to speak more, if you can record yourself doing it and then critique where you are using like word whispers, like, um, uh, where you repeat yourself over and over and over again, something I still do occasionally, that's how you can get better at it. 
but there's not really a way to uh, to do, to get better without actually doing it. You want your lawn to get better? You got to work on it. You know, you got to fertilize, you got to mow it, you got to do all those things. You want to get better at basketball, want to get better at you know whatever it is you want to do. You got to put the reps in. The reps are what's going to help uh, help you get help you improve. And speaking on camera is a good way to do that. All right, we have a comment here from the maestro. He says, ran out of turf plex for my mid-mouth app, still gonna spray Nutrizolve. Can I mix in a Celeprin in the tank? Yes, uh, yeah, you can. Yep, yeah, you, you can do that. You can do that, um, um, the maestro. Uh, what I would say is, if you're going to do that, you can mix a Celeprin in the tank, wait, give it, I mean, if you spray in the morning, wait at the earliest until the evening to water, ideally the following day. Ideally, the following day. So if you don't if you don't have enough time where you can spray them separately, that would be the best thing. Best thing would be to spray them completely separately. But if you say, "Hey, I don't want to go out and spray my lawn twice," you want to put a cellophane in the tank and spray them out, spray it all at once. You can do that. I just would not water the cellophane in immediately after spraying it because remember, you're going to be spraying or else you got in, in the tank there, and those are foliar apps. So you want them to really have adequate time to dry on the plant leaf before you run any kind of irrigation. So, yep, you can do that. Wait till either the afternoon or the following morning to water it in and you should be good to go. Hope that helps. All right, next up is Keith Madison. Keith Madison is up next. He says, good afternoon. Got my soil test results back. That was fast. Left local post office Monday, got results Thursday. Can't fix what's not diagnosed first. Thanks, Ron. You are very, very welcome, Keith. Yes, that's the thing with my soil. I really, in addition to um, being easy to understand, like they are are fast. Like I live, I'm not sure what part of the country you're in, Keith, but I am in Georgia, obviously. And every time I send my soil test results in, it's normally six days for me. So if I send my results in on a Monday before the following Monday, normally by the weekend, I will have an email saying, hey, we've got your soil test results, go look. Um, so in your case, you're probably closer to where they are, I think their their lab is in Washington, is in Washington State. So if you're closer, then you have less tra less transit time for the sample to get there, and you get your results back faster. But yes, it's a good thing, even if you only do it once. It is worth getting a soil test because everything's gotten more expensive. Fertilizer, especially, has gotten more expensive. Wouldn't you want to know that whatever you're putting into your soil is what it actually needs, right? And he says uh, 200 stars. Thanks so much, uh, Keith. Good job on getting uh, your your soil test your soil test done. Next up is Miss Phyllis Lawrence. Phyllis Lawrence is up next. She says, "Hi Ron, my Bermuda lawn is now under a lot of stress with all this hot Texas weather. Plus, my first soil test is bad. Thanks. Hit the like button, guys. Well, I mean, yeah, your results might not be what you would expect to see, but that's okay. That means you don't you know what you know where to go from there. So the thing with with soil, soil test results, there really isn't a thing as a bad soil test result. It's like, do the results say I have to do something or do the results say I'm fine and can I can just keep doing what I'm doing? It's all about providing data to know what should I be doing to feed, you know, to feed my soil and by extension, my, my your, your, you know, your grass. So it's not, a bad soil test result is not really, not really a thing. You know, you may have results that are not that, that show that you have a lot of work ahead of you, but it's not bad because it's, it's uh, it gives you the information you need to be able to, you know, intelligently, take care of your lawn. All right, next up, um, you, uh, Phil says, I, I emailed you the results to you, appreciate it. And then Devin is climb chiming in. He says, Jason, if you have fungus, don't add more N, that will make the problem worse. You need a fungicide, as Dr. Strobin or propiconazole, read the label for your disease and follow the rates. So there you go. Yep, fungicide is what prevent, is what, um, is what fixes lawn disease problems, um, not just throwing uh, nitrogen at it or just throwing fertilizer at it. That will not um, that will not help. All right, so guys, on the topic of people that are doing cool stuff in their lawns, I want to show you guys some other pictures from viewers that they sent in. So I've already shown you guys Mark, I've shown you Trevor, I've shown you Lance. But if you guys remember a couple of yeah, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Phil sent us in some pictures of some top dressing work that he was doing in his lawn. And this is his project. I'm going to show you guys that real quick. Um, so this is if you guys remember this picture from a few weeks ago, you saw. He was doing a lot, a lot, some lawn leveling work, which uh, again, overall, done exactly the way I would do it, not too heavy. This was uh, the progress. This was day three, so this is day one. This is day three. This is day six. So this is six days after the initial top dressing. This is day eight. So this is day eight. So if we look at it now, again, first day, 
eight days later, very nice result. So what do you see about this that's that's really that's helping this lawn recover so quickly? One is there is tons of direct sunlight. So he's got trees in the background, but really there's just tons of open, open, um, you know, there's, it's open. There's no, the house is throwing a little bit of shade, but for the most part, this lawn is getting plenty of sunlight, which is helping. And then finally, we have from today, day 14. So this is what the lawn looks like today. So 14 days ago, that's what we had. And then this is what it looks like as of today. So just two weeks later, you can see it's not 100% yet. You can still see a, a few light spots here and there. But overall, if you go light on the top dressing, the way I like to recommend doing it, which is exactly what Phil did here, and you have a good, you know, a good, um, like Mother Nature is cooperating with you. You have plenty of sunlight, you know, good hot temperatures. You can go from that to that in a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? So it, it really, and the things that you see that's really helping with that is it's a wide open space with tons of sunlight, which is helping the lawn recover from top dressing that much faster. So, lawn, so great work, Phil. Lawn looks great, man. Really nice work. Keep it up. Keep us posted. You know, give us a, uh, you know, give us like a three week. So, you know, you did a, you gave us a, a, a day by day by day. You gave us a 14 day. So next week, if you can, send us a picture of how it is at the 21 day mark. And we can compare from day 14 to day 21. I imagine it's gonna look even better, but we'd like to, you know, keep uh, keep tabs on it. Now that you are, are you're one of the project lawns that we're tracking, you gotta keep the audience filled in, man. Folks are gonna wanna know. They can be like, what happened to Phil's lawn? So you gotta, you gotta help, help us out here. All right, next up is uh, Cooper's dad. He says, extremely, not low, not kinda. He says, extremely low in phosphorus in my zoysia and seeing signs of deficiencies. Thinking fert alone would not be enough to bring it up. Not finding anything in, for lawns, only in soil additives. Um, recommendation, yeah, there's the, um, there's a product, there's a super phosphate product, it's triple, triple phosphate. You might be, you could, you might be able to find it in a bigger, well, you can find a 20, 20 pound bag. You could, you can find it, uh, yeah, here we go. It's like a 46, yeah, this is it, a 46, a zero, zero, 46, zero. But if you knew you went to one of your your uh, garden supply stores like um, I mean Pike Family Nursery might have it, like Site One might have it, but I mean you can also get it on Amazon. Um, this is the stuff that I'm talking about, uh, and it is it is it is labeled for lawns. Cooper's dad. So this either I just I just stuttered. You know, you guys can call me out on it. You said Ron, supposed to be speaking better. How can we be doing that? So this right here is the product that I'm talking about. If you want to see it, you can see that. Oh, I closed it. You can see it right here. So it's a 0460, so it's primarily phosphorus. And um, you can get it in five pounds up to 20 pounds. I think they just have, they didn't change, this is not a very good product description because they didn't change the bag to show you that. But 20 pound bag is likely what you're gonna wanna go with for addressing low phosphorus levels in your, uh, in your zoysia. I put a link there in the chat for you and you can take a look at that. Or you can also see if you can find it locally. I mean, that price isn't, isn't terrible, um, but you might be able to be able to find that at a, um, uh, at, at a local supply store if you wanna go hunting around. Although Amazon is pretty convenient. So hope that helps, sir. Uh, and what I would say is in addition to using a phosphorus only product, using a fertilizer that has some, um, some P in it is good. You know, that should be likely what you're gonna be running this season. So if you're, if, if you get like a, the super, uh, the triple super FOSS, like the 0460. In addition, you're gonna wanna use something like um, like this, like the complete, like the 14714, like it has some phosphorus in there too. So you got, you're, you're dressing all three macros, your nitrogen, which your lawn uh, needs when it's actively growing, potassium, which your lawn also needs when it's actively growing, and then the 7% phosphorus to help correct, uh, correct that deficiency as well. So, so you're gonna wanna use something, uh, a fertilizer with FOSS in it as well, given that your uh, your levels are low. So hope that helps, sir. Just keep working on it. Everyone has stuff to work on in their lawns and just, you know, over time it will improve. It will get better. Next up is Jimmy Miller. He says, hey Ron, still on the hunt for a, a, G, a GM 1600 or 1000. Call Prairie Turp and no luck. What do you think about a Toro Flex 21 versus the 1000s slash 1600s? I've, I've never, here's the thing, I've never mowed with a flex mower. I imagine they're just fine though. I mean, Toro you know, doesn't generally build bad equipment. So I imagine that, you know, they'd be just, just fine. If that's what you can find, you know, go for it. If you can, um, I guess a, be a benefit to the flex is that if memory, 
if I'm if memory serves me, you can take like the the cutting head is detachable. Like you can take the head off of the the rest of the chassis, right? So for grinding, right? If you have to go take it to get sharpened, you can just take that, which is that's kind of a nice convenience, right? Whereas with my 1600, the entire thing's got to go. Like the whole mower's got to go. Whereas with a flex, you can take just the just the cutting just the cutting head, you know. Um, so that's a benefit. And in a lawn that is that has like con more contours to it, a, the flex is going to follow those a bit better. So in other words, a flex cutting head should scalp less than a fixed cutting head mower like the 1000 or 1600. So uh, so yeah, I've, I don't have one, so I can't really comment on, on them from personal experience, but I imagine you're gonna be just fine. I mean, again, Toro does not typically build bad equipment. So, uh, so yeah, get what you can get. But, but also check out, um, if you really have your heart set on a 1600 or 1000, Check, like, get on, like, Facebook and see if there's any of the groups, any of the real mowing groups, or just, um, I think there's there's a couple of groups that are just dedicated to real mowing. You can likely find someone in there that has a mower that they're willing to part with. I mean, can we hit up Dwayne? I mean, he's got, like, you know, 17 and a half mowers. He might be able to, you know, he might get, you know, get you one. I mean, I think he only has one, he only has one Toro, I think. I don't know. I'm sure, I, I, I lose count. But, um, but the point is you can find one. In addition, Jimmy, check a uh, call. If you're willing to have it shipped, call Jerry Pate Company here in uh, South uh, South of Atlanta. Uh, they are the official Toro dealer or the, the Toro, like the, the greens mower dealer here in this area. They will be able to get you one. They should be able to get one because they get them off lease all the time. So, you know, call them in your area. If there is a Toro dealer for greens mowers, which there likely is, you can reach out to them as well and see, hey, do you guys have any mowers you're taking off lease that you're willing to sell? You can find them that way. Those mowers, if you buy anything from Jerry Pate, it is gonna be a bit more expensive than buying it from a you know a private party. But the benefit is it's gonna it's gonna have all genuine Toro parts in it. That's thing one. And then it's gonna be it's gonna be gone through. It's gonna have fresh belts on. It's gonna be sharpened. It's gonna be set up, ready to cut. And uh, you know you're gonna get you have a good mower when you when you get that. You're not gonna have something you have to put money into. In other words, so the next thing I would say is just start start out hitting up the Toro the, the dealers and seeing anyone that leases mowers out to courses if they have any that are coming off lease that they will be willing to sell. And that's another way to find one. But to answer your question, I've never cut with a with a uh, with a flex head mower, but I'm sure they do just fine. I mean, Devin's here; he can I'm sure he could chime in or comment on the flex um, the flex heads. I mean, they use them on the golf courses uh, all all the time. All right, T100 says 1000 says hit the like button definitely. If you guys don't mind, we got 140 people in here right now, so if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button. I would really appreciate it. We only got 114 likes. We can do better. We can. We can. All right, next up is Miles uh, Blaine. He says, a happy Friday. Curious if anyone has noticed more fungal activity slash damage this spring. Got hit um, with SDS, um, spring death spot. I think mean, spring death spot is what he's talking about. For the first time this year, would love a quick refresher on your fungal management strategy. Yeah, so Miles, I have not seen, so here's the thing. I have not seen more disease problems this year. What I've seen a lot of that I've not seen in years past is damage from winter, like winter kill, like parts of lawns around in in my in my area too, my neighborhood that have had damage from uh, cold weather. Because remember, in in December we had a week there where temps got into the low, like the low, well, hang on, the high single digits and the low, like the, the teens, right? So it was very very cold, unseasonably cold uh, for Georgia. And then in March, when everything was starting to warm up, meaning the lawn was starting to come out, of, it wasn't dormant anymore, it was starting to come out of dormancy, it got smacked again with that week, that third week in March, where we had very cold temperatures, you know, again, high 20s, 30s, and that also damaged lawns. So I saw, I saw, I've seen a lot more damage um, from that this year, and that, which is in general has caused lawns to lag behind. Like lawns are like a month, almost like three weeks to a month behind where they normally would be this time um, compared to last year because of the the, the craziness we've had in the uh, in the weather. I haven't seen a huge difference in disease problems, um, it, but it, I have seen more like, you know, damage from winter, from winter kill. But anyway, the question you're asking about is um, my, my fungicide program. So for spring dead spot, the time to prevent that unfortunately is in the fall, right? So if you see if you see spring dead spot, like you look at the problem in your lawn, you'd say, hey, this is spring dead spot. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do about it once you actually see it. You just have to give it time, allow the lawn to grow through it. You can put like some compost, you can do things to encourage the nearby grass to spread into there and, and help it fill in, but there's not, it's not like large patch where 
If you have large pasture in your lawn, you, you apply a fungicide, and three weeks later, the lawn's gonna be looking a lot better. Spring dead spot isn't that way. It takes, it takes quite a bit longer for the lawn to recover from that once you notice you have it. So what I do is I do two fungicide applications um, in the spring time. So um, in in my lawn, what, what I tell most people is to do it in April, sorry, in May and then June. On my lawn, I do um, April and May. I do it a month earlier because I've had issues with large patches in my lawn before. So to prevent just having a, an issue with that, I do it a month earlier. But for most people, I tell them, wait until um, May timeframe. So do May a fungicide app and do a June fungicide app. And then, you sh then you're you good for the, um, for, in, for the season, for this part of the season. And then whenever we get to the fall, you do a fungicide application in October, in the beginning of October, and another one in the beginning of November. And that will help prevent uh, the issues with spring dead spot in the spring. So all in, uh, I, I recommend four apps per year. So I'll show you, Miles, like what I use. I mean, I, in, in years past, I've used um, Headway. In years past, I've used Headway. So where are we? Um, shop and then fungicide and insecticide. I've used, um, I've used Headway G. So if you like granular, use Headway. If you like uh, liquids, use Pillar. Um, but again, yeah, two apps, one in the... Um, in May and another one in June, and then in the fall, October, November. That should keep that should put you in a pretty good spot for keeping disease at bay in your lawn. Now, this this program, the fungicide, once in May, another time in June, and then October, November, that assumes you're mowing the lawn at what I just considered reasonable cutting heights, right? So that assumes you're mowing the lawn at three quarters of an inch, you know, five eighths, that kind of cutting height. If you're going a lot shorter, like if you have a green, like if you have an actual green in your back lawn, so you're cutting at, you know. 0.15, like you're cutting in the, those types of heights and you're mo you're, you're mowing every day because that's really what it takes to keep a lawn looking or green looking nice at those heights. At that point, your fungicide program is like monthly. Like you're gonna be spraying fungicide every month. You know what I mean? Some some I know some courses, they're spraying fungicide every, every three weeks, every couple of weeks, every few weeks they're out there spraying fungicide on the greens to keep them disease free. Reason for that is that the lawn, the, the turf is just being, it's being stressed more by the, the increased mowing frequency and it's being cut so much shorter. So it's under stress from that and you're just injuring it daily because you're cutting it daily. So you're, you know, you're, you're, Equipment being um, razor sharp, if you're, if you're cutting at those heights, becomes very important. And then a fungicide program becomes very important if you're cutting at greens heights. So if you're not doing that, again, five eighths or above, you know, twice in the spring, early summer time frame, and then twice in the fall should be all you really need to keep lawn disease um, at bay. And again, another thing I found too that helps with that, Miles, is if you have a way to reduce the amount of thatch in your lawn. So if you have, if you can turf rake your lawn, um, say you're not even gonna do it like what I do, right? If you're not gonna do it weekly like how I do it. Um, if you can if you can just do do something to, to reduce and manage the amount of thatch in your lawn, that will also help reduce the problems with disease. Between last year and this year, um, the areas that I've had large patch in my lawn, with, uh, both last year and the year prior to that, um, last year, you guys remember, I got the outlet and I started turf raking and I, and the, the thatch levels in the lawn are, way, are the lowest it's, it's ever been. Um, and the things I noticed this season from that is one, I have yet so far to see any mushrooms, like not one in my back lawn. Um, I've seen, I've seen, um, one or two on the front lawn because I don't turf rake that nearly as much as I do the back lawn. Cause that the machine is like a, a monster is a beast to run on, on the front lawn, but on the back lawn where I'm able to turf rake like regularly, like there's not, I haven't, I've had, um, Notice uh, disease problems have not been a thing. And then as far as mushrooms, that also hasn't been a thing. So in addition to, to a fungicide program, if you can manage thatch levels, however you do that, that is something that will um, will help as well. So hopefully that helps answer your question. If you have any other, you know, if you want some more details, you can always um, shoot me an email here, ron at golfcourselawn.com and I'll help you out. But that is um, that is what I do and what I, what I recommend and teach for most people. Two apps in the spring, and two apps in the fall, and that's gonna that's gonna put you in a really good, a really good spot to keep your lawn disease free. Good question. All right, next up is Charles Westmoreland. He says, "Happy Friday, Ron and crew. I finally got my Ego striping kit. We'll install tomorrow, and hope those stripes are more pronounced than the stripes I get without the kit. They should be. I mean, it's they'll be different. They have to be, right? Because it makes no sense that you would put." A weighted roller on the back of the mower, and then you not get more stripes. So that you, I mean, I say I can't say I guarantee it, but if I were a betting man, I would say you are likely to see more, more stripe action 
having had the ego, the ruler attachment than before. I had a bet. That's what, that's what I think is going to happen. Keep us posted, man. And you know, the way, one thing that you can do as well, Charles, is take pictures, take a before and after. So you can keep us posted as far as how it does. Uh, Matt Jackson says, howdy from Texas. What's going on, Matt? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream, sir. Appreciate you as always. And Matt, I've already shown them. I show, no, used the, yeah, that, was, that was someone else as far as um, pictures. I know you and I were corresponding for something, but that, that was a different thing. All right, um, Mark Romano, it's 1, 1 p.m. in Hawaii. So that's about an hour ago. So it's like, yeah, six hours, six hours behind. Okay. Dwayne's World Party Time Excellent is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Hope you have a great, had a great week. I did. I did. It was a fun week, man. I can't complain. And the next up is Scott Corley. He says, can you use plant growth regulator when it gets into the 90s? Yes, I do. I spray my lawn with, with, um, with Primo starting um, late April, early May, and it goes all the way through September. Uh, every, you know, before it was every month, now every two weeks, that's what I do. Every couple, every couple of weeks, yeah, I, um, I spray it. So yes, you can spray it. Um, you can spray Primo with temps from the 90s without issue, especially if you're going to be doing the split app um, methodology, right? So instead of spraying once per month at the full rate, if you cut the monthly rate for your particular grass type in half, Scott, and spray once on the 1st and again on the 15th, that is, uh, that's going to, again, reduce uh, chances for tip burn or, or reduce stress to the lawn. If you want to see what I'm talking about in more detail, um, I have a blog post on Growth Regulator that is here that I will link to you now. So this one talks about how Plant Growth Regulator can make your lawn thicker and greener. Talks about what PGR is, all the benefits, what talks about Primo, but then towards the bottom down here, it says how to avoid the dreaded tip burn in PGR. So it pretty much gives the example of of, uh, of KBG, of how we take like the rate of, you know, 0.60, which is the rate per for one month and cut that in half and spray it on the first and then again on the 15th. So I will send this to you as well. I'll send you a link here in the chat, completely free for you to read. And that will, um, that will get you all squared. That will get you all squared away. And again, when you, you can say what kind of grass you have, but um, I will, I will tell you that the nice thing about Primo is that the label or the the, the 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 bottle has a built-in measuring cup. So whenever you look at the label and it says, you know, 0.25 for Bermuda or, you know, or, you know, 0.60 for, um, for Kentucky bluegrass, you've got a way to accurately measure that because it doesn't take very much of this stuff to produce the desired result. So having that integrated in to the, uh, the cup, into the, the, the bottle is very, is very, very handy. Very handy. So yeah, you can absolutely spray Primo. If you don't have any as yet, or any of you guys that are here in the live stream are saying, where can I get me some some, uh, some of that stuff he keeps talking about? You can find it here on the Golf Course Lawn Store or, or in that blog. That blog's got a link to it as well, but that's where you can also pick up some, some Goat Regulator. Oh, that's right. Um, Mark, or uh, Matt Jackson did, he did send us a video. Do you guys remember, Matt was the one that, uh, that did the renovation. He, I think he had St. Augustine and he replaced the St. Augustine with Zoysia. And he sent me a video to like today, right before the show. I can I can play. He sent me like it's like two minutes. I'm not gonna play all two minutes of it. But he remember the, one of the questions he had was, "Hey, I've got some crabgrass in my lawn, and I've also got maybe some remnants of the Saint Augustine trying to grow through. What can I use that can that will selectively kill Saint Augustine and crabgrass, but not damage my zoysia?" And I said, "Quinclorac. Get quinclorac. Get surfactant." spray it at the label rates and you should get a pretty good result. So he did, you guys want to see the results? He sent a short little video. You can take like a, a small break from me jibber jabbering and you can you can listen to uh, to Matt for a second. So let's see if we can make this work. Hopefully we don't get an ad, we'll have to see. So uh, check this out. Hopefully the audio comes true for you guys. Hey Ron and all, this is Matt. Uh, a little update on my Zoysia yard. As you had suggested, I got some Quinclorac down and you can see that uh, it's been two days and the crabgrass is dying. I mixed it with the surfactant and the blue dye so I could see where it was um, applied. And as you can see, the cicadas are crazy loud right now. I think we're gonna have some success here. I, this is only two days in, but uh, I'm gonna retreat it after um, after this one. I'm gonna mow it again. Um, but nice. Yeah. Oh. Nice, so, if, so, so as you guys saw, um, 
the 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 advice I gave him last week as far as using Quinn Clorac, I mean, it's pretty cool. He's getting he's getting uh, he's seeing results already that quickly. But the nice thing that you see as well is that the zoysia really isn't being discolored by it, right? That was pretty cool. So for those of you guys that are trying to remove crabgrass or St. Augustine, I'm not calling St. Augustine crabgrass, but just happens to be they're susceptible to the same types of herbicides. I don't know, maybe they're related. But at any rate, uh, it was kind of cool. Um, Matt, thank you for sending in that video um, showing you know how the lawn, how the renovation project is coming along. If you guys want to see the entire thing, it's like two minutes long, I will give Matt some love. Why not? I'll, uh, I'll link it here in the chat. This is his video of, of how his lawn reno is doing. So watch that. This is uh, say Matt's um, Zoysia reno. You guys can, uh, can click over and watch that after the live stream. Like, don't leave here now, but after the show. If you want some some fun watching that's only a, a minute or so long, you can check that um, you can check that out. So uh, that's it there. It's in the it's in the chat now. Thanks again, Matt. Keep us posted, man. Keep us posted as far as how it does. I mean, I'm sorry I didn't play the entire video because, but it's you know you sent me a pretty long one. Um, keep us posted as far as how that the Saint Augustine and or crabgrass. Uh, starts dying off from the quinclorac, and you know keep us posted on it because I think you know other folks that have have this problem where they're trying to either remove St. Augustine or trying to remove uh, crabgrass from their Bermuda or Zoysia lawn would like to see the results that you're getting. So appreciate you. Thank you for sending the video. We will uh, we'll look forward to seeing future updates from you next week as time, as time progresses. All right, next up we have Cooper's dad. He's back. He says, Northeast Georgia, soil not prepped by landscaper prior to sodding. Red clay under the sod, rock hard from grading uh, slash packing. What's your number one additive to improve? Okay, so I, I would say to aerate it, but we, we're not gonna do that to, uh, to brand new. So I guess I'm trying to understand. Did you, let me see, prior to sodding. So the, the sod's already down is when I'm getting a Cooper's dad. If the sod were not down, what I would say is you could aerate it. That is, that is, in my opinion, the best way to relieve compaction. But I would not want you to go out and aerate a um, sod that was just put in. You're likely gonna pull some of it up. And it's, I mean, aerating or core aerating is, aeration is a stressor. So we don't wanna be doing that if we, if we can avoid it. Um, so this is where using like um, Essential G, this is where using some of those products that are like um, like the carbon kit, like spraying, like uh, applying that, but uh, using it in a drench, that will help loosen um, compaction a bit. Um, any and any of the the liquid aeration products that you know that that people like to like people like to mention. I mean, if it were me, I would use Essential G and uh, the 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 Release Zero, not the 91C. The Release Zero Carbon Kit can also be used in a drench form. Like what I mean, what I teach um, and I talk about on the live stream is um, is primarily just using it for foliar apps. But you can mix it with a lot more water and and um, and apply it on on the lawn as well too. There's actually an application uh, for that on the labels. You could do that while you're waiting for the lawn to root in, and then. You know, this season it might not be in the cards because again, I really don't want you to aerate it if it's, if it's brand new sod. But next year, what you could do is when springtime rolls around, April, April, just late April time frame, you could give it a good aeration, and that is going to help relieve compaction. So, I say just continue to just treat the lawn as normal. Like do you know, do your your fertilization program, Essential G. If you really want to try and help relieve it some, you can use the carbon kit in a drench. Um, if you want, and 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 all those things will help. But again, nothing beats putting some hardware, like a, an actual machine, on the lawn and reducing compaction uh, that way. And that really is going to have to wait until till next year. I mean, it's, I haven't seen pictures of your lawn to know how established it is. But the last thing I want to tell you to do is go out and run an aerator on it, and then you you know you start pulling up sod and all those kind of stuff. So just to be super safe. If you can delay that until next year, unless you're telling me the lawn is already looking great and it's rooted in, you can't tell that it was even sodded. Um, you know, that's, I, I leave it up to you. But my advice would be to wait till next year before you run an aerator on it, just to to not not to you know end up pulling up the sod that you just got put in. And that is a as far as outside of that, the the liquids the liquids that I that I mentioned is what I would is what I would do. Sorry to hear that. It's unfortunate that the uh, the landscaper didn't. I mean, I get they want to grade it and make it smooth, but I mean, I mean they don't have to like mash it down and get it all you know rock hard. But I guess that's uh, that's what you're dealing with. That's okay. At least you, at least you know about it and you can improve it over the course of this season a little bit, and then next year when you aerate it, uh, you'll see a, a drastic improvement. 
All right, next up is Dwayne's World, party time, excellent. He says, Ron, the last time I did PGR, I did it at full month rate. Of course you did, Dwayne, that's how you are. You're, you're, you're the full send guy. He says, I am looking to switching to half rate. My temps are generally higher than yours over the summer. Should I bump the, should I bump the rate slightly to maybe 0.6 every two weeks? Yeah, I don't almost see a problem with that, Dwayne, because remember, with Bermuda, with hybrid Bermuda, the application rate is the range per month is 0.25 all the way up to like 0.38, right? So call it 0.40, right? So the the half an ounce, I, I use that in the, all these examples because it makes the math easier. But you think you figure that um, 0.25 times four is one ounce, half that is half an ounce. But if you are using that point, um, the 0 0.40 rate, right? So if you take, um, if you take like 0 0.40, you can do the math on that really quick. If you take 0 0.40 and you multiply that times four, that's 1.6 ounces. Divide that in half is 0.8 ounces. So you you technically, if you were spraying the higher end of the hybrid rate, you could go as high as point or between 0.7 and 0.8 ounces of Primo um, every two weeks. So going to 0.6, which should not be a problem at all. That still leaves you plenty of headroom. What you could do is this, here's, here's how I would do it. I would start at 0 0.6 and then um, see see what happens. See what see if at the end of the two weeks you start seeing a, a big flush of growth. I doubt you're going to see that, but if you want to if you want to say okay, it's tolerating 0 0.6 just fine, which it will. Um, if you want to try bumping it up to 0 0.7 and seeing how the lawn does, that is how I would go about it. I wouldn't jump from like what you're doing now straight to the high end um, half of the high end rate. I would do 0 0.6 you know, for the first, you know, for, for the first time around and then go to 0.7. And if it's tolerating, tolerating that just fine, just leave it there. You know what I mean? If you're finding that if you're able to spray it at 0.6 or 0.7, the lawn still looks good. You're not getting any rebound from it coming out or trying to come out of dormancy sooner, then just leave it there. I mean, really, if you can get by with using less Primo, why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? There's no reason, like there's no, there's no like glory in spraying at the absolute highest rates possible. Um, you're just using more of the product and you don't necessarily have to. So spray at lower rates if you can, that will still produce the desired result. Keep me posted, man. It sounds like a great idea for a YouTube video. So if you decide to do that, you should video it and that's a great content idea. I'd watch it. Next up is Two Trilla. Two Trilla's in the house. He says, happy Friday, Ron and Stripe Action Gang. Feels good to come to get some rain in Georgia after three weeks of drought. What is this three weeks of drought you guys are talking about? I've had rain. We had like maybe one week where there wasn't any measurable rain, but every week there's been, there's been something. Like they, we had a lot of rain uh, two days ago. Um, there are two days where we had rain. So yeah, we, I mean, I'm not sure what happened with you guys, why y'all are getting a drought? Because here in Northeast Georgia, it's been, there's been rain fairly regularly. I'll put it this way. I have not run irrigation this week yet. That's how much rainfall we've had. So I've not, I've not had to run irrigation this week. So so there you go. And then uh, Devin is chiming in. He says, Dwayne's World with the Primo, follow the suggested rates. Less is more. Whatever the rate is for your turf type, divide that by two and apply it every two weeks. So there you go. Less is more. See, he even said, like, don't, don't go for the max rate. Go for, go for the, the amount you need to get the desired result. All right, next up is Mr. Robert Wallace, the new Georgia Bulldog fan. He's going to become one here eventually. He's still a Clemson fan, but, you know, I think this year he's probably going to come over to Georgia. He says, happy Friday, Ron. What's going on, Wallace? Hopefully you are doing well. And he says, uh, Devin is giving you a word of warning. He says, if you overapplied, you can get a bad rebound effect and negatively stunt the turf. All good reasons to stick to the label rates. Don't, like when it comes to growth regulator, less is more. When it comes to Primo, again, if you if you look here, this, for example, this is a four ounce bottle. This is not a very big bottle, right? And if you look at what you know, half an ounce, which is be that would be enough for 4,000 square feet of Bermuda grass at the half rate. If you took that and you poured it, I don't have one. If you took that, say, well, I do have, I have a gallon container. But let's say you're trying to measure out Primo in like a smaller one of these, right? Like this is be, I mean, this wouldn't even really work. But if you pour, try pouring like half an ounce or an ounce into a container this size, it's going to be so little that it's not going to it's not going to look like very much. So the, the fact that you've got a measuring cup here built in like like use this. Use the fact that you've got that to your advantage and as Devin said, just stick to the lower rates. You want to use as little of the product as you as you can to get the desired result. Next up is let's see here. We got Shauna in the house from Instagram. She says, "I'm back." 
I had to go pull some weeds in the drainage. So you left the live stream to go pull weeds? Okay. It says, I had to go pull some weeds in the drainage area. It's the season of spurge. Thank goodness for my lawn having pre-emergent. Yeah, so spurge is the bane. It tends to be a problem. But uh, but yeah, so you had to go, you had to just leave out in the middle of the live stream to go take care of some weeds, Shauna. You are, uh, you're dedicated. I like it. I dig it. All right, so we have a super chat here from Mr. Luis Ayabarreño. Let's see if I can get that. Thank you so much. Luis, thank you for the super chat. Super chat received. He says, hello everyone. Ron, Ron I have a, a, Ron for a first top dress, sand only or a sand soil mix? Kentucky Bluegrass Rye Blend, and I am conditioning to fix clay compaction. I am a fan of a blend. I am a fan of a blend, uh, Luis. If you can do a 70-30 blend, you can mix um, some organic material in there. I am a fan of doing that. Can you do 100% sand? Yes. Would you still get a good result doing 100% sand? Yes. But if you have the opportunity to add some organic material, why not? Why not? I mean, pretty much, out, unless you had like a green, if you're, if you're trying to build a green in your back lawn, then I'd say, yeah, 100% sand, uh, by all means, go for that. But if you're, if you're if if it's your lawn, why not try and get some organic material in there um, as part of the process? Now, if you can't get a blend, what you can do is if you can find like a, you know, a cl clean compost, you know, keyword clean, like not a lot of trash in it, compost or um, topsoil to, to put like a, a thin layer of that down prior to top dressing, that's a, that's a good thing to do. You can also use carbonized PN. That can be in, incorporated into your top dressing pro, um, project. Um, or you can do what I've done in the past where I have done uh, Essential G. I've gone out and just bought, like, I've, got, I've got taken Essential G and did like a heavy application of that um, after aeration but prior to top dressing. So there's tons of options for you to still get organic material um, into the soil, if even if you don't have it as part of your your top dressing material. So, I uh, so hope that helps, Louise. Sounds like fun. Be sure to take pictures before, during, and after if you can, and uh, keep us posted on how it does. Sounds like a uh, sounds like a fun time. Next up is Oliver Ritam. He says, "Happy or good evening, all, and happy Friday, Ron. All your suggestions have been on point. I appreciate that, man. I thank you. Thank you so much." This is my first year doing everything, and the lawn has transformed to something never before. I'd send you pics, but I have way too many. Ha ha, thanks again. Well, just pick the good ones. Take take the good ones. Just the, you know, send me two or three of the ones you're really happy with and send them over. I'll, I'll show them off. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You have time, Oliver. Some th time throughout the week. Find the pictures you are most proud of. Send them over, and we can put it on the live stream for next week. How about that? We can, uh, we can do that. We can do that. Does that work? If you're good with it, that's what we'll uh, we'll do. And I'm, I'm happy to hear that the advice has been useful and that you're getting you know you're getting a great result on your lawn. So uh, so just keep up the great work, man. I mean it's it's the first year, which means that it's going to get even better as you continue working on it. Great stuff. Uh, next up we have Heartfelt Fashion. Uh, he says, "Hey Ron, it's been a few years since you planted Arden 15. Do you think it's now spread over your entire lawn?" Hard to say, hard to say. I mean, my lawn is very much a mutt lawn. I mean, you guys can see for yourself. It's The lawn started out as a Tiffway 419 and it's, um, you know, got overseeded with Princess 77 and then Arden 15 a couple years back. And if you look at it, I mean, there are a few areas here and there where you can see slight, like maybe slight color variations, but for the most part, the lawn looks very even. It looks very even to me. So has it spread all throughout the lawn? I I can't say for sure, but it looks, I mean, you guys tell me. Does that look fairly even to you? I I think so. It looks pretty good to looks pretty good to my eye, right? So um, so yeah, I mean, keep in mind, um, uh, Hot Fashion, it's been it's been overseed with R15 a couple of times, like twice, I believe. So yeah, it's um it's well integrated into into what the lawn is. So what it is, so what my lawn is now is Tiffway 419, Princess 77, and Arden 15. And even though I've done that, I would not recommend most people, I would not recommend that people uh, do it. I would not recommend that they do it because most people do it for the wrong reasons. And had I known many, many years ago what I know now, I would have fixed the problems that I was trying to fix a different way. It looks good now, it turned out okay, right? But but for most people, I would say, uh, don't bother. Like if you hate your grass, like kill it off and renovate with something else. Um, or if you want, the only thing I could see overseeding Bermuda with is if, you, if you're a glutton for punishment in the springtime, you can overseed it with ryegrass. If you want it to be green year round, you want that look, but just realize that you're going to be dealing, you're going to be fighting with it <laughs> come, uh, come April timeframe. All right. Next up is Miles Blaine. He says, I can confirm Primo is life-changing. It is true, man. Primo is, um, 
is it's there's the way I always say it is there's life before this and there's life after this. It makes it makes a noticeable difference in the quality of your turf. It looks it's one of the best things you can do for your lawn, and it's not really that expensive. You know, what I mean, a bottle of this stuff is like forty, like for low forty dollars, forty two, forty three dollars. I mean, it's not that much, and it um, it makes a really big difference in the appearance of the lawn. It really, really, really does. All right, we got a couple of um, we got one more one more uh, vote here for Primo from Devin. He says, Primo is the best. We sprayed 15 gallons. Wow, 15 gallons, a lot of Primo. 15 gallons on the course in the past two weeks, wall to wall minus the greens. With five inches of rains, it keeps clippings down and saves labor for having to clean mow clippings. Yep, absolutely. I, I could see that, uh, Devin. Like the biggest thing is like, you know, you see how big my back lawn is, right? Literally, I can mow the entire back lawn and in the past couple of weeks, the clippings have gone up, have, have picked up some. But, um, you know, prior to like the first week of June, prior to last week, I could mow the entire back lawn and I'll get like, I got like one grass catcher, about a third full mowing like 8,000 square feet. And that's mowing it every, every two days. So that shows you how much of a difference growth regulator can make as far as reducing the amount of mowing you have to do in your lawn. It's awesome stuff. And just the appearance of the turf and how much dense it gets is just... It's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. Good job, Syngenta. Good product. Well done. All right, so we got a couple of Super Chats here. We already got Luis's, but we have now Shauna is in the house, not to be left out. Super Chat for Steve. She says, just want to say thanks for all you do for us. Thank you so much, Shauna. I really do appreciate the Super Chat. Thank you for all the love and support. And then Lance F is up with a Super Chat. Super Chat received. She says, thanks, Ron, for all your information. You are our Friday night ritual. Lawn is on fire. 100% America and having a beer. I appreciate that, you guys. Thank you so much. And good job. Um, use the, the rotary scissors that your your wife got you in good health, sir. It's a really nice gift. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. She's like, you know what? He, for the guy that has everything, what do you get him? Rotary scissors. Can't go wrong with lawn care products. Or, you know, shameless plug, if you are looking to get a gift for that guy, special guy in your life, special dad in your life, and you're like, you know what? I don't know what to get. I don't have no idea what rotary scissors are. I don't want to look around on where to get one. Too hard, tough problem. What you can also do is you can go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and you can go to our lawn training and gift card section. And there you can get a gift card of multiple denominations, you, from $50 to $75, all the way up to $500, just depending on how much you love them. Um, how, how much, I'll, I would say how much you love them, how much are you front loading for your gifts? You know what I'm saying? So or, or if you, you're saying, you know, I wanna make sure I'm gonna get him enough so that way whenever it's, you know, it's my turn, it's my birthday, it's my, you know, Mother's Day, when it's like, uh, you know, Christmas, whatever, whatever it is, that I have, I have made sure that I have, more than you know, you know, put done my share because guys tend to get the short end of the stick. You know, whatever we, whatever you guys spend on us, we gotta spend a multiple on you guys. So just think about that, ladies. Whenever you're buying the uh, a gift card or whatever you're getting for that special dad, special someone in in your life. And if you guys are interested in getting a gift card, they are all available um, right here. I'll send you guys a link to them on the store. It's a great way to to get a gift for someone in your life that's into lawn care and makes makes life easier for you, right? All right, next up is, where did I leave off? Next up is, it's the hard part, is um, Christopher Burkett. Christopher Burkett is here. He says, um, been fighting common Bermuda in my Zenith Zoysia for years. Only difference I can tell between the two, um, the two is here's on the blades and the seed heads. Everything else looks basically the same. Time to embrace Bermuda. Uh, I mean, if you don't, um, uh, if you, if, if it doesn't bother you, then just keep it. Just, just keep, just keep mowing it. You know what I mean? If, if the, if the look of the zoysia or the look of the Bermuda in zoysia doesn't, um, if, if to your eye, they look close enough, you must have a, I didn't realize Zenith was that coarse looking because common Bermuda is just to be a thicker, a thicker leaf. Um, I could see common Bermuda looking like, um, like El Toro zoysia, like El Toro zoysia is, is um, is has like a more common uh, has a, a thicker a thicker leaf to it, um, but yeah. I, I, what I'm saying, Christopher, is if you are happy with it, if you whenever you walk out on your lawn, if you like the way your lawn looks, that's really all that matters. And if you want to try and remove it, I don't. You know, Fusilade, I believe, is labeled for hybrid, but I believe it's gonna it'll probably take care of common Bermuda too. If you really want to go out and try and remove the Bermuda from your zoysia, you can use Fusilade too to do that. Um, but it's frankly like gonna more likely make the lawn look uglier in the process than it does now because it says you're saying that you can only see 
a slight difference. The seed heads, some of the hairs on the grass. Um, but if you try, if you go after the Bermuda that's all that's spread all throughout your zoysia lawn with fusillade, you're going to have dead patches of grass, like the dead Bermuda all throughout the lawn. And that's going to look worse than what you're describing. So, um, so if it were me, if you like it, if you like it, I love it. If you like it, I would leave it alone. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't, um, I really wouldn't, um, I wouldn't mess with it. I wouldn't mess with it. So if it becomes too much, then you can use fusillade. But for now, if you'd like the way it looks, like why mess with what looks good to you? And if you want to, um, if you want to see what I'm talking about, I'll, I'll send you a link here to Fusilade 2. It's a great product um, um, against Bermuda. And that's, and that's in one way. You know, I was talking to a buddy about, my, about this the other day about why on some level, even though Bermuda is, I consider to be alpha, why zoysia in some ways is the alpha of warm season grass. Because if you think about it, right? Now follow me on this, guys. With Bermuda, don't pick up your pitchforks. Don't come after me. Don't, uh, don't send me hate mail. Don't dislike the live stream and all this kind of stuff. Hear me out. Reason why zoysia in many ways is more alpha is that, and easier to take care of, is that if you think about it, if you have St. Augustine in zoysia, you can remove St. Augustine from zoysia because you can use chloric for that. If you have Bermuda in zoysia, you can remove Bermuda from zoysia. But there's not an easy way to do the other way around. Like if you have zoysia in Bermuda, there's not, 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 not that I'm aware of anyway, there's not a selective herbicide that will that will kill zoysia without damaging Bermuda in the, in the process. You know what I mean? If you have zoysia in St. Augustine, there's not an easy way to kill zoysia in St. Augustine that's not also going to damage the St. Augustine. So from a standpoint of being able to have a, a warm season grass type that you can keep um, the same, you know what I mean? Like even if you have like other grasses invading it that you can get, you can eliminate them while preserving the grass that you want to keep. Zoysia is pretty good in that regard. You know what I mean? So uh, if, if you want to, if you want to take that as a way to say that it is more alpha in some ways than Bermuda from the standpoint, you can make, you can keep zoysia always looking like zoysia. That's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, thanks. Hope that helps Christopher. You've got the, uh, the, the link to Fusilade there in the, in the chat. And I would just leave it alone. If you're happy with it, it's not bothering you, I would leave it alone. Because I can assure you that dead patches of Bermuda in your lawn are going to look much worse than the slight texture and seed head difference that you're seeing with the uh, the common Bermuda and Zoysia blend that you've got. Next up is That Crazy Lawn Guy. He says, anyone know of a good place for a refurbishment? I have a 25-inch McLean that needs a new reel and bed knife and some other minor stuff. Charlotte, North Carolina area. I don't know anyone in the North Carolina area. I know Michael at Atlanta Real Mowers can do it. They can, I mean, that grand, but that's in Georgia, right? He does great work. He just, he doesn't only sharpen, he can do maintenance. So he can replace belts, he can replace bed knives, he can do, I mean, he he works on a golf course. He work, he takes care of mowers for golf courses. So he's, uh, as far as like a mechanic, he can work on pretty much anything that runs on a golf course. So yes, but I don't have anything in the uh, Charlotte area. What you can do though, what you can do is if you go over to the nice folks at Real Rollers website, they have this tool. So you go to realrollers.com and you go to find a service shop and you go to the grinder finder. Um, I think, I'm not sure if you can I type cities in here. I think so. Char, I don't know what the zip code for Charlotte is. Charlotte uh, NC. I don't know if this is going to work. It works, guys. Look at that. That's cool. All right. So yeah, so there's a couple of shops. Looks like there's Smith, Turf and Irrigation and somebody else. Um, another one that's nameless. Anyways, so there's two of them, at least that are on here on, on Grinder Finder. So you can try Smith's Turf and Irrigation and see if they can help work on your mower or they can point you in the right direction. Because a lot of times if you call a shop that's in that space, they might not do it, but they'll know who does it and they can point you in the right direction. So that's what I would say to do. And remember, the Grinder Finder, that is not exhaustive by any extent of the imagination, but it's, uh, it's, it's a start. Right, and there is something in North Carolina in the Charlotte area, so I would give it a look. I would give it a look and uh, and see. I would give it a look and see. All right, so next up we have that crazy long guy has another one. He says, I've got a hill almost exactly like your front and my back. California trimmer can't do angles, stalls when leaning to the left due to sensor. There's a way around that. Have to straight go straight up and down, pooling in there though. So uh, here's the thing. So I can tell you what I have done, Alex has done, most people that have true cuts have done, is that like my true cut also has that sensor you're talking about, like the oil level sensor in it. 
Um, and on my mower, it's, I've disabled it. Like one of the first things I did when I got the mower was disable that. And I have, my mower is five years old, five years old now. So it's, it's, it's absolutely fine. So as long as you make sure you keep enough oil in it. So don't let the mower, the mower run out of oil, obviously. But as long as you keep enough oil in the mower, um, it's going to be absolutely fine. Like I, again, I've been running my GX160 for five years and I mow more than the average bear. My mower still still starts, my true cut still starts every time on the first pull. It, it still runs as good today as it does the day when I first bought it. Um, so there is a way to bypass that that crazy lawn guy if you feel comfortable doing that. If you don't want to do that, I get it too. Um, but if you if you want to, there's a way to bypass that to where the mower will not turn off when you go on a slope. My, my, kidding, my mower, Alex's mower, the guy, uh, the one that turned me on to True Cut, Pat, his mowers, the guy, that, like all, like most True Cuts that I see have that done to them because it's not, if, as long as you're keeping oil in the mower, which you should keep oil in your equipment, um, it's not really a problem, so. But again, again, take it, take that with a grain of salt. You can decide whether you want to do that or not. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, there is no, no issue with it. I mean, I've, my mower's been running that way for over five years. And again, it, it literally runs today as good as it did the first day, the first time I started it up. So there's no problems with it as long as you keep oil in the mower. All right. Um, next up is we have a question here, a comment from Instagram from Deshaya. Deshaya too says, um, what's the best post yard work beverage, adult or other, other than water to enjoy while admiring your work? Lemonade is good. Um, an Arnold Palmer is good. You know, like a sweet, uh, a sweet tea and lemonade. That's also good. If you're talking more adult libations, you can do like I mean, any kind of a, any kind of a light. Um, I mean, I like believe it or not, it's not really light. But I like Guinness. I grew up drinking Guinness. Like that, you know, back home, Guinness is like uh, when when I think of beer, I think of two things. I drink of Heineken Pilsner because that's what you can get. Like you can't even get it here. Or I haven't been able to find it anyway. Heineken makes a Pilsner that is really good, but you can't find it. Like stores here don't care for whatever reason. And then Guinness. So those are my ideas of beer, which probably most people probably don't don't like. Or just an Arnold Palmer. Those are also also good choices as well. Can't go wrong with with lemonade. All right. Next up is John Rob Will, who says, "What's up, Ron? It's been very dry in my area, so nothing much to chime in about. I have been experimenting with more biosimilants, though. Is it okay to apply really zero in the summer? Fescue lawn? Absolutely. Yep. You can, you can, as long as your your grass is growing, you're out there working on it. You can apply. I'll show you guys what he's talking about. You can apply re really zero. There's no no issue with that uh, whatsoever. So, in the carbon kit." There are two versions, two variants. You've got the release zero version, which is what you're seeing here. It's really zero, Nutri Kelp, and the soil microbial enhancer. Um, so you can you can apply all of um, all of those. You can apply you can apply all of this throughout the, the summer without any kind of issue. Um, John Rob will no problem with uh, with doing that at with doing that at all with not doing that at all. Um, so you know what's funny, uh, John. So because you asked this question, you were the first like um, Miramichi focused question this evening. I'm going to. You are going to be our uh, Miramichi question of the evening. Um, so there's something that Miramichi want to start doing. They want to start sponsoring a question. So the question, as far as was, can you spray release zero on a on a fescue lawn in the summer and the answer is yes you can spray release zero from spring through fall there's no no issues with that um whatsoever release zero doesn't have any fertilizer in it so being a biosimilant you can spray it throughout the entire growing season so i start um using liquid biosimilants in like late february early march time frame and i do it all throughout the lawn all throughout the growing season until the lawn goes into dormancy so no issue at all with doing that and again John Rob Will, for your question, you are our um, you are the the Mermichi Green question of the evening. What you win is one of these guys. So I'm gonna send you guys. I'm gonna send you a. Um, you need to send me an email. I'll tell you how to get it. But these are this is one of the shirts. There's new designs coming up. This is one of the shirts that Mermichi did. It's a greatness, greatness from the ground up. Mermichi activate nature. You know me. I want to have some want to have some mowing in there, so they made sure there's some mowing in the uh, in the shirt. There's also a cool. Um, you can't see the size. I get some more pictures of it. But there's some cool. There's like a cool branding here on the side of the shirt too, on the sleeve as well. So you have won one of these if you um, if you so desire. So all you have to do 
is um, send me an email here. Where's my email address right here? To ron at golfcourselawn.com right there. And I will send you the link to where you can go to their store and um, pick it up. It's on the store now, but I have to send you the code to be able to get it for no cost. So if you can, John, Rob, Will, um, they have it in all sizes, extra small through 5XL. And uh, yeah, so send me send me um, your uh, your email with your, your your contact details or you know whatever, and I will make sure you get. I'll send you the link and the also the coupon code. And congrats on being the first one. So guys, if something's going to happen. I didn't want to announce it before the. Sh I didn't want to announce it at the beginning of the show that I was doing it this week because I wanted just to see like just naturally what, what questions I would get around Miramichi products. So if you guys have questions. Related to carbonized PN or essential G or any of the, or any of the biosimilars they make, um, you know, a good question of that, that that's that's novel, that's unique that I get um, each week. We will pick one, and there'll be more shirts that will come. This is just the, this is the first design of many, and you can you can win a free shirt. Kind of cool, right? So uh, so hope that helps. Enjoy that, John. Congrats on being the first. Assuming you're still here, I hope. If not. Um, no, you know, I guess now there's always next week, but uh, but yeah, um, send me an email, Ron at golfcourselawn.com, with your information right there, and I will tell you how to get how to get one of those fancy dancy shirts. I've got one coming, and once I do, I'll be able to show it off and show you guys what they look like on my on myself. So cool, good stuff. All right, next up is Mr. No Name. No Name is up next. He says, "Happy Friday, Ron and fellow lawn enthusiasts." Five, get those likes up. Great lawn chat so far. I love seeing these progress pics. Also, happy Father's Day. Yeah, man. To all the dads out there, happy Father's Day. Um, yeah, have a, enjoy your day. Get out and do something fun in the lawn. That's what I'm probably gonna do on Father's Day. I'll probably eat something too, you know, but I'm gonna work in the lawn. I mean, that's that's what I enjoy doing. If I'm not doing karate, if I'm not working, if I'm not doing karate, then doing something related to lawn care. So that's what that's my zen. That's what I like doing. All right, next up is Tyrone Bailey. He says, love your channel. When is the latest you can treat for grubs? I have tall fescue in Virginia. I mean, I would still get uh, a fungicide down. If you, if you haven't done one yet, I would get one down now, Tyrone. Um, it's not something like a celeprin, which is residual in the soil for um, for up to four months. Is um, It's a great product. I'll tell you, this is what I would use if, if I were, if, if you were me and I were you, this is what I would use in your, in your um, lawn for grubs. So you go over to the golf course lawn store, go to shop, and then go to fungicide insecticide. If you like liquids, get a Celeprin SC. It comes in a bottle this size that is super easy to use. Got a built a measuring cup, so very easy. The rate you'd want to use for this is 0 0.20 ounces over 1,000 square feet. So um, this is what I, I typically use because it's just, it's smaller, it's easy. I can mix it, I can, throw, I can throw other stuff in the tank as well. So it's just convenient for me to apply this way, but you can go with a Celeprin in a liquid, or you can go with a Celeprin in a granular. So you got a Celeprin G, or you can go with a Celeprin SC. They are both equally effective. They are both excellent against grubs, army worms, bill bugs, sod web worms, pretty much any kind of turf caterpillar, a Celeprin will take care of it. And the nice thing about it, why I recommend this one so much is because it will kill the, the stuff that you want out of your lawn, like the lawn damaging insects, but won't kill invertebrates like earthworms and also is better for pollinators compared to other insecticides. So highly, highly, highly recommend a Celeprin if you are, um, if you're looking to control grubs in your in your lawn. And I would I would get it down now. Like I, I do my insecticide application in late in late March, early April timeframe, but you can still get yours done uh, done now. And you can pick them up, pick it up there. I just sent a link to you in the chat as far as where you can find it. And the descriptions of both those products, if you go when you're on the store, both of them have videos that show how I like to use them. It's not saying it's the only way to use it, not the only way to mix and apply them, but it's the way that I do it and I get a pretty good result with it. So that might be um, valuable for you as well. Next up is Gordon. Gordon says, I love the channel. Thank you so much, Gordon. I appreciate uh, the love and support, sir. I appreciate you um, letting me know that you love the channel. And then next up is Kevin D. Jones. He says, um, I am using, uh, at Devin, I am using Paclo and Teenex as well. Should I use the air induction tip or the fo or the foliar tip? Um, I am using, doing split apps every three weeks. Thank you. Where, where are you spraying? To okay, well, you, I mean, the air, the, the answer is I'm assuming that you're spraying this on not your lawn, Kevin. 
Uh, not your residential lawn. You're spraying like, I guess you work on a golf course and you're spraying a green or something, in which case the air induction, because it has a slightly larger droplet, would be okay. But um, but remember, Tide Paclo is not labeled for use on um, on residential lawns anymore. Not anymore anyway. So, all right. Uh, Madam Spank Your Butt is here, says, hello, what's help going on? Then we got Mason RC is up next. He says, good evening, Ron and everyone. Have you had any experience with lawn paint? My front yard is Bermuda and I don't like how it's dormant brown in color for almost half of the year. I personally don't have experience with it. I have seen it done poorly and I've seen it done not poorly. Uh, the, the, if you look, you wanna see lawn paint done on Bermuda, check out the lawn tools, the lawn tools uh, YouTube channel. They did it over, they did it last year. They did it green at first and they did like a Christmas theme where they did like, like green and red stripes. So they were having all kinds of fun with the lawn paint. The way they did it, it actually looks really good. So as, as long as you're able to spray it evenly, it can look pretty good. I mean, to my eye, it doesn't look like grass obviously, but it can look, it can look respectable. Um, a, you know, given what I have seen from lawns around here, I would be more inclined to do lawn paint. I mean, I'm not going to do it, but I would be more inclined to do lawn paint than perhaps even overseeding because I, I saw a lawn, like for example, at the turf park this year, they, there's some rye that grass that started popping through, even though they haven't seen, they didn't see the, they didn't overseed the lawn last year, but yet rye grass is still coming through the lawn or just coming through the different, the different plots. So it's kind of got me scared about doing uh, rye grass overseed. So anyway, to, to, to answer your question, no, I don't have any ex direct experience with it. Check out the Lawn Tools YouTube channel. You can see some of the stuff that they do. Um, if you spray it evenly, it can look pretty good. If you don't spray it evenly, it will look like a bad lawn paint job. It, looks, it won't look very good. So big thing is an even application. So hope that helps. Next up is Gordon. He is um, is back. He says, I have seen so many mixed reviews on gypsum as well as other soil conditioners. Do they work or are they a waste of money? Dallas-Fort Worth area for soil con uh, context. Um, so it depends on what you're trying to do with gypsum. I mean, it does it does have value. Like my soil, if you look at um, the folks that make this, that make uh, um, the My Soil test kits, they did a test with gypsum. And they, while they did show some changes, I mean, the, the results weren't what I would consider to be um, like a night and day difference. Uh, I don't have the video here. I don't know if I have it. I don't have, I have the video linked anymore. I should have it in my notes, but let me see if I have, I might not. Um, Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so they have a video on gypsum. I still do have it here linked here. So this is their video on the topic. I would look at this, Gordon, and, and weigh in yourself. Um, if, if you're trying to improve... It depends what you're trying to do. If you are trying to relieve compaction, if you're trying to improve, if you're trying to, to relieve compaction, aeration is the best way, or like hollow tine aeration, mechanical aeration, whether it's solid tine or mechanical, is is far better than any um, liquids or granular products or anything you're gonna put on your lawn. I think that like the mechanical way of doing it is best. Uh, is there value in um, like biosimilants, like biochar, like compost? Absolutely, absolutely. So on the same YouTube channel, Soil Lab, they've done some testing of biochar. Uh, they have a, they have one when they did um, humic acid. They did one when they, did, they had a control, they did one with humic acid. They had one with non-charged biochar and they had one with charged biochar. Um, charged biochar being the type that's in essential G, right? And they notice a noticeable. There was a noticeable difference in um, the leaf density and the the size of the plant. Like changing nothing else, using biosimilants to help improve the quality of your soil makes a difference. Just if you do nothing else, it does it does help improve the quality uh, of your turfs. I don't have that video, but if you go the one I, I linked to you, that's that you see there now. I see at Gordon that same YouTube channel with the video with the um, the content on gypsum. Um, that same channel, one of their more recent videos here in the last uh, six weeks, is on is on biostimulants, on um, on 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 on, on non fertilizer products that will help improve the quality of the soil. So I would look into that. There is value in it. Gypsum does have value. It's not a night and day difference. Um, if I remember from that video, that's one of their that's one of their older ones. I think it's from like last year. Um, but for biosimilants for granular biosimilants like charged biochar there was a like a noticeable visual difference in the appearance of the the control versus what they were testing on so 
Hope that helps. Um, if you need anything else, let me know. All right, No Name says, is there a larger size of Primo? Yeah, it comes in, I think you get it in two and a half gallons. How big of Primo, how big can you get Primo? Let me see here. Uh, Primo, but it's expensive, man. It's like, uh, it's like 300 plus for, yeah, $330 for a gallon, I think. Let me see here. Yeah, a gallon. So $330 for a gallon of it, no name. And uh, and honestly, unless you're going to go buy like a gallon of it and divide it up or split it with friends, like this is really, like this is really the way to go. I and mean, what you could do is, you know, if a couple of your buddies, um, if you had like, I don't know, let's say, if you, how many people do you have to have for to make it worth it? If you had like half a dozen, half a dozen, like say six to 10 people that are all using growth regulator on their lawns and they're all like, you know, you're, you're all your buddies and you all went out at one time point and bought one of these. So you had the bottle. Then you could also, you could, you could all pool together and buy a gallon and then just keep refilling this. You could use the convenience of this for measuring and applying it or, and you know, putting it in your, in your um, backpack sprayer. And you do like, like, um, as far as coverage per what you pay per ounce, like the gallon is a better deal, but most people will never use it. Like one person is not going to use it unless you got a really, 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 really big property. They're not going to go through a gallon of Primo in any kind of any kind of time frame. Which is why Syngenta made this. Why they did this because one of these will do sixteen thousand square feet of Bermuda. So for the average lawn, which you know, figure four thousand square feet, that gets you four months of coverage, four months of, of regulation out of a single four ounce bottle. And the nice thing is that it's always fresh, right? So you could buy one of these, you need to buy two in a year. You could buy one or one or two every season and it's uh, it's fresh. You're getting like fresh product that you're using on your lawn versus stuff that you've been having sitting in the garage for years and years and years. So, all right. Next up is Derek Duong says, Ron for mayor. Harley, please. Politics? No way, man. No, you cannot pay me enough to go into politics. Mm -mm. Forget that noise. Forget that noise. <laughs> Derek's like getting a good laugh out of it. No, uh-uh. All right, next up is Brian Clydesdale. Uh, let's see here. He says, what real mower would you recommend for a 17% uh, hill and also going at an angle? Got a Sun Joe battery powered real mower currently. Mm. A, a true cut should handle that. Of, of, of the mowers that I have direct experience with, on a slope, the true cut is the best one. You know, it does, it does well because it not only does it have rubber wheels, but the wheels also have like tread on them. They've got, so you can actually, you know, can just bite in and get better traction. So it does really well. Having said that, a greens mower, like my, my, um, 1600 does great on a slope. My, the Allet does not do that great mainly because it's just so heavy. It's a, it's a, it's, it's like a, on a, you really, you don't appreciate the weight of the mower on the back lawn where it's flat. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a kitten to use on, on a flat surface, but on a slope, man, it's a workout to use that thing. Um, so it, it depends. It's really up to you. you a, a true cut has probably got the best traction in my opinion, but a greens mower can work well. So for example, if you want to see what a greens mower will do on a slope, I've got a video where I am not talking at all. Imagine that, a video with, with me just saying absolutely nothing, right? Which is it's pretty rare. Um, and it shows nothing else other than mowing my uh, my front lawn with a greens master, you know, which is more challenging for sure than a true cut. But as you'll see in this video, Brian, it handles it just fine. It does a great job. Um, and it's frankly going to produce a better cut than the true cut is going to do. So it's your call. I would say a true cut if you want the absolute best, in my opinion, on a slope, best traction, and then a greens mower like the, like the true, the, sorry, like the 1600 does great on a slope as well. So either one will work well. And you can see what I'm talking about uh, there. So I hope that helps. Um, Derek, Derek, Jackie Weber says, Ron is the president. Nope, not, don't want that job either. Forget that. Nope, you could not pay me enough. No, thank you. All right, next up is Jason Harrison. He says, been out of town this week and the next. My, I have my 12-year-old mowing and my wife handling the water. Uh, they know. Wait a minute. So you got, so you got your, your wife is going to be watering. You got your 12-year-old mowing. So they know I'd lose my mind if they didn't help. Thankful for family. There you go. That's awesome. That's good. That, that's good that they care enough about it that because you care about it. You know, because I'm sure you know, the 12-year-old probably isn't in the lawn as much as dad is. And I'm sure wifey's probably got other things she'd rather do than water the lawn. But it's nice that they're like saying, you know what, he's out of town for a week. Whatever. You know, we don't want to have to deal with, you know, him being all upset and pouting and being in a bad mood when he gets back. So let's just, we'll get out there and mow. 
And Jason, here's the thing you got to realize. Even if the 12-year-old doesn't do as good a job as you are going to do, because, you know, us lawn people, we're perfectionists. We feel like we're the only ones that can mow our lawns when we mow it, right? Um, you still got to give give them, give him or her an A for effort because that's kind of still kind of cool, right? I mean, most 12-year-olds these days don't want to get out of out of the house. They just want to sit around and play video games all day. So if you, the fact that you're actually getting them out in the lawn and mowing, even if they miss a spot, if it's not 100%, you still got to give um, him or her props. So there is that. Okay, Brian is, Clydesdale is up next. He says, by the way, I love the Rumichi Organic Pest Control. I have no bug issues at all. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a great product. Oh, you guys, on the, on the topic, yeah, I had a question last week as far as does this, the pest control, handle uh, chiggers? Like, will it, will it do, will it, will it also target those? It's not listed here, and the answer is yes. This will, um, will take care of those as well. And because I learned that and I confirmed it with Mary Michelle Green, if you look on the, let me see here. If I go back here, I'll show you guys real quick. If you look now in the product description on the store, I've added that to one to the insect listed controls. If you go to Golf Horse Lawn Store and then to Shop and Insecticide Fungicide, and you go to the pest control, you will see that berry bugs, aka chiggers, are also now listed there as well. But yeah, it's a great product. You know, people that people absolutely I didn't think that this was gonna be received as well as it is. People absolutely love this stuff. It's a great and it smells nice too. It smells good. You know, if you have family coming over, see it. Fourth of July weekend's coming up here soon. You know, you're gonna be out in the lawn. You don't want to deal with mosquitoes or gnats or anything like that. That morning before the you're getting ready, you can take this. You take the uh, the pest control, spray the patio, spray the furniture, spray the lawn in that area. Once it dries, you can re-enter the area. There's no problem. It's non-toxic. Excellent product. It's great. Great repellent for keeping mosquitoes and other just insects that are just annoying that takes the fun out of being outside getting rid of them so i'm glad that you're getting great results with it brian it is an awesome product really happy that miramichi green allowed me to um to carry it and make it available to you guys on the store which is great stuff right rob h is up he says i want to get into real mowing uh oh be careful what you wish for man be i haven't read the rest of it yet but be careful what you wish for so you want to get into real mowing just know kind of like primo there's life before real mowing and there's life after once you start it's just really not an easy way to go back. But anyway, he says, I barely have a 3,000 square foot lawn. Any recommendations for a smaller yard and just getting started? Fisker's manual reel mower? Looked at Facebook Marketplace, but no luck with gas or electric. Hmm. Here's the thing. If I were going to buy a manual, I would go back to, I would go to the Earthwise. They, like, they make a seven blade. Earthwise or I think it's under like the Scott's Pro. They make a Scott's Pro Real mower that is also a seven blade, or that's I think it's the same mower, pretty much is what it is. Um, let me see if I can find it here for you, and I will. Um, so I can find it here on on uh, Amazon. Let's see, let's see, seven blade blade real mower. All right, um, there it is. Yeah, the Earthwise. So you have the Earthwise, and there's also the Scotts. Pro version, but yeah, this one here, this is the one that you, um, this is going to be your guy right here. And the fact that it, you got 3,000 square feet is, that's absolutely fine. Because remember, I push, you now I'm going to show you this real quick. And again, you can think I'm, you guys can think I'm crazy, but I got the video to prove it. I used to push mow my entire lawn with one of these guys. This little 16 inch, um, seven blade push reel. Like that is, I used to push a push reel on my entire lawn with uh, with that, which is kind of crazy when you think about it now. But um, it got the job done. It cut it cuts great. So I would start with that, um, Rob. If you have a three thousand square foot lawn, that are that's a good that's a good call. It's a good choice. And if you want to link to it, so at Rob uh, H. Uh, let's see, real mower. Um, that's a that's a good option to get your tips your, get your toe and dip your toe into it and that's going to cut better than your rotary it's going to look it's going to allow you to see if real mowing is really for you because it while it will produce a better cut than your rotary mower will, will do what this mower is really for in my opinion is to see if getting out there twice per week and you know maybe once every two days if you really get into it is something you're going to enjoy doing long term if it is then you can go out and start looking into spending the money on a true cut, on a pre-owned greens mower, then you know you're you know you're committed to it, and it makes a lot more sense to go and spend that additional money on a on a mower that's going to cut even better. So rotary mower is one level. That push reel mower is going to cut 
quite a bit better. Like the, the appearance of the lawn is going to be quite a bit better than a rotary. And then a powered reel mower is like a, like a, a pretty big jump, another order of magnitude better than what a, pow, a push reel mower will produce. So hope that helps. Give that one a go and keep me posted on how it does uh, for you. Um, and then, uh, and then De Devin says, Kevin D, I can't give you much info on pack low since it's AI, since it's no longer registered for homeowners use. As far as T-necks, you'll want to use this follower spray tip, let it dry into the leaf blade. Yep, there you go. So yeah, so tight pack low, you should not be using that on a residential lawn. So if you are, you shouldn't be. And so next up is Tom Hoffenkamp. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. History for, Christian question for you. Mm -mm. When you oversee your lawn, how soon after do you top dress and level? I am waiting for two spots to fill slash grow. They are tiny little seedlings. I did it as part of it, uh, Tom. So if you look at, so what I what I did when I was doing, um, when I was when I would oversee my lawn, and again, I'm not recommending that you guys do this, but what I did was I top dressed, and when I was done top dressing, that is when the seed would go down. So after the, when the lawn was covered in like sand and soil, like that blend, I would put the seed down then and then take the leveling rake and drag the entire lawn, which is enough to get just the seed just barely covered up because Bermuda grass seed is very fine. It's very fine. It needs, you know, an eighth to six, a quarter of an inch. Uh, it doesn't need to be buried very deep at all, which you can, you can facilitate that with a leveling rake. And that is how I would do it. I didn't, I didn't seed and then let the lawn grow in and then go top dress a week or two later. It was always part, pretty much always part of a, of a top dressing project. What I would say is this, if you can, as far as if you were doing it, like take for example, um, whose lawn is this? Take for example, Alex's, was it Alex's renovation that we were looking at earlier? Yes, so take Alex's lawn, right? So Alex did the renovation where he started with Bermuda, um, like, you know, he seeded the entire lawn in this reno. Um, at this point, when it was young like this, I might not top dress it, but now how it, but this is how, seeing how it looks now, like today, which is right here, like I would top dress that. Like that's fine. In other words, if you're out there mowing it, if you are, if you're gonna mow it, if you if it's if it's established enough for you to be out on the lawn using it, mowing it, running around on it, then it's also um, strong enough for you to to top dress it. So if you so if you're not out there walking on it, if you're not out there mowing it yet, then I wouldn't I wouldn't top dress it just yet. So you, you can use that as a um, as a conservative way of knowing when to top dress a newly seeded lawn. All right, next up is Andrew Phillips. He says. Hey Ron, I wanted to say this year when I applied the carbon kit with Turplex, I did not water for two weeks and the grass was still green even after level recovery. Last year I watered after two days. Yeah, so the thing with the carbon kit is that it doesn't need to be watered in. So water, the carbon kit, turf, so I'll show you, just go through this real quick. We did it last week, we'll do it again. Um, as far as products that need to be watered in per the label, so you go to shop and then lawn fertilizer, Greens Plus, this is a slow release, like this one on the label, it talks about watering it in after application, but everything else here on pay, on this page, um, that's a liquid anyway, so like the carbon kit doesn't need to be watered in um, after application. Neither does release zero, nine, um, I mean, that's the components of it, but release 911C, NutriCalp, if you're applying them separately, does not need to be. Neither does Turfplex, Nutrizol, or Bloomplex. None of those need to be watered in after application. Uh, you can run irrigation after it has dried. So if you say you applied early tomorrow morning, right? And you want to run irrigation tomorrow in the evening, you could do that. If you want to run irrigation the next day, you, that, that'd be fine too. But what I would not do is spray your lawn with the carbon kit and um, a foliar, um, you know, foliar based fertilizer or even with Primo and then run irrigation right after the fact. You're, you're, you're working against yourself if you do that. But yeah, I'm glad that it was it's still green after the leveling recovery. It's a it's a great stuff, man. I'm telling you, like the, the carbon kit, the whole reason, the idea behind the carbon kit is many, 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 many moons ago, I used to use a product from Lesco called Carbon Pro L, which is a very good product, right? I, I really liked it. Um, and when I when I started talking to Miramichi Green, they op and I said, I want to create something that anyone that that doesn't have a site one nearby can get, something that can actually sell online because because Carbon Pro L is, is a site one only product, right? So I said, I want to be able to create something that is everything that Carbon Pro L is, but better and actually costs less per application. Um, so they opened up their catalog to me and, uh, that, and that's when we settled on Release Zero, Nutri-Kelp. So you got Nutri Release Zero, which is a 10% carbon product and a biosimilant Nutri-Kelp, which is 24% kelp 
and a biostimulant and it got micronose carbon in it. And then biospectrum, which is the microbial package. So that's why those three were all put together because I wanted to create something that was better than what I was using in the past. And then also get something that I, that I can make available to anybody that's in the continental United States. You know what I mean? So I'm happy to hear that you're getting great results with it. The nice thing with the carbon kit too is it mixes nicely with a lot of fertilizers, not just with um, TurfPlex. Like I've tested it with other fertilizers. This season, I'm testing it with some other fertilizers as well too. And it's performing great with all of them as well. So it's a great product. Um, not surprised that you're getting great results with it. Your lawn is staying nice and green. You're getting a, you know, a good result with the products. So I'm really, really happy with it. And super happy that Miramichi made it available to us, you know, that we can, um, that we can actually have that for us DIY folk. Justin Judkins says, happy Friday. I was watching one of your videos a couple of days ago. My wife heard you in the video and says, wait, today's not Friday. See, that's, that's good. That's cool. So she, so I'm, I'm associated with Friday nights, but not other videos. Wow. Well, I mean, I do have a lot of other content that's, um, that's not, that's not live stream stuff. So I'm glad Justin, I appreciate it. And I guess it's a good thing that I'm no well enough. I guess your wife recognizes my voice and, and, um, and it's like, oh, it's not Friday. What Ron's on, I can I can recognize his voice. Cool stuff. All right. Next up is Justin. He's back, and he says, "I know you said that when Bermuda gets too thick, you may start seeing scalping issues in areas you typically don't have those problems, and verticutting can help." Next follow up is I'm thankfully starting to see this in my lawn. My question is why does this happen? I'm having trouble understanding uh, the reasoning uh, behind it. And is verticutting the only solution? Um, so what, what starts to happen, Justin, is whenever the lawn starts to get thicker, right? Um, when it starts to get thicker and the mower, it gets so thick, the mower starts floating on the, on the, on pretty much floating on, on that, that really thick stand of grass versus actually riding on the surface, on the, on the actual, on the actual, like the surface, the actual soil. Um, if you run into an area where like it is a little bit less spongy or more spongy, like it's, it's a little thicker or less thicker, the, the mower is more prone to dig in and, and cause a cutting problem, more likely to scalp. So it, it sounds weird to say that whenever you verticut or if you're turf raking and you, you, you manage the amount of thatch or manage the thickness of the lawn, the mower is able, even though it's running, rolling over the grass, it is riding on like the lawn, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, the soil on the surface itself. And that prevents cutting problems. Um, so verticutting is, in my opinion, the least aggressive way of correcting the problem. You can scalp too. Another way to do is to scalp the lawn. You can do a mid-season scalp to help correct the cutting problem, but it's gonna look, the lawn's gonna look uglier, right? Because you're scalping it, you're cutting off a lot of material um, to, to do that. So it is gonna yellow up when you when you do it, but it's another way to to thin out the lawn that's not verticutting. So if you can get your hands on a verticutter, that is what I would recommend because if you do it right, you really can't tell after the fact that the lawn has been verticut. But the, but the, the, the cutting problems is just from the lawn getting, like Bermuda getting so thick that the mower begins to float on the, like it floating on the, on the, on the turf, on the grass itself versus the, the rolling and actually getting on the, staying on the soil, which makes for more consistent cutting. It's not really going to hurt anything. It just looks ugly, right? You, you should be out there cutting it. And, and in some areas that you never used to scout before, you'll just be mowing along and, you know, you'll get like a little, it'll like dig in a little bit and you'll get like a little, a little scalp mark, which some people it doesn't bother, but it, it, I don't like it. And verticutting makes it not happen. You know what I mean? So it's just, uh, it's just, it's, kind of a negative, like the more you cut Bermuda, like the shorter you cut Bermuda, the better it grows, the thicker it grows, but the thicker it grows, uh, you can begin to have cutting problems or, or and, and I, hate say, I hate to say problems, but you can start to have, you start, start, to, start to have um, issues with light scalping in areas where you normally would not get it. And thinning out the lawn some way is the way to correct that. So I uh, so hope that helps. So again, verticutting is what I would say to do, but you can also just, you can also just, uh, just scalp it, a mid-season scalp. So let's say, your lawn, is, so you're cutting it at like three quarters of an inch. If you take it down to just under half an inch, that's enough. You know, obviously under half an inch and then you take you take all the clippings out. So don't like just cut the lawn and leave all the trash in there. That's not helping the situation. So cut it and take all the clippings out, bag it and get rid of it. That will, um, you know, one of those in a season should, should be good. Like if you did one, if you did one, uh, one right now, it's probably too early. If you did like a, a, a scalp the end of this month, 
that is probably going to be enough to carry you throughout throughout all of July and August without running into cutting problems again. Like the best thing is to just to, to very lightly verticut the end of May, the end of June, the end of July, and then it, the lawn always looks great. You never have cutting problems and you know, it's awesome, but not not everybody wants to do that or has access to the machine to to do it. So there is that. So hope that helps, sir. Um, if you have anything else, let me know. And everyone's all chiming in to have you that LG's here. <laughs> Mark, uh, never fear, LG is here. All right. And then uh, the crazy lawn guy, she says the same thing. She says, Justin, I did a reset when my mower started floating and I was getting those abnormal scalp marks. Yes. So yeah. So um, that's another option. Like I said, you can either verticut it or you can just do a reset, how to cut reset. That's another way to do it as well. That will look uglier, but that will also work. G Free's in the house. He says, hashtag Stripe Action Gang. Happy Friday. What's going on, G Free? Instagram, you guys are quiet tonight. Y'all are just lurking. If you guys are still enjoying it, though, I know y'all are quiet in here, but if you guys are enjoying it, Instagram, can you guys hit, give me some hearts? Like, give the like or whatever the equivalent of like the like button is on Instagram. You guys can do that. It doesn't cost anything, it's free. I'll take some Instagram love, too. All right, next up is uh, Kobe S. He says, hey, Ron, do you spray for weeds before or after mowing? If I were going to spray, I don't really have a lot of weeds in my lawn. Um, if I were going to spray for weeds, it would be after the last time I mowed. So if I, let's say I had some crabgrass in my lawn or I had some nuts edge or spurge in my lawn. Um, if I were going to, if I were going to, um, to, to spray for those, I would avoid, if you can, I would avoid mowing, like spurs doesn't really matter because that grows really short, but if, if I would mow, I would try and avoid mowing the sedges, the the, uh, the nut sedge, um, uh, uh, before, um, before I intend to spray it, and then I would spray and then wait two days, at least two days before mowing again. So the before you mow, the, the before spraying mow is not as important as the after spray mow because after you spray the spray the weeds you want to give the herbicide adequate time so two days two to three days if you can not mow after two to three days after spraying before you cut the weeds off that would be ideal um the before is less critical than the than the after the thing i'll tell you this the, the, the way you get a good result when you're using like um like celsius and i'm not certain here yeah if you're using celsius or certain when you're using post or herbicides is the more leaf that you can spray the herbicide on the better it's going to work you know what i mean you have you have more surface area to take in the herbicide and to ultimately help kill the plant so the idea is you would want to have plenty of weed leaf spray it let it let it sit for two to three days and then mow and you think about it by then the the after three days after spraying the herbicide, the the it's been taken into the system. It's being used. It's being um, used or being taken up by the plant. It's beginning to work. And then when you cut, when you go out and mow, the, it's much more difficult for the for the the weed to grow back, for the plant to grow back once it's ingested or once it's been it's taken up the herbicide. So pre pre herbicide spraying. Um, if you look at most labels, they'll say no mowing two days before and no mowing two days after. The no mowing two days before is really about there being adequate leaf to spray, but the no mowing two days after is about the giving enough time for the herbicide to be taken up before you cut the the, uh, the weeds off. So of the two, the post herbicide spray is the most important one in my opinion. So hope that helps, sir. Um, the only weeds that I really have to spray in my lawn are sedges. Sedges are what I are what I have to fight, and I've already sprayed them once this year. Uh, you guys saw that I had a video, a short, a video, a YouTube short that I showed doing that, and they've not come back yet. So we'll see if I have if they if I have a resurface of the sedges this year. And and funny enough, I haven't had them in the swale area, knock on wood, as yet, which is good. Happy about that. All right, next is Tom Hoffenkamp. Uh, bu -bu 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 he says, at Miles Blaine, fun fungal activity is high in my neighborhood and a different and is different in past years. 50 to 75 degree and damp is perfect for uh, leaf spot and slash melting out. That's our recent extended weather this year. Yeah, so just get a preventative fungicide down, guys. I mean, I know it might seem like you're just spending money for something for just in case, but I, I will tell you on, on, on good experience, that it's like insecticide and insect problems and disease problems are things you want to prevent in your lawn because you're gonna, 
once you once it's there, once the problem is there, and you didn't spray a fungicide after the fact, you're still stuck with looking at this really ugly spot in your lawn for at least three weeks. You know, so better just avoid that in the first place by using a preventative fungicide. Matt Goodrich is up next. He says, hey, Ron, new build home two years ago, and they put down a mix of TIFF Wave 419 and Common. They put down, they put down, they installed Common. I said, okay, um, any advice on how to blend these two better so I don't have splotchy coloring aside from putting iron down? Not really. There's not really, um, no, not, not really. Uh, I, don't, I don't have an answer for you on that one, Matt. I mean, they, they, the texture looks different. The growth rate looks like how they grow is different. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can use iron to mask the slight color variation. You can mow more frequently to where the difference in growth rates isn't as apparent. But yeah, I mean, if it bugs you that much, like if you really, really hate it, then, then, you know, renovation kill it all and start over. I mean, that's not, that's not probably what you want to hear, but if you, if you absolutely can't stand the common in the, um, in the TIFF way, that's what you're stuck with, you know? I mean, if it were me, I would, I would try the iron, try that, try just, try picking up your mowing frequency, do those two things. Try make, picking up your mowing frequency and making sure that the lawn, is, not just iron itself, but the lawn is getting enough nutrients to where the, the grass color looks pretty good, right? And if you, if you mow it often enough, you'll likely always be able to see the difference, but it won't be as apparent to someone else that's looking at it. And at that point, you can decide whether you want to go through all the headache of, um, of renovating it. But to my knowledge, there's not a way of selectively removing common Bermuda from hybrid Bermuda or vice versa. Next is Aaron. Okay, Robert Rainey. Robert Rainey is now over here on the gram. Alex Soto, what's going on, guys? You guys are double dipping. You're on both sides. You're on the YouTube and the gram. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Actually, we have a question. It's a good one on in, on Instagram from Alex Soto. He says, what's more beneficial for Bermuda, verticutting or grooming to thin out the lawn? Verticutting. Um, groomer, like if a groomer is, if you're talking about a groomer that's on like a greens mower, like you're not, they're not designed for verticutting. That's not, they're, they're designed for like greens. You know what I mean? Like verticutting is more aggressive than a, than grooming is. If you you can if you set up a groomer for verticutting, I mean you're one you're using a, a pretty expensive piece of equipment for in a way that's not designed to be used and it's not going to last that long. You're going to put a lot of lot of wear and tear on the groomer if you try and use it for verticutting. So if I can only do one, I'll put it this way, I don't have a groomer. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't own one. Um, if I, I can only do one of those two, verticutting would be it by far in spades. Now if you're asking me What's more beneficial, verticutting or turf raking? Uh, probably, probably verticutting. Pro verticutting probably wins that one too. From an apparent standpoint, turf raking, right? But um, from like a standpoint of the of the the you know, preventing cutting problems and you know preventing, uh, I mean, verticutting probably over turf raking. I don't know. They're both important. They're both important, but um, so so both. I'd say. Verticutting and turf raking more like 10 times before you buy a groomer or, or use a groomer on your lawn. They're both, they both kind of work hand in hand, but verticutting is, um, it makes a pretty big difference in, 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 you know, making sure the lawn consistently looks good. Like when you mow it, it doesn't, it doesn't really change that much throughout the season. All right. Uh, next up is Aaron, uh, bowling. He says, um, Ron, what kind of compost is in carbonized PN? versus Essential G uh, with the animal compost. I'm curious as Carbonized PN doesn't have an odor. Yes, yeah, so in Carbonized PN, it's, um, I can show you the, the video. There's, um, there's, there's pig, there's um, like, what would you call it? Pig byproducts. There's pig byproducts. There is um, from cotton gins. There's some of that in there. Uh, what else did they show me when I was out there? They they have this big Woodrow turner that turns all of it. But there's there's pig slops. There is um, there is um, again cotton. There's other there's oh also the feed like the um, like whenever like pigs are being transported like there's like a there's like not feed but there's like a like um, almost like sawdust that they put down for the pigs to be on and they that they like poop and urinate and this kind of stuff. It's kind of it's actually pretty disgusting stuff. Um, that is also in carbonized PN. But the process that Miramichi puts it through. 
um, removes the odor. Like if you see that you don't, you won't smell it. So if I put, if you see how the stuff is made, like you'd say it would smell to high heaven. And if you are on the right side of the, the other side of the facility, like the raw material side of the facility, that does smell. But the finished size of the, of the facility, like you can take carbonized PN and hold it up to your nose and it has no smell uh, to it whatsoever. And if you wanna see how that happens, um, I can show you the video here. Where is it? Yeah, organic, organic gold. Yeah, so this one on the field trip to Miramichi Green um, that I shot last year, this one talks about how they make it um, because that facility, the one that I was at, makes, um, makes carbonized PN and they make carbon pro G they make carbon pro they make carbonized PN they make carbon pro G or they, they or that they they are finished there some of the ingredients from there do do go into essential G but car, but essential G is not finished at that particular facility that I was at because they got plants all over the place um, but this video here will show you how they do that there's also a machine they use that they would not let me film <laughs> they would not let me film that some of the secret sauce for um, not having the odor in carbonized PN. So Aaron, this video here shows the how it's um, the how it's made for Carbon Pro G and Carbonized PN, and you can see from beginning to end, like how um, like the the product, how the product's made, and all the different stuff, the, all the different components uh, that go into it. There's just one. The only there's only one part of that puzzle that I did not. I saw the machine, but I wouldn't. I wasn't allowed to film it, or because they didn't they didn't want to they didn't want me to film it. So, um, so yeah. But that is how they do it. The process, the process for creating um, carbonized PN is different to the process um, for how essential G is created. The, the, the biochar in both of them is the same. It's, um, it's pine wood. It's pine wood biochar that is then charged, then inoculated. Um, but yeah, but the, 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 the process for them is slightly different. So I hope that helps. Check out that video that I just linked there that shows on essential G. Uh, uh, not, 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 uh, sorry, on Carbonized PN and Carbon Pro G. And I hope you enjoy it. hope you watch that. That should help help out, help out why, um, that'll help explain the differences between the two. Save the one part of the process that I wasn't allowed to show you guys. All right, next up is your friend that says, happy Friday, Ron. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. Thank you for showing up. Next up is um, DeSaiko uh, Sete Juan. Um, okay, I'll take it. He says, you look, you look, uh, you look more handsome, um, man, handsome, man. Keep up the good work. One day my yard will be better after watching your videos. Thanks. Yeah, man, I, I, I got a haircut. I had to kind of clean it up a little bit, you know, put a little trim. You know, I didn't, I didn't, get, I didn't put the edge up. I didn't line it up, but I did give myself a haircut uh, this afternoon because it's getting too long, getting out of hand. So, uh, so there you go. I appreciate it. Thank you for the kind words and I appreciate you watching the content. Devin is up next. He says, we have Flex 21s and 2120s, both are great mowers. Having said that, the GM 1000s and 1600s are just as good. So, I mean, Devin is uh, a little bit biased. He does, you know, I did ask him on the, I think on the last one, I said, what do you, you know, you have, what, is it, what are you? I mean, I know that the John Deere is the official mower of the PGA Tour, at least I think it still is, but what do you want? Like, are you a red guy or a green guy? He's like, nah, man, Toro, he likes Toro. Although the winner of the first stripe action competition did go to a John Deere mode mower. Now, I don't know if we have to, you know, we want to put, you know, any credence into that. But, you know, I think Robert, if I'm not mistaken, uses a Deere, I think. I think he does. Um, I'm sure you guys, Robert's lawn. So, yeah, this lawn, that's mowed with a John Deere. But I can, I can achieve those results with a, with a Toro, too. I mean, I mean, it's, it's all in how the machine's set up and that it's sharp. All right, good stuff. All right, next up is LG. He says, at Devin, it's true. Is it true that the Flex models only cut at half an inch unless you buy some special extension bars? I've, I don't, I'll let Devin answer that. I believe that they are, they do cut shorter. They don't go as high as the 1000 to 1600. If memory serves me correctly, that the 1000 to 1600s will do from 0.25 to all the way up to 1.25. So a quarter of an inch, up to one inch and a quarter. Whereas the flex head, the flex models do not go anywhere near that high. They all have to go shorter than that. They're much, they're much shorter. So I'm not sure if Devin's here, he might chime in, but I think, I think that is correct, LG. All right, uh, your friend says, I just came across Growth's Impact Super Concentrated Vitamin Solution. Any suggestions? I've never heard of it. 
I would say if you want to try it out, check, you know, check the reviews and see what people think about it and then give it a go. Um, what we use for, what I use for, um, much, I don't even know what's in it. If it's a fertilizer or if it's a biosimilar, I can't even say like what I use, but I can, or that's comparable. I use a blend of liquid fertilizers and liquid biosimilars, but I don't know what's in that to know that if what I'm even telling you is a comparable product. So can't say for sure you're a friend. I would say just check the reviews and go from there. Robert Rainey's up next. Speaking to him says, hey everyone, what's going on Robert? Hope you're doing well. And then Sean Fry says, Bermuda mites. Uh, what you want to use is Delta Guard. I believe that's correct. Delta Guard will take care of Bermuda uh, mites. Um, Sean Fry. It's been a while since I've been asked that, but I'm pretty sure. And every time I get this question, every time I have to go look it up. I think it's Delta Guard G. And they spell it. They, they have a funny spelling. Yep, that's it. That's, that's the product I was thinking about. Um, uh, this stuff. I'll, I'll give you a link to it, um, Sean. It comes in a gran. It comes in multiple forms, but it comes in a granule, and that will. Um, this stuff right here. Let me see if I can first. Let me get you the link, and then I'll show you it. So at uh, at Sean Rye at Sean uh, Sean Fry, <laughs> not Rye. John, I, I, ca I called you ryegrass, man. I called you ryegrass. At Sean Fry, uh, Delta Guard, and that's a link to it there. And this is um, this is the product. This is what it um, this is what it is. So it's gonna look it's gonna look like like uh, like that. Yeah, Delta Guard G granules, and if you look, um, it is labeled for Bermuda grass mites right there. It'll take care of it. So, so hope that helps, sir. You got a link. Let me know how, how you get on. Um, I've been asked that question a couple of times throughout the years, and everyone that I recommend that to loves likes the results that they get with it. So give that a go. All right. Next is Neil White. He says, Hey Ron, my new Zeon Zoysia has taken root and is thriving. Well, that's good. I mean, that's about that was about to be bad news. Sounds good to me. He says, now moles. Oh man. I'm sorry, man. I've only had to deal with one mole. One mole. I made an example out of him, too. I, Alex and I, we had to, you know, we had to go New Jack City on him. We had to go, um, you know, the wire on him. It, it, was, it, was, it wasn't good. He says, I, I put down, put out a grub killer. I'm pretty sure they're after the earthworms. Um, any suggestions on how to get rid of them? Thanks. Yeah, so there's a three-pronged approach to getting rid of grubs. The first thing is to use an insecticide, like what you're saying, to kill the grubs. Um, to try and reduce their food source, essentially what you're after. Um, the insecticide, that, like a cellophane, is not going to kill earthworms, but it will kill grubs, just one of the things they eat. The second is to use poisons, baits, or traps. So I can, I'll give you a link to a couple of those here in a second. There's one called Talprid. There's also another one called Tomcat. There are both um, mole uh, poisons or baits that work well. So I will find that here for you. I'm going to find that. And then the other one, believe it or not, is to reduce the amount of watering in your lawn. So, so if you're watering, if you're overwatering, right? Not don't not don't reduce the amount of water until your, your lawn dries out, starts you know having stress. But if you're overwatering your lawn, that also makes your lawn more attractive to moles because it's easier for them to tunnel, to burrow through a very soft lawn, a very soft soil, um, especially near the surface, than one that is a bit drier. So those three things. If you're overwatering, reduce that. Um, cut back on, or use an insecticide to reduce or, or eliminate, um, re reduce their, their food source because they don't only eat grubs, they eat other stuff too. And then finally, traps and or poisons. So this is the poison that I would say to go with. This is the poison I would say to go with. Let me see here. So at Neil, Net Neil White. So there's the poison. As far as the insecticide, what I would say to use is a celeprin. It comes in a granular and liquid form, so it's your pleasure. It's like Burger King. You can have it your way. If you want the granular, go with the celeprin G. If you want the liquid, my personal favorite, you can go with the celeprin SC. So either one of those will do the trick. Um, and then watering, I don't have anything to tell you on that one. I just, you just, just know to reduce the watering if you're, if you're overwatering your lawn. And when all else fails, when all else fails, there's always the stick. There's always the stick. And I can show you how I got rid of the mole that was in my lawn. PETA folks, please do not watch because don't, don't send me hate mail because it was his fault. He came after it. He started it. I didn't, uh, I didn't start this. I was just living my best life, just relaxing. I, I remember that morning. I was like in a meeting. I actually canceled a couple of meetings to go deal with this. I was, it was, I was hot. Ooh, I was mad. 
Um, getting mad all over again just thinking about it. So yeah, so this is how I dealt with it. This technique is probably, the my technique, how I did it in this video, is probably the least effective um, kneel. Um, you do need an Alex to really be able to pull it off. By yourself, it's not gonna work as well. But if you have an Alex, if you have someone you can call in, uh, this this can this can work too. And I only had one to deal with, so I was able to pull it off. So um, mole video. Um, so this is the other one. This is a more an unorthodox approach, but also effective for eliminating a mole in uh, in your lawn. So you got all three there. You got the products, and then you got a video showing the technique that um, that I used. Hope you enjoy it. If anything, hopefully it's good for a, a fun laugh. All right, next up we have Matt Jackson. He says, since you a new update, a video with Conclorac. Thank you for that, Matt. We appreciate it because I showed everyone that. And make sure, again, if you can, I mean, I know you're a busy guy, but if you can next week, if you can show, film another short video saying, hey, this is the area that you showed you last week and this is how it looks this week. And it'd be cool. It's cool for folks to actually see people other than me doing this stuff and getting the results, right? So I say, hey, you know, Conclorac is really good for killing crabgrass and killing St. Augustine grass and it won't damage um, Bermuda or or zoysia if you spray it at the correct rates and it's not too hot outside and it's fun to see someone that is you know just a view like a viewer like a you know your regular you know your regular um lawn care joe that's out there working on their lawns doing it and it's getting the results right so it's good stuff so if you can keep us posted all right miles blaine is next he says um i did good to know i didn't know the about the effect of cutting height on fungal activity but that makes sense i keep my lawn right at five eighths planning on verticutting mid-season this year you're the man yeah so it's not that it's not that that cutting shorter in itself is going to cause disease problems but if you're trying to maintain a lawn at shorter cutting heights if you think about it like it's whenever you cut the grass you're injuring it you're injuring the plant right <clears throat> so if you were to able let's take your a person for example if you like like cut yourself like you say you like you you run up against something and you cut your you know you get you get a gash like you, you you cut your hand right if that happens once per month the chances of you getting an infection disease problem or some kind of some kind of ear serious issue is not nearly as likely as if you get a cut in that same spot every day so say you say every day your your, your hands getting cut over and over and over and over and over in that same area right and then pair with that that you're getting cut with like a serrated blade that's actually tearing and you know not allowing your skin to heal close up and heal properly think of your grass the same way like every time you cut your grass you are injuring it which is why using sharp equipment is so important um and then when you get to down to lower shorter cutting heights like greens heights you're mowing the, the lawn so frequently and you're injuring it so frequently that's where fungicide as a prevention, like a, like as a, as a preventative, becomes really important. Almost like fertilizer, like you you, feed, you fertilize a, a green, you also spray fungicide on it to help keep to keep it healthy because of just the amount of of stress and cutting that it takes regularly to keep it looking good at those heights. So it's not that you know if you cut your lawn one time at like greens height, that's not going to cause the problem. It's more so if you cut it that short and you maintain it that short. That is where you can start running into the issues where you know, a fungicide program, you got to start stepping it up to monthly, you know, um, to, to keep to keep the uh, the green healthy. All right, uh, next up is the maestro says, um, I hear people say to refrain from pushing and during the summer heat. Any truth to this? I still, I'm still throwing down triple 14 to the 14, 7, 14 at the recommended rate. Yeah, so when I hear people say pushing and, do you mean, are you, if they're talking about like put like a, applying like, like over applying nitrogen, yes, I would not do it during the summer, but I also wouldn't do it at any other time of the year either. What what a lot of that guidance comes from is that if you're someone that say that's like a normal person and you're not like watching a lawn care live stream, right? And you mow your lawn once every couple of weeks, pretty much just enough to where you don't get a, a nasty gram from the house association letter from, from the HOA, right? Um, in the summer months, like right now we're starting to get hot, Bermuda really begins to grow a lot faster. And if you are also feeding it nitrogen, it's going to grow even that much faster. Um, but but if you're someone that is mowing regularly, like again, at least twice a week, and if maybe during the summer months, if you're mowing shorter, maybe you could even squeeze squeeze in a third mow throughout the week. There's no reason to not keep feeding it. Like I like my lawn stays at the same height throughout the entire season, and I the same once I start fertilizing the lawn. Um, the, the fertilizer that I start the season with, like a, I start with a higher potassium fur, but then once I switch to Humic Max, like in April or May, like I run that throughout the entire season until I go back to a higher potassium fertilizer in the fall. 
So it's so the 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 guidance the i the, the guidance to start to to avoid fertilizing in the summer makes sense for most people but it does but it's not like you are doing anything wrong if you're going to do all the stuff that comes with that so in other words if you're going to keep up with your mowing there's no problem with doing that i would not go out and spray like straight urea in the middle of the summer you know like like, like all the fertilizers that we that we carry like you take all the fertilizers from from lebanon that we have in the golf course lawn store none of them are straight or all like straight quick release or fast release fertilizers they're all blends they're blends of slow release nitrogen and fast release nitrogen there's two it's like it's blend it's a blended product you know so if you're spraying those or, or not spraying but if you're applying those at the rates, especially the ones that I recommend, which tend to be lower, which is like half a pound of nitrogen, then you're you're fine. You're already if you are if you're feeding your lawn, if you're spoon feeding your lawn per the way that I do it, you're not even applying the amount of nitrogen monthly that most people would say that Bermuda calls for, and your lawn is still gonna look good. So what I would say in my show, keep doing what you're doing. You just want to be playing, uh, applying that your triple 14 or the 14, 7, 14 throughout the summer. There's no problem with that at all. I did Humic Max the beginning of this month. It will go down again on July 1st. So hope that helps. Hopefully the idea behind it um, makes sense to you. As long as you're willing to, to increase your mowing frequency as the grass starts growing faster, you're going to be absolutely fine. But if you're one of these people that doesn't like to mow your grass, then it doesn't make sense to to push a lot, you know, to, to, I don't hate to use the word push, but it doesn't make sense to, to feed the lawn a lot of nitrogen during the summer months because it's going to, it's going to start growing faster. Or another thing you, you might hear too, is that during the summer months, you should increase your mowing height. That is not really a requirement for the grass. It's more so if you don't, if you want to keep the same mowing cadence, the same mowing frequency. So for some people once a week or once every two weeks, and during the summer months, which starts growing faster, then yeah, if you don't want to take off too much, you got to mow the lawn taller, allow it to get a little bit taller. However, if you're like me or like the 120 people that are here on the live stream right now, where you know what, the grass starts growing faster, to you, that just means I'm going to mow more, then keep the same height. You know what I mean? In other words, golf courses don't increase their heights of cut during the summer. They, they, the greens get mowed. I mean, they make mowed greens maybe a little taller, a little bit shorter, but they don't, they don't start, the, the, the fairways don't get, don't go up to like an inch during the summer months. They mow them still at, you know, half an inch for the most part throughout the, uh, throughout the entire season. They just, they, they just increase their mowing frequency during the times of year when the grass grows faster. So hope that helps make sense of Maestro. Um, and you know, the logic the idea, the, the big thing is just mow more when the grass is growing faster and you'll be just fine. 67 Mustang says, good evening, Ron. What's going on, 67 Mustang? Thanks for coming to hang out. Appreciate you. All right, next up is, who do we have here? We have uh, Matt Jackson. He says, thanks for the advice. I'll send another video next week. Thanks, sir. I appreciate you doing that. And then next is Matthew Kim. He says, question about irrigation. Mm. The cap on the PVC line popped off and sprayed straight from the ground. Uh, found a big rock. I found a big rock next to the line. Do you think if I just applied some PVC glue, it would fix it? Okay. Oh, so the so you're saying I guess one of the feed lines there's like a rock near it, and it um, that caused the like a cap the cap to pop off. Um, it, I mean, I would I would I would plug it properly. So in other words, if the cap just popped off, um, if the cap just popped off, Matthew. I would not just take PVC glue. I wouldn't just stick it back on and put PVC glue around it and think that's going to hold out. I wouldn't do that. What I would do is um, I would clean. I would clean the area, clean the PVC pipe, clean the inside of the cap. Like like most PVC, most PVC glue has like two components to it. There's like an etching, um, like a like call it cleaner, but like an, a cleaner and etching um, compound, and there's the actual adhesive. So you would do that. Make sure you you you, you clean it prep it proper, properly and then use the glue and, you know, cap it and, and like seal basically the leak. That is how I would do it. I would not just try and stick the cap back on, just put a little, some glue around there and hope it's going to work because it's likely, I mean, if it stays on, you're going to be much more prone to having leaks. So I would not, uh, I would not do it that way. And to your point, if there's a rock near any of the feed lines, you're going to want to get rid of that. You want to, you want to, you can use like soil to prop up or support the feed line, but you really don't want to have rocks or anything hard because that can, as you're walking on the on the lawn or you're running a mower on it, that can cause it cause um cracking. It can cause the kind of issue that you're just de you're describing here. So um so when you're putting it all back together, you got backfill with soil if at all possible. Take soil and just really pack it back, pack it in tight. Don't use the rock to hold 
the uh, the pipe in place. So um, so yes, hope that helps. I would not just put PVC glue on the outside of it. I would I would prep it properly and clean it properly and you know correct it the right way because you don't want to have a a big leak in your your um your lawn um, from this. Because the problem is too is if depending on where the line is. Depending on where that line is, if it's um, how can I describe this? If you're coming, if it comes off the main, but before, in other words, if, if it's if it's the feed line that comes off the main, but before the one, the of the valve that opens that um that that feeds one of the zones, you could start a leak. Um, like say say it breaks out, pops off in the middle of the night, you could have a leak that would could flood all night, and you have this big mess in your lawn the next day. You know what I mean? So I would, um, for a lot of reasons, I would fix it properly. If you don't feel comfortable fixing it yourself properly, then like hire someone to come do it. I mean, it'd be kind of expensive to just to do that. Um, but I would fix it the right way. I would not just try and band aid it. I would do it. I would do it right. Next up is M Mayhem Twenty Nine. It says, um, I have a small lawn, approximately 2,000 square feet. When mixing Primo Max for the sprayer, is there a minimum amount of water to mix with it, accounting for walking speed, one gallon, two gallons, et cetera? Yeah, so I like one gallon, I like to say one gallon over 1,000 square feet. I think that's enough carrier to where you get good coverage. And um, I think, yeah, I, just, I think one gallon per 1,000 square feet works very well with Primo. So in your case, if you have 2,000 square feet, Let's say, let's use an example of, um, of Bermuda. So you have a Bermuda grass lawn and you wanted to spray Primo, a hybrid Bermuda you want to spray Primo and you have 2,000 square feet. Um, what you could do is you would take two gallons of water. You can do a couple different options here. If you want to apply it once per month, you can take two gallons of water, add uh, uh, 0.25 um, times, am I doing this math right? Yeah, point, point, to half an ounce, so 0 0.25 times two. So half an ounce of Primo. So hang on. So wrong camera. This much Primo with two gallons of water and spray that over 2,000 square feet. That would work if you're only going to spray Primo uh, once per month. The way I would recommend doing it is to spray twice per month, which means you're going to cut the rate in half. So you're going to take the same two gallons of water and you're going to put two point two. Man, come on, my eyes out of the way. Get you're going to put point two five. Come on, focus. 0.25 ounces between the 0.3 and the 0.2, like right in between there, like right between there, that much of it with two gallons of water and spray that over the 2,000 square feet. And then when the 15th rolls around, or the 15 days later rolls around, you'll do the exact same thing again. So every 15 days, you'd mix a quarter of an ounce of Primo with two gallons of water and you'd spray that over your 2,000 square foot lawn. That rate is correct if you have Bermuda. If you have something else, consult the label take whatever the monthly rate is on the label, divide that in half, and then mix that um, with two gallons of water and spray over 2,000 square feet. So hope that helps. Um, and Mayhem, for a 2,000 square foot lawn, I would use two gallons of water, one gallon per 1,000 square feet. Hope that helps. And if you are new here and you were not um, around when I showed it earlier, on our store, on the on the Golf Horse Lawn Store, there's a blog and there's a, there's a free blog and there's a, an article on Growth Regulator. And it's in particular talks about this. It talks about how to take whatever the rates you have is and um, and divide that in half and use it like in a in a split in a split in a um, um, a half rate spray program. So I'll link this here. It's completely free. You don't have to pay anything for it. I'll I'll link this here for you in the chat as well, so you can take a look at that if you have any questions. But it's it's pretty easy. Look at the label. Whatever the monthly rate is, cut that in half and spray it at that rate twice per month. All right, next up is, we already got Luis Albareño. Thank you so much, Luis. And next we got Donnell Burrell. He says, good Friday to all. About to put some work in with my Aller Liberty. Uh, picked up some Primo PGR. Can I apply to Common Bermuda? Can I apply to Common my Bermuda to get great results. Yes. So if your lawn is common Bermuda, the rate is higher. It's like 0.75, I believe. It's quite a bit higher than hybrid. Hybrid Bermuda is more, or common Bermuda, it's it's more, it's a higher rate. I think, I think, I think it's 0.75 ounces per thousand square feet versus a quarter of an ounce. Let me check the label here really quick to make sure I'm giving you good advice. I think that is correct, Donnell. One sec, one sec. Bear with me. I know I should have all this stuff off the top of my head all the time. Um, 
but yeah, 0.75, that's correct. So three quarters of an ounce is the rate for common Bermuda, 0.25, all as high as um, 0.38, 0.4 is for um, hybrids. For hybrid, 0.25 to 0.4, um, for um, common, 0.75, so quite a bit higher, quite a bit higher than hybrid Bermuda grass. So yes, you can use um, Primo on, on hybrid, on, sorry, on common Bermuda without, um, without issue. No worries there at all. All right, next up is Terrence Stamps. He says, uh, good evening, Ron. I sent you a picture of my lawn next to the sidewalk. It is really brown next to the sidewalk and green everywhere else. What could be the issue? It could be a lot of things. It could be shade. It could be wear from people walking in that area. It could be a lot of things. Um, let me see. Let me see. Um, I don't have your video. I don't see your, your, your email here, Terrence. Um, if you send it, it hasn't come across yet. So if you can just resend it to me, um, or did you, or did you send that earlier? Maybe you're someone, someone else I'm thinking about. Were you one of the ones in my show notes? I don't think so. Um, if you can send me a picture of it, um, again, uh, Terrence, I don't have anything in my email as yet. It is, um, ron at golfcourselawn.com right here. Ron at golfcourselawn.com. I'll look at it and I'll give you my thoughts after the show is over, assuming the email comes across. So I don't see anything from you in my email right now. All right. Alex Zamora says, how often can you put down RGS and humic acid? I am not sure. I, I don't use either of those products, so I, I can't, um, I would say check the label. I would guess monthly would be okay. Maybe even twice per month, I would guess, but I, I don't use either of them, so I, I can't say uh, for sure, Alex. Platinum Exteriors says, um, I am getting ready to complete my re-level of my yard and plant all new Kentucky bluegrass, Mazama, and Shamrock. Would you have any tips? Yeah, so what I would say is um, if you can, so you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be doing leveling. So whenever you're doing um, a, a lawn leveling project platinum, I like to do aeration as part of that. So if you're gonna be doing it my way, what I would say is you're gonna start out with core aerating your lawn and then you're gonna apply a granular biostimulant bio like Essential G. You're also gonna apply a granular fertilizer like you know, one of the Humic Max or the Complete 4714 or the or the Stress, whichever one, depending on your soil test results or your granular fertilizer of choice, then I would, um, then you would do the leveling work, right? And then once you're done with that is when I would put the seed down and then use the rake to drag the seed in. Use the same leveling rake that you're using to spread the material around to, to lightly cover the seed by just dragging the rake over the entire lawn. And then just a lot of watering is um is what I would say. So I don't know if the what you're using if you're going to be using just straight sand. If you can, if you can get some material that has sand and compost mixed into it, it's like a blend, like a 70/30 blend, that would be better. If not, then you can go, you know, you can do a heavy um, you know, granular biostimulant application before. You can do you can get like compost and mix that with the sand if you want. You could do just straight sand and then do a light compost on top of it and do the seed. It's, it's a couple different ways of doing it, but I the best way, in my opinion, is to get a blend if if at all possible. Um, but that sequence, uh, aerate, granular biostimulant, granular fertilizer, level, so the sand or compost, whatever you're using, then finally seed and drag it in, and then water. And that's that should get you a pretty good result. As long as you keep enough water on it, you should see germination in... 14 to 21 days for Kentucky bluegrass. It depends. I mean, they, they keep changing these, these variants now. If, if you want to see what to expect, um, I'll show you real quick. You can go again to our blog. So guides and then blog, the video, the thing for the, the last blog was from last week, which is on what are the best grass seeds and how long do they take to grow? And listed in there is Kentucky bluegrass. So it talks about KBG, talks about um, the best quick growing grass seeds, germination rates, um, a bit of everything. So um, I'll link this to you as well if you want to take a, a peek at that um, platinum exteriors. This is a that was a, a blog post that went up last week that talks all about grass seed, all about um, you know how to get a good result and what to expect from a timing perspective if you decide to go forward with it. So hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else? Let me know. Eric and Stephanie Barron says, "Hey Ron, I just started using Tnex. Gonna roll with your split app program. What kind of timeline benefits can I expect?" All the benefits of growth regulator without any of the negatives. So 
you, I mean, the chance of you having chip burned in, on the initial application is reduced quite a bit if you do the split application. Um, um, you know, if you if you take that approach to it, and um, it, it, and it should the launch in regulation. You really should have a problem with the launch coming out of regulation, assuming you apply the right amount of product at the correct rates. You know, you should it should be great. The only negative of doing it that way, and again, it's not really my way. I didn't invent that. I mean, it's like I mean, the the golf course industry has been doing it forever, right? Um, is the only negative is you have to be out there twice per month. So you do it on you have to be out on the first and fifteenth versus just going out one time if you spray the full rate once per month. So yeah, the results are gonna be are gonna be awesome. You're gonna get um, you're gonna get turf. I mean, coupled with real mowing and a good nutrient program, you can get turf that looks like this. You know, I mean, growth regulator makes a a noticeable difference in how the lawn looks, how and the in the visual appearance of the turf. If you are interested, I'm also going to I'll also send you a, an article that talks all about growth regulation as well, Eric. I'll just send you the link here if I can find it real quick. There it is. So you can read this, and this talks about all the benefits and of um, of of using growth reg in your lawn care program. So hope that helps, sir. Have fun with it. Stick to the application rates. Whenever you, I know you're using you should be using TNX, or you're not going to have. One of these fancy one of these fancy incorporated measuring cups. Make sure you measure accurately and stick to the rates. If you use a standard measuring, like a you know a quart measuring container, it is not going to look like very much product. That's okay. It is not a lot. It doesn't take very much to get a result with this stuff. So do not, don't go over the rates. Like stick to the application rate. If you do that, you're going to have a good result. If you go over the rate, you're going to have a less good result. So just stick to the rate. That's the, that's the most important thing. And then sixty seven. Mustang is up here. He says, I put down PGR about four hours ago along with the carbon kit and with 901C and of course just started raining. Is it still okay or do I need to reapply? I would just, I would, I would roll with it. Um, you, you're, you're gonna be fine. I do spoon feed every two weeks like you do, thanks. You should be fine, um, 67 Mustang. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. He said, yeah, I use 0.4 every two weeks. Uh, it does make the turf look better. Yeah, so just, for the next, if, you, if the four hours pass between when you sprayed the lawn and the rain came, you're likely okay. You're likely just fine. So I wouldn't worry about it. But yeah, Eric and Stephanie, there is all kinds of, I mean, any ask anyone that uses growth regulator, outside of people that, that grossly overapplied it, anyone that uses this growth regulator and has used it correctly is only going to have good things to say about it because it really does make... It's like a cheat code. It really is that makes that much of a difference in the appearance of the lawn. It's really it makes helps the lawn. Um, it tightens up. The color gets better. It's just it's better. It's just, just there's like really not any there's really not any negative to it. It's not even really that expensive either compared to some other stuff. It really doesn't cost that much compared to all the like the visual improvements, the hardiness it helps the turf. I mean, just, just a, tons of benefits to Primo. All right, that crazy lawn guy says, um, thanks for the tip on the oil sensor. Can't wait to mow that hill correctly. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I'm not, <laughs> I'm just telling you what I have done and Alex has done and that pretty much every true cut that I've seen around here has done because Georgia kind of like, you know, kind of like with um, with uh, like a name and streets, Peachtree, we don't build, like none of our lawns are, are level. Shit, I don't tell my back lawn, like most stuff isn't level. You know, so you got like some ups and downs here and there. So I mean, it's um, it's it's gonna be fine as long as you keep oil in the mower, you'll be just fine. I have run my mower that way from day one when I bought it. Like when I first bought it, I put it on the slope and, went, and it cut off. I was like, oh, I forgot to do that, so I disabled it, and it's been running that way ever since 2018, 2017, 2018, whenever I bought it, and it's been flawless. Again, it still literally runs. It starts and runs the same way it did the first day I bought the mower. So. Just make sure you keep oil in it. All right, Neil White says, um, my wife asked me what I want to do for Father's Day. I said, mow the lawn. <laughs> yeah, guys, are, we are pretty simple. We are pretty simple creatures. I mean, mow the lawn, but also go do some uh, something else. She, probably, she, if you have, you know, if the kids are still around, I don't know how, don't know how old you are, if the kids are still like, in the house or whatever, but they're also gonna wanna take you out and, you know, go do something else too outside of just mowing the lawn. I mean, that's your thing, but also do something with the family as well. David Quigley is up next. He says, good evening, sir. You mentioned that you're putting down the carbon kit this weekend. I have only been applying it on the first. Should I be doing it bi-weekly? You can, David. It is not strictly necessary. It is your call. I do I do it every two weeks. I spray it every two weeks. So every, I'll show you real quick here. Every two weeks, um, if we go to the shop, golf course, lawn store, lawn fertilizer, what I'm gonna be doing this weekend is gonna be 
Primo, the 901C Carbon Kit, and maybe a little bit of Nutrizolve. I'm gonna be putting a micronutrient into it. So Primo and the Carbon Kit. This is the, these are the staples. These are the the guys that are going down. Going down. The 901C, the 901C Carbon Kit. Um, so yes, you can spray it um, every two weeks. There's no problem at all. You're not gonna overapply it. You gotta remember the rates for the, um, I wanna say the rates for these guys go all the way up to seven ounces per thousand. Let me look here really quick. I, th I believe that is correct. Hang on. I gotta switch over to this guy. Let's see. Yep, so yeah. To see, as much as you guys may not be able to see that, but as high as seven ounces, hang on, get this out of the way. And there we go. So as high as seven ounces per thousand square feet. Um, and we never get anywhere near that. You know what I mean? So um, what I teach people to use it at is to, to spray at two to three ounces per thousand square feet, David. I've tested it. I've tested it as high as seven um, and as low as like below under rate. I've, applied it, I've sprayed it as low as one ounce per thousand. because I was, Before I started um, offering the product, I was testing it to make sure that it did what I thought it was going to do and, and really like where the sweet spot is. And the sweet spot is around three ounces. Two to three ounces per thousand is, is um, like you're not using more of the product than you need to, and it's gonna produce a very good result. And, if, and with that, those rates, um, the chances of you doing any kind of damage or burning the lawn are, are near zero, um, even at higher temperatures. So if you wanna spray, spray it twice per month, you absolutely can do that. I spray on the first and the 15th whenever I'm spraying Primo. So, uh, so yes, I hope that helps. Next is Keith Madison. He says, um, hey Ron, what is a great granular product to put down to supplement my lawn guy's fertilizer? I have just the thing for you, Keith. Um, so if you are looking for something to supplement your lawn guy's fertilizer that is not going to, um, that's not also fertilizer, is go to the golf course lawn store, go to shop, and then go to Miramichi Green Biosimilants. And you actually aren't gonna have to do that because I'm gonna send you the link to it. But what you can apply to uh, along with um, that's not gonna compete with it, it's not gonna cause a problem, you're not gonna have burning, is this, is Essential G. What this is, is a granular biosimilar. It consists of biochar, compost, reclaimed coffee grounds, humate, and silica. So it, think of, you keep hearing about a product called Carbon Pro G. This is like Carbon Pro G 2.0. It's the new version of, um, the, new, the new blend of that. So this is something you can apply along, you could do it on the same day as the guy that's putting down your fertilizer. Say he came like tomorrow morning to come put down fertilizer, you could put this down right after he did it. You could put it down a day after, it doesn't really matter. The two do not really interact with each other. The benefits of, of this, um, or the two don't really influence each other from the standpoint of like causing a problem. The benefits of this is that you're gonna get more out of your fertilizer app. The biochar is going to allow um, your grass to make to make better use of the fertilizer that the, your lawn care service is applying. So that would be my thing. That's something you can do outside of whatever your your lawn guy is um, is uh, is doing. And you want granular. If you ask for liquid, I would show you for for granular essential G. If you want liquids, you can use the carbon kit, but just make sure you use the liquid the the release zero version. So there's two versions. There's one that has like 901 C in the in the description, the 901C version is a 9% fertilizer. So you don't wanna use this one if he's already fertilizing your lawn unless you know exactly what he's doing or you're doing spoon feeding. If you wanna be completely safe, if you don't, based on not knowing what he's putting on your lawn, either one of these, the Release Zero kits will be fine. And then from a granular Essential G, that is what I would go with. So I got you covered. Uh, if you check the chat, actually I'll do, I'm not sure if it's gonna come across on, cause you're on Facebook. Can I do this on Facebook? Let me see here. Let me see if I got it. So I can do this for you, Keith. Uh, nah, 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 nah. I think I can do this for you. Try, see if it comes, see if you get this. I'm not sure if, if it's gonna come across. See if you get this, Keith. So at Keith, so essential uh, G. So hopefully this comes across to you. If not, let me know. But um, but yeah, this, if you not go to the golf course lawn store, go to Miramichi Green Biosimilance and then essential G is um is what you're going to want to use from a granular from a granular standpoint from a granular standpoint you know it's funny i never ever chat on facebook on the live stream I'm always on youtube so i'll have to play with that and um all right but yeah you should have gotten it if you have any other questions uh let me know keith great great one all right next up we have let me find where i done left off all right next up is 
Jamie Kelly. He says, what do you think about using pre, um, plant growth regulator during the summer on Kentucky bluegrass? I think it's fine. You can still you can still do that if you want. I mean, again, if you if, especially if you're spraying it at half rate. Um, so for KBG, it's 0.6 ounces, I believe, per thousand square feet per month. So if you take that and cut it in half, so you spray at 0.3 throughout the you know throughout the summer, you'll be you'll be just fine. I mean, again, remember growth regulator. If you spray it at the correct rates, it is not it doesn't introduce really stress to your lawn. It, it's it's a it's a it's a good product. I mean, the only the, the first time you spray it in the season is when you are likely you can potentially see tip burn. But if you as long as you don't allow the lawn to come out of regulation, it's going to be fine. You're not gonna you not you shouldn't have any problems with um with stress or damage or burning the lawn or anything like that, again, as long as you stick to the application rates. A way to, to give yourself even more headroom is to take the monthly rate, divide that in half, and spray on the 1st and on the 15th. So hope that helps, James. Um, I would I would spray um, growth regulator on, uh, yes, I would absolutely would, do, would still spray during the summer. Just make sure you pay attention to the rates. Next up is Joseph Moe. He says, Ron, thanks for all you do. Got a new home here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, two acres of compacted clay, dirt, soil. Doesn't sound like fun. And weeds. Absolutely no grass other than crabgrass. Where do I start? Ooh. Okay, well, we can get rid of the crabgrass using quinclorac. So we're going to use a selective herbicide called quinclorac to get rid of... Um, of the crabgrass. I mean, technically, if there's not any grass at all, and all you got is crabgrass, you could use... Um, you could use Roundup. You could use like a non-selective. You could save a bit of money and you could use something like this. So uh, if you go to, Joseph, you go to shop and then go to weed killer and then scroll down to, where is it? To right here, Roundup Quick Pro. Um, this has got, this has got glyphosate in it and it's also got diaquat. Um, so 73% 70, glyphosate and almost 3% diaquat. Um, this will absolutely smoke crabgrass. It'll smoke most things that you, that you spray out, spray on, spray it on. Uh, so you could do, you could start with this. This is a less expensive way of, of eliminating the crabgrass in your lawn than using like um, quinclorac, because quinclorac is great against crabgrass, but really that's designed as a selective herbicide. Um, so you could use this to get rid of the crabgrass, and then pick. I mean, what I would say is this: get rid of the crabgrass. Um, if you can do like an aeration in your lawn to help relieve the compaction, that would be good. And then uh, begin begin feeding and fertil like fertilizing your lawn. Like figure out, get a soil test done. Um, um, do a do a granular biosimilant like Essential G, and then put and get the sod installed. I would not, unless you're a glutton for punishment or you're really really patient. Uh, don't attempt to do it via seed. Like sod is a lot uh, it's a lot faster, but um, actually, no, you should get two acres. <laughs> so I guess you are going to be doing the seed. How, how are you going to water two acres, um, Joseph? That's, that's, that's the thing I would, I would say. I mean, are you planning on renovating all two acres of it? Or are you planning on just picking like the area around your house and doing that? Um, I imagine it's probably the latter, right? Because you're not going to, yeah, I, I just saw again two acres. You're not going to install two acres with a sod. So seed would be the way to do it if you're doing all that. But you need to have a way to water it, you know? So what I would say, again, the, the, the first part of the advice still stands, get rid of the crabgrass, like kill, the, get rid of the weeds, get a soil test done. You can do that, you know, you can do that as well too. You can do those things in, um, at the same time. You can order a soil test kit. You can get those on the golf course lawn store. Um, get a soil test done. Get rid of the weeds in your lawn or in the area you're going to take care of because I, I don't imagine you're going to do two acres all at one time. Um, so get rid of the weeds. Um, get get your soil test done in the area that you're going to start working with. Aerate it because you said it's compacted. That's a great way to relieve the compaction. Once you've aerated it, then then you can use a biosimilant like Essential G. You can fertilize it with a granular fertilizer based on the results from your soil test results. And then, let's say we're going to pick ten thousand or fifteen thousand square feet around your house to get started with. That you could do with sod. You could sod that and and go from there. Or if you want to try doing seed in that in the fifty in the in this small test area that we're starting with, you could do that too. But again, that it's the seed it's, watering is so 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 important to getting a good result whenever you're doing a seeding project. And I highly doubt you got irrigation um, set up over over two acres. So, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a project, man. So again, to recap, 
kill the weeds, get a soil test done, aerate the lawn to help relieve compaction. Once you're done with the aeration, add a granular biosimilant and fertilize the lawn based on your soil test results and then install grass in whichever way you want, you decide you want to do it. If you want to do seed, that's fine. If you want to do sod, which is what I would recommend, that's going to be faster. I think you're ultimately going to like the result better. And then just take that process and duplicate it in other sections as you move through doing the um, the two acres. So I'll, I'll send you some links here as well, Joseph. I'll put, uh, let's see, I'll put um, the, the herbicide in the chat. So this is round, uh, let's say, so this is herbicide. Um, this is the essential G. You should already see that in the chat um, as well because I already, I was sending that to someone earlier. I, I'm not going to send you a fertilizer because you don't know what fertilizer you need as yet. So we're going to get you essential G and we're also going to get you a soil test kit. So as far as things to start with, this is, um, this is going to be your jam. These are things you can do before you have soil test results. And you definitely want to do that because given the size of the property you're dealing with, you definitely want to make sure that you're applying stuff that, that's a good fit for your soil. And there's a soil test kit. So you got three things. You got the herbicide, you have the granular biosimilant, and you also have the soil test kit. And once you get your soil test results, buy the fertilizer that, that you're going to use to um, that will amend the soil based on those your soil test results, and then install grass using whatever method you desire. Hope that helps. Sounds like a fun project. Take pictures, keep us posted. Uh, let's see. C Mike C S is here. He says, in an effort to clean the brown tinge and seed stems out of my predominantly perennial ryegrass lawn, I took it down from 0.75 to half an inch, lightly scarified with the sun Joe, removed a lot of material on Tuesday. Cool. Mm. Sounds like fun. Uh, how does it look? You said you did all that, but how does it look? Hopefully it, it tolerated it just fine. Um, see Mike CS. And here in the live stream on, on Instagram, we got Sunny Bermuda. What's going on, Sunny? I got a wave to you. Where are you at right there? There you are. Got a wave to Sunny. Hope you're doing well, sir. Make sure you uh, you guys make sure you give Sunny some love if you like other Bermuda grass content. Um, Sunny, I think Sunny, your lawn is a Tiffway 419 lawn, right? It's Bermuda. So he's a Bermuda guy. It's a Tiffway 419 lawn, I believe. Pretty sure. And he's got uh, more Alice than you can shake a stick at. He's got a couple of Alice. He's got a couple of really nice mowers. So if you want to check that out, check out Sunny Bermuda. And then Mike says, it's really starting to look really starting to look good after I let it grow out. I plan to mow tomorrow at three quarters of an inch, uh, again with the GM1000. Any other tips, hints, recommendations? Uh, not really. I mean, it sounds like you did a good job cleaning it out. You you cleaned out like debris and thatch out of the lawn, and then you're gonna you're gonna start mowing at three quarters of an inch. I mean, the thing is, is that if you want the color, if you want the stripes to look as nice as they can look, if you want the color to look as as nice as it can look, bag your clippings. You know what I mean? Catch the clippings. That's going to be the next thing I would say. It's more work. You got to figure out a way to get rid of them, but you will see a visual difference in the appearance of the lawn, a notable difference in the appearance of the lawn if you catch your clippings versus mulching, you know? So that's, um, that's about it. It sounds like you got it pretty much figured out, man. You're doing a lot of, uh, you're doing a lot of right things. You said, I'm all, I have also haven't leveled or top dressed yet. I'm surprised at how nice it's already looking. It only got started scalping the dirt sporadically at half an inch. So I guess it's generally level, but there are some humps. Yeah, so then you, in your case, you, what you'll be like, you'll be on that fill life. So kind of like how Phil, Phil's lawn, let me see if we can show here, how you know day one look like that, that's how you'll look, you know what I mean? So you have a few, you have some low spots here and there, but for the most part, there's a lot of green and it's not gonna take a lot of sand to be able to fix it. And then by day 14, assuming you have enough sunlight and everything else, your lawn could be looking like that, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that's a good, the, everything you're saying are all good things. The fact that your lawn is already relatively smooth means it's not going to take as much sand to level it. So yeah, keep doing what you're doing, Mike. Keep us posted. Uh, let's see. Um, Xavier Carabal's Car, no, Carbajal says, I'm in the same boat in the same area. The stuff keeps coming back. I have got nuts edge, poa, crabgrass is awful. There is Bermuda somehow trying to survive under all of that, which is crazy. Yeah, so, I mean, so in your case, Xavier, if you actually have Bermuda, to get rid of the sedges, you can use um, Certainty. Where is it? I thought I had a thing here, yeah. You can use Certainty, this. This is great. 
in my opinion, about as good as you can do for sedges and on warm season turf. For crabgrass, quinclorac. For poa, this time of year, it should already be dying anyway because it's already hot. But you can also use this for poanua as, as well. But poa really should be hating life this time of year. So in your case, quinclorac and uh, certainty. That's what you need for your lawn. Robert Rainey says, I have somehow inherited a zoysia lawn. We'll see if I can bring it back to its past glory using a similar plan as my lawn. I'm sure you can, Robert. You obviously know what you're doing. Uh, and are you gonna real mow it? Inquiring minds wanna know. We'd love to see some, some nicely tightly mowed zoysia. Will be kind of sweet. Think about it, think about it, man. All right, at Matt, uh, Kevin D. Jones says, at Matt Goodrich, I have the same problem using PGR and low and mowing low lessens the look. Uh, Todd Rissing help, but my last step is moving to a real mower as it is really noticeable at cutting heights over one and a half inches. What was Matt's question? Was it around seed heads? I think that was what it was. I think it was earlier in the show. All right. Um, Rob says, thanks for the recommendation on a manual real mower. Lawn is already leveled and already mowing two times per week. I checked Facebook and I saw a Liberty 43 for 2K. Then I saw the Hudson Star and I almost can't help myself. Oh, so, yo, so you have, you have $2,000, you can either buy a very high-end push reel mower uh, or, or you can buy a pre-owned Liberty. Decisions, decisions. Decisions, decisions. All right, uh, Mike C.S. says, what do you know about kelp and seaweed extracts? Um, they're like a, vi best way to describe it is like a vitamin pack for your turf. It's the lot, tons and tons and tons of benefits. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I like them enough that I that I incorporated a kelp product into the carbon kip. Like Nutri Kelp is as a kelp is a twenty four percent seaweed. Um, it's it's twenty four percent kelp. It's great stuff. He says um, I've been using Ecological Cytogrow last year, but would possibly be open to something else. But it always seems the most promising to me. Suggestions? If you like the the results you're getting with Cytogrow, stick with it. You know, if you want to do something different, if you want to try something different, I would say NutriCal. That's what I would recommend. So if you go to shop and then lawn fertilizer, you will see. If I click on it, did I click on it? There we go. If you click here, you and you, you'll see NutriCal. So it comes in two and a half gallons, gallon and thirty two ounces. So this is what I would say if you want an option to the Ecologel Kelp product. This also has the benefit of having 2% 2, 2 micronized carbon, which Satago does not have. So try it out. Try it out and see what you think, you know? Will not hurt to try. All right, next up is Harper's Explorer says, what are your top, your top three tips for laying Tiffway sod tomorrow morning? Well, um, well, if you do it tomorrow morning, I mean, unless you already have this stuff, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough to um, to do some of these. But I would say is if before you lay the side, if at all possible, have the surface as smooth as possible. Put down, if you, if you have a way to spread it, carbonized PN is, a, is an excellent um, product to apply prior to the sod going down. Like one of the, the original use cases for carbonized PN when Miramichi got it or, or made it, was for um, for high value ornamental. So people were installing like a Japanese maple or some other expensive plant, and they want to ensure that it took. They would um, they would they would dig the the installer would um, would dig out an area for the bulb. They would put down a couple of bags of carbonized PN in there first, and then put the bulb of the plant in, and that helped it root in and, and, and establish faster. So if you can get your hands on some carbonized PN and put that down prior to the sod going down, that would be ideal. If you can't get carbonized PM, but if, um, if, if you can get like Carbon Pro G or some other granular biosimilant, that is going to help the lawn uh, root in faster. As far as fertilizer, I would see what the installers are going to say. So if they don't, if they're not opposed to it, then getting putting down some kind of a starter fertilizer like um, like this, like the complete 14714. Like this would be a good option, great option. It's got, you know, all three macros, your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, got a bit of kelp, a bit of cumic acid in it. So it's a complete package, got some micronutrient in there too. It's a bit of everything that'll get your lawn off to a great start. And then outside of that, um, once you lay it, water it. Like water it, um, you, some people like to roll it in. So if you, so if you wanna roll it to, to get it a bit smoother and get it, get it nicely, mashed into where it just got good good contact with the surface, that would be good. And then just water it and stay off of it until it roots in. Uh, so yeah, but most of those things, unless you've already got the products or got a way to get them, you're not gonna be able to do before tomorrow morning, 
right? So if you've got a, um, if you got like a site one nearby, you can go out and get carbonized PN from there, or you can get carbon pro G from there. Those are options. Cause anything that I'm talking about, like you have to, you'd have to, to, we have to ship it to you. So if you get carbonized PN from us, we're going to ship it to you. If you get uh, essential G from us, we're going to have to ship it to you. If you get the 14714, we also have to ship that to you. So that's not going to happen by tomorrow morning. So hope that helps Harper's Explorers, give you some ideas and uh, just have fun. I mean, I'm not sure if you're doing it or you're having someone else doing it. You said, yeah, it sounds like you're doing it. So if you're doing, you said for laying it. So if you're laying it, then you've got, um, if you can find some of those things ahead of time and, and put them down prior to the side going in, that would be good. Next up is John Co John uh, K Powers says that Miramichi Triple Four Organic Fertilizer smells to high heaven. Yeah, the chicken the chicken uh, sauce in there does give it a little bit of a, a bit of a twinge, a little twang to it. Is it so? I got some buckets to store it in. Chicken products and dogs try to eat it if you don't get it watered in right away. Uh, okay, that's an option. So I guess you so you take it out of the bags and you pour it into like what five gallon buckets and leave it there. I can see that's an option. Uh, next up is Robert Rainey. He says, you had, you had to cancel a meeting. Dang moles, man. Listen, I, it was, it wasn't, a, it wasn't one that I had to be in. I was optional in it. So I had one of the guys that worked for me say, hey, listen, I got something I got to go do. You, you know, you, I'm sitting in this meeting and take notes and make, let me know if there's anything after, after, after you're done with it, if there's anything I need to be aware of. Cause, cause here's the thing, Robert, you understand like that video, if you watch the video, like I was literally, I was sitting here and I'm I'm watching this thing burrow across my lawn in real time. So imagine it's one thing when you go to, you know, you wake, you go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, and oh, there's mold tracks out your lawn. Irritating, right? But it's another thing when you see the violation happening right in front of you. You know what I mean? It's like someone going out and like a dog going out and like peeing on your lawn in like right in front of you. And this is like this is like 10 times worse than that. It's like happening in real time. And I'm seeing it happen. You can't. I mean, it had to happen. It had, I mean, it couldn't, and then and Alex was home, so it had to be done. He had, he got his, that's all I have to say. You know, whatever. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. All right, next up is Neil White. He says, great Movid, Ron Henry. I forgot to add, I stabbed one with a steak knife when I saw the ground moving. That's another way to get rid of it. They're just destructive, man. And they, and they look gross. They make the lawn look, they make the lawn look like it's diseased or infected. It's just, a, it's a gross, like mold tracks throughout a lawn look disgusting. It's just, ugh, just don't like it. Mm. All right, Brett P is up next. He says, uh, Ron, would you be on board with planting trees around the edge of your backyard? I think uh, you'd still get substantial sunlight, privacy from your back neighbors, and it would make it pop. No, because trees cause shade. No, no, no. No, because because the problem is okay. So, if I'll tell you why it's a problem, um, Brett. The reason why that's an issue is if you look. Let me fast forward here. If you look to right. Okay, let's pause it right here. Okay, so the sun, the sun on my lawn. So you see the the little the house in the background and the little house, the little garage that's just to the left of it. So the left most, like at the, I don't know, like the 11 o'clock portion of the picture, right? The sun rises on my lawn over there. So it rises that way and it tracks all the way, it tracks all the way over the lawn at about to where I am standing right, about right here, right? So that's the track it takes. It kind of, it kind of goes diagonally over over the lawn and over my house, right? So if I put trees in the background there along the fence line, like the grass, like the trees are gonna shield the grass. It's gonna it's, it's gonna cause shade problems. It's gonna shield the grass from um, you know, from from getting sunlight and it's gonna all it'll get thin, it'll look ugly. And it's gonna also having trees is gonna mess with my stripe action. So there's a whole lot of reasons to why I just we just I don't it's not mm, nope. I can't put trees in, I can't do it. I can't, I can't. I can't. I appreciate the kind gesture, and I, I get what you're saying. Like visually, it could look all right, but trees and grass just do not. Trees cause shade, and shade kills grass. And I like grass more than I like trees, so no trees. Nope. All right. Next up is Robert Rainey. It says, "Does Miramichi Green Pest Control leave a residue if used if used on patios and on outdoor furniture?" Um, not not. If anything, it's, it's very light, Robert. It's like um. Not really. The, the, the thing is, the reason why it's not allowed or they don't recommend using it, um, this is a good question, why we don't recommend using it indoors is that there are oils in it 
And if you put it on, like I said, you had like a hardwood floor, right? And you got, you had, you sprayed the floor with it. Until it completely dries, there can be, it can be a slight slipping hazard, right? So the residues is in it. But as far as like spraying the, the patios or, or paying, spraying a table or anything like that, you're not gonna, um, I've done it on, on mine, you're not gonna, once it dries, you really can't tell that it's there. You know what I mean? So it's not like you're gonna sit down and you're gonna have oil on your skin or oil that's gonna transfer to your clothes or anything like that. So as long as you spray it and allow it to dry, you're gonna be just fine. Not gonna be, um, you're not, you're not gonna know that it, you even sprayed it unless, other than that, you're not gonna have um, mosquitoes around. You might smell, you might smell the, the lemon, the, the lemon um, scent fragrance a little bit, but I mean, it's not, um, it's a very nice. It smells nice. It's not like, um, it's not off-putting at all. All right, next up is Randall Lard. He says. Ron, I noticed a, an outbreak of hard shell bugs in the lawn. I've researched it and it says it's the adult stage of grubs. Any info on this? Ways to prevent this? Uh, an insecticide, like a celeprin would have prevented it. Like if you applied it April-ish timeframe, they likely would not have matured to this point, but you can still use it now, Randall. So hang on, if I go here, if you go to the Gulf Force Law Store and go to shop and then go to fungicide insecticide, and you pick, uh, at this point, I would say a Celeprin SC. Let's go liquid. Let's go with the liquid route. You can take this and spray it, because you're already seeing them, spray it at a higher rate. So you, so the rate for a Celeprin um, for grubs is anywhere between, it goes as high as like 0.4 ounces uh, per thousand square feet. So given that you're already seeing them and that you haven't applied an insecticide as yet, you can apply this at the higher end of the application rate. So 0.4 ounces with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet in your case because you didn't you didn't put it down as a preventative um earlier in the season if we could have a time machine and go back to like late uh, late uh, march early april you would spray the same product a celeprin but you would apply it at 0.2 ounces over 1000 square feet this is what you would use so and it, it controls grubs army worms i mean way more stuff than this but i mean Army worms, white grubs, um, turf caterpillars, bill bugs, annual bluegrass revels, crane flies, chinch bugs, spittle bugs, like a whole bunch of stuff, and a whole lot more that I didn't list here. Um, and it's not going to kill, you know, earthworms or pollinators. So it's a great product from that perspective. If you're using it for this stage in the game, spray it at, a high, at higher rates. And next year, you know, just apply it in like um, in April, early April, and do 0.2 ounces. But now you could do like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And I will send you a link to that, Randall. Assuming you don't, maybe you maybe already have this, but if you don't have it, Randall, you can get it there. All right, hope that helps. All right, next up is Justin Judkins. He says, how important is the time of day for mowing? I've heard that mowing towards evening can increase the chance of fungus negative effects as the lawn doesn't have time to recover before nightfall. High to cut is 0.7 inches. I've mowed at all different times a day, man, and I have not. If, if you want to prevent disease problems in your lawn, keep your mower sharp and use a preventative fungicide in May and June. If you do that, you shouldn't have fungus problems. The big thing is keep the disease, keep keep the disease, keep the mower sharp, and you really shouldn't have problems with disease, especially at Bermuda at, at three quarters of an inch. Shouldn't be a problem. I've mowed at all different times a day. Uh, again, the 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 um the front lawn just got mowed right before and shortly before the live stream. And I, I mean, again, I, I sometimes I mow in the morning, sometimes I mow during lunch, sometimes I mow in the evening. It just, I mean, I have not, I'm not seeing an issue. I mean, it doesn't, the big, the, the, if I don't apply fungicide, I, I'm more likely to get disease problems. And if the mower's not sharp, those are also more likely to cause uh, problems with disease. But mowing, mowing time of day, um, I have, I, if there is, if there is something to that, I have not experienced it. So that's how I'll answer that. Sunny Bermuda says, hey, Ron, what's going on, Sunny? Thanks for coming and hanging out in the live stream, sir. I appreciate you. And again, guys, if you guys want to support another Bermuda guy, I, well, I think he has Tiffway 419 and has Allet mowers, check out Sunny Bermuda. He's got good content. And next up, we got Gary Kellett Jr. We are winding down, guys. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Since I'm cool season grass, I wouldn't recommend PGR for the summertime. Go with Lebanon products. Um, I go with Lebanon products for your store. You still get the green you want, but not the top growth. Yeah, so for the summertime, um, you could use the stress. You can use this one, uh, Gary. So go to shop, go to lawn fertilizer, and of the three, 
the stress has the most has the the most amount of slow release in it. This is the one that I would use on a cool season lawn in the summertime. This uh, this guy here. That's what I would go with. The other two are fine too, but this is better fit for June, July. Um, if you have cool season, if you have a cool season lawn. So hope that helps. And you're not a fan of Primo, huh? You're not a fan of Primo during the um the, during the uh, the summer, even at, even at the split application rates, you still wouldn't do it, Gary. That's not your jam, not your thing. All right, I noted, noted. All right, um, let's see. Oliver Rhythm says, "How does Bermuda Green Pest Control work with a backpack sprayer? Do you use the T Jet or the Foliar? I would use the Foliar. So if you if you're going to try to get as much coverage, so the best tool to use it for." or to use to apply it, um, Oliver, where you get the most coverage, is to use a fogger. If you use a fogger, you get like 7,000 square feet of coverage out of a, out of, um, out of a gallon of mixture, which is really good. Um, if you don't use a fogger, if you use a backpack sprayer with a, with a, um, like a foliar tip, you're gonna get around 1,500, 1,000 to 1,500 square feet of coverage uh, with that. So you, using a fogger, you get a lot more coverage, but I would go with a finer, a finer droplet um, uh, sprayer spray tip is what I would go with. So hope that helps. All right. And then next up, um, next up we have our final, looks like our final comment of the evening. Guys, you guys are, are, are almost running out. We're almost done here. It's from Autumn Henry. She says, best lawn on YouTube. I appreciate it, Autumn. Granted, you're a little bit biased. I, I, you know, I, you know, I, I get where you're coming from, but I, I do appreciate the sentiments. I appreciate the, uh, the feedback, and it's one of the better ones. I would the best. Best is relative. I would I would argue that a perennial ryegrass lawn has better stripes than even my lawn does. So you know there is that. But I mean it's it's uh, it's definitely up there. As far as Bermuda grass goes, it's one of the better ones. You know what I mean? It's one of the better ones. Well, guys, gals, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It was tons and tons and tons of fun. Let's see here. So we got one more question. Breck TV says, any negative effects on the lawn or real mowing with early morning dew? The cut isn't as good. If you cut a dry lawn, the cut is gonna be better than if you cut when there's a slightly amount of dew on the lawn. There is that. It is more messy. So mowing a wet lawn with dew on it is gonna make more of a mess of the, um, of the real. I mean, you're just gonna have to wash them more off when you're done. Um, but outside of that, no. I mean, the cut is better when it's dry, and it's a bit more messy if you cut it when it's um, when it's wet. But outside of that, I've, I've mowed uh, with there's dew on the lawn. I've mowed when it's when it's dry, um, and there's it, the the lawn is fine either way. It's, there's no problem. It's really whatever you have time to get out there and do it. Well, guys, gals, thanks again. I really appreciate you guys taking some time this Friday. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. Get out and do something fun in your lawn this weekend. Again, we got you guys covered on the Golf Course Lawn Store. If you're looking for products to get your lawn right for 4th of July, definitely do that. And we'll see you guys next week. Have an amazing weekend. Take care.